Itong araw na ito, ang pagtaton ng House of Representatives bilang mga representante ninyo sa Kongreso, magpapasalamat kami lahat sa inyong serbisyo at sakripisyo. You are actually the shining star, not only in the Philippines, but you are now regarded globally as one of the few success stories in this endeavor. That is why we are here to acknowledge you, to salute you, and to thank you for your service. You have done something that most countries could not have achieved, and we are so proud of this. For we live under the peace and stability that we have created, and we can only acknowledge and reward you with all the support that you deserve. ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear God, as we rise to meet its day, its new day, please let us be filled with your spirit. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthening us for your purpose. Let us desire to become more like you and to worship you in all we do. We give you praise and thanks for you alone, our Lord. You alone are holy. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Congressman Pipito Alvarez. And the isang representative ng buong Palawan. You are the safest uh, area based on our run of all the risk of disasters. I will not make any conclusion. <laughs> wala kayong earthquake, wala kayong bagyo, wala kayong lahat. Pero bakit? Wag na lang. So. Good morning everyone. We would like to recognize uh, Congressman of course, Pipito Alvarez, Congressman Alfred Basco, Chairperson of the Person with Disability, Congressman Hong Kong Ordanes, Congressman Erwin T. Tolfo, the future of our country, Congressman Wilter Palma, and Congressman Ed Siak. Any motion? Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. I move that we dispense with the calling of roll call, Mr. Chair. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the calling of the roll is here by dispense with. So, a pleasant day to everyone. For today's meeting, we'll take up one automatic bill referred by the committed senior citizen. This measure proposes incentives for private entities that employ senior citizens, fostering a productive environment for them. Mr. Chair, yes. before we proceed to our meeting, I move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of meetings held on February 13, 28, and 27, and March 12, 2024, and approve the same. Said minutes have been uh, uploaded onto our Viber group, and physical copies are also in our kits, Mr. Chair. I second the motion. Properly seconded. Are there any objections? The minutes of the meeting last February have been absent, but and absent pala tayo ng isang February. February 13, 27, March 12, are you by approved? Uh, so let us now consider the automatic referral from the Committee on Senior Citizen. Come sec, please read the title of the bill. Yes, sir, your honors, a numbered substitute bill to House Bills number 
Anyway, so may we ask Congressman Ordanes, Chair Chairman of the Senior Citizens, to deliver his sponsorship remarks on the bench. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To our distinguished chairperson of the Committee on Ways and Means, Honorable Joey Sarpe Salceda, esteemed colleagues in the House of Representatives, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. At the onset, the Committee on Senior Citizens would like to convey our appreciation and thanks to the Committee on Ways and Means for including in today's agenda the unnumbered substitute bill in substitution of eight House bills seeking to expand employment opportunities for senior citizens and providing additional incentives to private entities. Further, amending for the purpose Republic Act No. 7432 as amended by Republic Act No. 9257 and Republic Act No. 9994 otherwise known as the Employment Opportunities for Senior Citizens and Private Entities Incentives Act. This particular measure aims to provide opportunities for our elderly citizens who are still able and willing to obtain gainful employment and to those who wish to continue to become economically active and productive during the sunset years of their lives. Also, this highlights the role of the elderly sector in nation building and in advocating for the promotion of their rights and welfare by ensuring that these are respected, protected, and promoted. Likewise, by hiring and employing our elderly, we recognize their competence, empower them, and, in, and enhance their capabilities as we strive towards creating a more inclusive labor force, and to encourage private, private entities to employ our elderly, they shall be given an incentive of an additional deduction from their gross income, equivalent to 25% of the total amount paid as well as salaries, wages, benefits, and trainings provided to senior citizens, subject to the provision of Section 34 of the NIRC as amended, we deem it fit to increase the tax incentive from 15% to 25% as regulations have to evolve and respond to the changing times. In light of the foregoing, we would like to seek the committee's consideration and approval of the revenue provision of our, of our proposed measure as this, as this will seal the immediate passage thereof. Thank you, and again, good morning to all. Thank you, Congressman Ordanes. May we also hear from one of the principal authors of this venture, an advocate of senior citizen, Congressman Erwin T. Tufo, to deliver his sponsorship remarks. Congressman Tufo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, honorable Chairman, esteemed colleagues, guests, ladies and gentlemen, today I am in strong support of the House bill entitled Employment Opportunities for Senior Citizens and Private Entities Incentives Act. This substitute bill consolidates eight separate proposals, reflecting the widespread recognition of the need to empower our senior citizens and strengthen our economy. The Philippines has a growing senior citizen population, ladies and gentlemen. These individuals possess a wealth of experience, skills, and dedication. And fortunately, because of age discrimination, this often prevents them from contributing their talents to the workforce. This not only diminishes their well-being, but also deprives our nation 
of valuable expertise. The bill addresses this challenge head on. It creates a win-win situation for both senior citizens and private companies. The bill expands employment opportunities by mandating both government agencies and private entities to institute programs promoting senior citizen employment. It requires the Department of Labor and Employment in collaboration with other agencies to provide job matching services and training programs to equip senior or seniors with relevant skills. Immortality, the bill waives fees associated, or importantly, the bill waives fees associated with job application documents, easing the financial burden on senior citizen job seekers. The bill incentives companies to hire senior citizens by offering significant tax deduction to 25% or up to 25% of the total amount paid as salaries, wages, benefits, and training provided to senior citizen employees. This legislation goes beyond just creating jobs. It fosters social inclusion, keeps senior citizens mentally and physically stimulated, and contributes to their financial security. For companies, employing senior citizens can bring stability, loyalty, and wealth of experience to the workplace. Senior citizens often require less training and can serve as mentors to younger colleagues. Let us pass this bill and unlock the full potential of our senior citizens. This bill is a testament to our commitment to building a more inclusive and prosperous Philippines. I urge my esteemed colleagues to join me in voting for this landmark decision. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Comsec, please show the revenue provision on the screen. Congresswoman Nida Aquino Magsaysay, and of course, uh, Congressman um, Sergio Cabro, and Congressman Dave So, as we uh, now hear from our resource person, do you possibility to, or, that our uh, revenue generating power will be eroded, Your Honor. Mr. Chair. Um, yes, uh, you can run in. May, may I Congressman, ask, yes. Uh, may I ask the uh, resource person from uh, the BIR, then what do we suggest, uh, sir? I mean, if 25% if will not be enough, or it's too much, then how much? Would it be that is possible? I mean, a doable for 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 the BIR and of course for 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 the companies, private entities, Mr. Chair. Um, Your Honor, uh, considering that it, there is already existing a 15% uh, deduction on the additional deduction for the establishment, Your Honor, um, may we propose that we um, retain that. Um, the uh, percentage, Your Honor, as to the additional deduction. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, uh, have you studied this carefully? Because it's already existing. We are just giving them uh, some sort of like an incentive for employing senior citizens, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Your Honor, uh, we understand the uh, predicament of this body, Your Honor, but considering the mandate of the BAR to raise revenue, Your Honor, um, uh, this additional uh, this additional deduction on the on the part of the establishment will um, will affect the uh, the revenue revenue that the government 
might collect from the establishment, Your Honor. Uh, yung pakisagot lang, magkano yung uh, estimate yung nanawawala dito sa existing provision? Eh, existing. Um, Your Honor, uh, we have yet to get that uh, exact data, Your Honor, from the from the 15 percent, Your Honor. But, With the permission uh, of uh, Congressman Tupol, may I ask NTRC? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, honorable members of this committee. On the question of how much will be uh, lost due to the proposed increase to 25 percent of uh, additional deduction by business in entities employing uh, senior citizens. Initially, we have estimated that a revenue loss of around 13.52 billion will be incurred by the government. Okay, so there you are. Mr. From, Chair. From 15 to 25. And don't say 15, Makano. Additional by 13. I don't have at hand uh, revenue loss on 15% deduction, but uh, we only computed that if we increase to 25%, the current 15%, it will incur uh, 13.52 billion, an estimated amount. Yung issue ng additionality kasi, sino pwede yung tanong yun? Pagano? Inaayos lang kasi namin sa PWD 25 eh. Pero wala kayo? Sa 15? Yes, sir. Your Honor, uh, the figure I cited is the difference between if we increase, but currently uh, our initial estimate at 20% CIT rate uh, is 15.52 uh, billion. 15.52 billion. If we increase this to 25%, uh, uh, we would incur 25.87 billion. Okay. So the figure I cited is just the difference between the current and the proposed. Yes, Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I ask, uh, when you say 52 billion that will be annually, uh, we're losing, the government will be losing 52 billion annually? Mr. Chair? Your Honor, uh, it is based on an annual video. Mr. Thank Chair, you. if I uh, may, kailangan nung siguro ang pag-aralan po natin ng Bureau of Internal Revenue at iba pa po mga ahensya natin. Kasi madali po sabihin, malulugi tayo. The problem uh, that we see here, minsan may problema po tayo, may kakulangan po tayo sa tax collection natin. All right. And kung titignan ho, that's why I asked the BIR earlier, did, we, did you study this? Pinag-aralan ba ng mabuti? Kasi, look around, Mr. Chair. Marami po tayo mga negosyo, especially yung gambling. Pinag-uusapan natin, alisin ito mga gambling na ito, mga gaming corporations. Why don't we up these taxes? Kasi po, yung gaming and gambling mga companies po na yan, ang tao magsusugal na magsusugal kahit isang limong porsyento pa ang tax na ipapataw niyo sa mga kumpanya na ito. Why don't we focus on that, on these uh, gambling corporations, gaming corporations? Doon ho natin kaya hubutin. Po, pwede ho ba yun? That's why I was asking you kanina, pinag-aralan ho ba ito? Where can we find? It's so easy kasi, Mr. Chair, to say, eh, malulugi ang gobyerno. Why don't we look around first, tignan po ba ng mga kumpanya ang pwede nating paghuhugutan na pwedeng makatulong? Gaming corporations, gambling corporations are... are, are two examples that, that you can check out. 
Maybe. Kasi hindi ho malulugi. Wala pa ako nalu- na nakita na kasino na nalugi dahil nagbayad ng buwis. None. Worldwide. Kaya why don't, why don't you look around? Bakit hindi po ninyo tignan nyo, pag-aralan po ninyo, baka pwede natin hugutin. Yung binibigay na 25% discount sa seniors sa mga kumpanya na incentive nila for hiring senior citizens, why don't we charge it dalhin natin sa ibang companies, mga gaming at gambling corporations. Mr. Chair, that's my suggestion. Yes, uh, NTRC? Is DOF here now? Or is it still BIR? May I ask uh, if there's a representative from DOF? Yeah, please take a mic. It's okay. Does the estimate um, Good morning, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. Um, as sa ayon sa tayong po sa Department of Finance. Um, um, technical staff po, uh, but um, we can provide po. Um, we can. We are here to monitor po whatever will be the output. Uh, the, whatever will be agreed upon, and uh, kung ano po ang kailangan pag-aralan, uh, we will relay it to our uh, principals. At um, pwede rin po kaming magbigay ng um, ad- additional input if necessary po. Okay. So, anong ano mo? Uh, DFG? At sa Fiscal Policy and Planning Office FPG. po, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying, Mr. Chair, if uh, you would please. To, to study the Department of Finance, the Bureau of Internal Revenue, all these agencies to help out and study how how do we how do we compensate this hindi naman po pwedeng hindi natin aprubahan itong uh, because of the malulugi ang gobyerno kaya hindi po natin ipapasa itong uh, batas na ito itong panukalang batas because malulugi tayo it's a poor excuse marami ho tayong mga senior citizens looking for work eh Alam naman ho natin, karamihan ho sa kanila, nasa bahay lang, pero they still want to work. And that, that cannot, it's, and it's uh, inexcusable po na excuse because malulugi tayo. Then why don't you look somewhere else? Well, yung sinasabi ko po, yung suggestions ko, look look at the, the, the gaming corporations, gambling companies. Hindi naman ho, wala pa ako nakita nagsara na, na, na gambling company. Okay, because they're yeah. asking for tax, dila. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I think point well taken. I think uh, the estimates, even from my own, uh, my own personal company, is that it's uh, a little bit on the high side. Loaded. Anyway, um, Dole, are you here? Uh, good morning. Uh, Thank yes, you. Do you consider senior citizen as part of the labor force from a philosophical perspective? Um, sir, can you repeat that? Question? Certainly, okay. Uh, what's your position on this? Uh... Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, unemployment of a uh, person with disabilities and senior citizens, sir. Um, we have the NSRP, um, a total of 1,278 uh, PWD job seekers were registered and uh, 883 employers reported as companies accepting PWDs. PWD employees in 2023. On the other hand, a total of uh, 71,089 senior citizen registrants were recorded during 2023 and uh, 16,213 employees with vacancies for senior citizens. Um, to further enhance the customer experience of NSRP clients, customer journey maps were developed to identify uh, pain points and bottleneck and possible solutions for each at every point of interaction with the system. Uh, specifically for customer journey maps were developed to cover vo- vulnerable and underserved groups with their own particular needs, namely PWDs, returning OFWs, indigenous persons or IDs, and persons from rural, rural and remote areas. Now for um, youth employability programs, the department ensures the inclusivity of uh, PWDs in the implementation of 
um, dual youth, youth programs. A total of uh, 15, 51 PWDs benefited from the Dolly Youth Employment Bridging Programs from January to September 2023. Beneficiaries are assisted in the following programs. Um, special Program for Employment of Students or SPES, Government, Government Internship Program or GIP, and Job Start Philippines. Um, for job fair activities, the department implements the following special services for PWDs. Can you stop there? Would you like to consider um, PWD and senior citizen? Kasi meron kayong maximum 30, di ba, for GIP? Would you make a labor, um, a dole um, memorandum circular that allows GIP for senior citizen? Mr. Chair, we will highly consider that. and uh, Highly consider that. So it is... Can I say that's yes? Um, as for now, I could not um, uh, give how a stand. How much is your two-pad GIP? Um, I'll get back onto that, uh, Mr. Chair. Sino pwede magbigay ng gaan ng two-pad GIP? I think we now have at least an opening here. Na wag na yung below 30, kabataan. Above 60, payagan nyo rin. Na pinupulot ko na sa sinasabi nyo eh. It shows a big opportunity that uh, if you allow senior citizen as part of GIP, then that's a very good, ano, all of us can give, ano, especially many congressmen at GIP. So, I think now we allow senior citizen to get GIP. So, ang wala lang, 30 to 16. Ano ngayon GIP nyo? Di ba 30 below? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, 35 and below. Sir. 35 and below. So, yung 16 above, can you consider that for GIP? Uh, Mr. Chair, we will raise it to our senior officials and uh, we'll support it. You will support it? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So, can we ask for the MC? Just give it to Tulfo. Para to, kasi he's the guy who sells all the, all the initiatives of Congress, get better media with Tulfo. Pati tupad, bawal ang senior. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, we will um, provide uh, um, subsequent uh, inputs. Ipa -press, pa, ano, uh, Tulpo is hereby commanded to, ano, to make the press so that uh, to force the dole. Kasi ako ay cannot, pero si Erwin can. <laughs> Ipatulpo natin yung GIP at saka to upad. Anyway, thank you for that. Uh, do you have further information? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, lastly, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I'll, ju I'll just um, I'll finish the, the last program that I mentioned. Uh, again, um, job fair activities, uh, the, de the department implements the following special services for PWDs uh, during its job fair activities. Job matching for available employment opportunities, express lanes for easy access of PWDs and senior citizens, and lastly, one-stop shop for documentary requirements. That's all, Mr. Chair. Bakit di ba natanggalin yung documentary requirements para hindi na gala ng one-stop shop? Why do you create a problem and then give us a solution? Anyway, could, could you just try to reduce the documentary? So, yeah, every time I hear a one-stop shop, that means we have too many documentary requirements that are not needed in the first place. Anyway, anyway uh, that's just a comment. So may I now call on Tesla? Is Tesla around? Wala testa. No testa? Ano? Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, is civil service here? Civil service commission? Pwede ba pakihugot lang dyan sa ano? Kapitbahay? NCSC. It's now the... Your Honor, good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, Batang na layo nyo, hindi naman kayo. Hindi pa lang layo. Partners tayo dito. Huwag anim na buwan ka tayo dito. Hanggat hindi pa natatapos lahat. Ay, hindi nga eh. Ayaw tumigil itong dalawa eh. Kapalig sa nga tato si Magsaysay Aquino at saan si Ondanis. Kinamay na.
Yes, Your, sir. Your good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson, members of this August body. On behalf of NCSE and the senior citizens, we would like to thank Congress for this awaited attention for employment of the senior citizens. We have many, we have many experiences to show that uh, because of your interest, a lot of employers are now giving attention to senior citizens. One, of course, is KFC. But obviously, KFC, because the owner became the owner during the time when he was senior citizen. So he'd like to pay it forward. But recently, the two malls approached us and showed interest and actually are formulating their policies for employing senior citizens. I'm referring to SM and Robinsons. So uh, uh, there are some gasoline stations who are now thinking of employing senior citizens. And so we are happy that... How do you make love life? The people who are in the world are in the world. But Your Honor, uh, even as we say we are happy that uh, our renewed attention is given to senior citizens, we hope that uh, our uh, legislators will take a look at multiple retirement as one way by which we will be able to employ uh, our human resources continuously, not just the senior citizens. And I am referring to a possible early retirement with uh, retirement benefits and then the second retirement at 65, and another retirement uh, beyond that. Well, uh, Your Honor, no money is necessary because in the retirement process, it's the worker who generates the value for retirement. I sell. Uh, uh, the retirement, the, the problem we have now, Your Honor, is SSS and GSIS making a decision that one has to to retire at 65. When that happens, those who are 66 and above, even as they are still very strong, very productive, are not allowed to retire. Or if they are allowed to work as consultants, they don't have any insurance at all. And insurance Wait, is... Kayo, mga senior citizen advocate, pakingan nyo, magpahil na lang kayo ng bill na ba? So, Your Honor, uh, we would like to, to perhaps uh, seek for sufficient time to prepare this because we know we need to consult uh, the actuarial experts who would have to, to calculate uh, the costs for, say, retirement at 50. Plus lang yan? Kasi para gumawa sila ng bata, ganun din, ng share ng company. Yes. Uh, there is another retirement uh, program which I would like to uh, raise to you, Your Honors. We just arrived from Japan, and one of the programs that they have is the long-term care insurance, which starts at 40. Uh, it does not start when you work. It starts when you are 40 because uh, there is already the possibility that you will reach uh, old age uh, as you start 40. And so the contribution, aside from the social insurance, is an additional ins insurance for long-term care. And so much in development uh, in terms not only in health but also in infrastructure is being uh, focused over the Japan experience, experience of long-term care insurance. Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Long-term Ah, where's your bill? Why is it sleeping with Ordanes? <laughs> no, no show down here, huh? Are there any questions from the minority? The go? Calma. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to manifest my support instead of asking questions. Thank you. That's the best thing. Uh, majority, any questions? On the part of the majority, we fully support the bill. Okay, please show the recommendations. Alam mo to, 1992 pa to binigay, to be inihingi ng mga senior citizen, 1992 pa binigay sa mga PWDs. So, I don't know why they're suddenly, you know, Oh, yung taas ng ano mo? 
Ah, meeting mo ba? Ilan ilan lang ba yung ano, PWD na employed? Dole? Uh, Mr. Chair, um on the PWD uh, job seekers registered um 1278 for so senior citizen for the senior citizen um, 71089 oh. senior citizen okay di finally uh, mas maganda kung sa senior na to be guy so ano ba yung binago mo rito wala man tayong binago the staff okay uh second can you go to the next? So virtually, we are adopting everything except for this. Uh, provided, however, the benefits provided under the Act shall only be availed of once. Deleted natin to. Because it's hard to measure kung ilang beses kakailangan in. Anyway, it doesn't, uh, no. it's impractical. The waiver of fees and charges shall not include those in connection with the application to take a professional pinatanggal din. So ano yan? Yung PRC, mawawala ng pera? Tapos, sa pagkuha ng drivers, license, tapos, sa pag Postilization ng documents. Bakit? Mag-legal separation. The DFA. Sa career service examination. So lahat ng mga kakailanganin for seeking a job, we are trying to take off. Waive all the fees, no? So, does the author or the committee accept? Congressman Tufo, do you accept? In the nga namin, it's, uh, I think uh, we made it better for you. So yes, we're yes. taking out all the fees that are needed to get a job. On yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. So it's accepted, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair, I, I accept. Anybody who wishes to make a motion? On that note, Mr. Chair, may I make a motion? Yes, Congressman Palma. I move that we approve with amendment section 3 of the unnumbered substitute bill number, House Bill number 1368, 1505, 1920, 2252, 2284, 2384, 5473, and 8972. So move, Mr. Chair. I second the motion. Are there an objection? Hearing none, congratulations to the hardworking senior citizen advocates, Congressman Tulfo, Congressman Ordanes, Congresswoman Aquino Magsaysay. Para hindi na kayo mag-show down dito. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair yes. may I uh, move to include all those presidents and one member of this committee as authors? Well, uh, of course, uh, the motion of the remaining congressman of Palawan is... Uh, <laughs> Remaining. <laughs> Sino nag second for purposes? Na, ano? Second devotion, Mr. Chair. Ah, Congressman Tufo. So, are there any objections? Hearing none. The motion is hereby approved. I commend the good work. Paano nakakalampas Congress to, no? 1992 pa to binigay sa PWD. It took us, what, 35 years? Ay, 32 years. 32. 32 years to equalize. Ah, kailangan talaga mag-aral tayo mga Congress. Man. So the Committee on Senior Citizens is here by discharge. Thank you very much, sir. But I know but they have to remain for the So the hearing of the Committee of Ways and Means is hereby adjourned. On, after a few minutes, we will convene for the continuation of the joint committee meetings of the Senior Citizen and PWDs. Thank you. So the meeting is hereby called to order for the Committee of Ways and Means. The meeting is hereby called to order for the Committee of Senior Citizens. You know, number one. The meeting is served by call to order for the Special Committee on Persons with Disabilities. Thank you. Mr. Chair, yes. before we proceed, I move that we dispense with the 
Reading of the minutes of the meetings held on February 13 and March 5, 2024, and approve the same. Said minutes have been uploaded to our Viber group, and physical copies are also in our kits. So move. Second motion. Are there any objections? The minutes of the meetings on February 13 and 5. So, sinigitan pa pala natin yun. So, ibig sabihin, full, buong January, February, and March, wala pa kami absent. So, our work began on January 13, a Sunday, when Speaker Ferdinand Martin G. Romal, the implementation gap, improper grants, and violation by establishment. On January 23 and 30, and February 6, a representative from the establishment assured compliance with the laws, recognizing the significant social costs of these discounts. We created the technical working group on January 23, tasked to draft a committee report on the inquiry, including remedial measures on the codification of benefits, digitization of IDs, and addressing revenue leakage. On February 13, we agreed to increase weekly discounts on basic necessities and prime commodities set under JAO and formally communicated this to the TIDOEDA on February 16. We thank these committees and, of course, as kapulitan din ni Speaker at sa kanan ni Congressman Tulfo, uh, ito niya pangyari. On March 5, the committee chairs and members approved and signed the committee report which included three remedial measures. These measures were filed on March 6 and were subsequently referred jointly to the three committees on March 11, 2024. These accomplishments signify our collective dedication to upholding the rights and dignity of senior citizens and PWDs. We are committed to creating a more inclusive and supportive society where the vulnerable sector can access their benefits and hindrance. At this point, may I allow to recognize our co-chairperson, Congressman Ordanes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Committee on Senior Citizens, we are delighted to address the pressing issues concerning the granting of discounts to our senior citizens and persons with disabilities. Based on the data and reports gathered during our series of deliberations since January, it is evident that there is a significant need to revisit our existing laws and policies. This is to ensure that both the government and the private sector can effectively provide assistance and benefits to our vulnerable sectors, particularly the senior citizens and PWDs. We extend our gratitude to the agencies and business establishments that actively participated in our discussions. These discussions, along with our findings, recommendations, and proposed remedial legislation, mark significant step, steps toward promoting social justice and inclusivity for our vulnerable sectors. By ensuring equitable access to benefits and services from the government, we can uplift the lives and welfare of our senior citizens and PWDs, providing them with the accessibility and economic relief they truly deserve. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Congressman Basco. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. To our workaholic chair, Salceda. <laughs> chair Ordanes, to our colleagues in the House and our guests, good morning. We are here today to tackle three important measures which were crafted as a result of the investigation on the rights and privileges granted to persons with disabilities and senior citizens as instructed by our Honorable Speaker, Ferdinand Martin Romaldes. With the brilliant leadership of Chairperson Joey Salceda and the solid foundation of Chairperson of Bangordanes, we were able to uncover the violations and enact the measures to protect the rights of our PWDs and senior citizens. During the hearings, we heard stories of violations of government-mandated rights rights that we, the legislator, have enacted to ensure the protection of the most vulnerable sectors of our society. 
there still remains a gap in our laws that allow air, airing establishment to withhold or prevent access to this benefits. On the other hand, we also heard unscrupulous individuals and families who have arrogated these benefits to the detriment of the government, establishment, and untimely persons, ultimately persons with disabilities and senior citizens. As we begin consideration of these measures, we remain steadfast in our resolve to create a society free from barriers and provides opportunities for the disadvantaged and marginalized. Thank you very much. Thank you. So may I request uh, Chair Basco to preside over the meeting. Will we sponsorship remarks for Baco? Okay, Mr. Chair. Yes, Congressman Basco. Uh, let us consider House Bill Number One Zero Zero Six One. Comsec, please read, read the title of the measure. House Bill Number One Zero Zero Six One, entitled "An Act Enhancing the Discount on the Purchase of Goods and Services of Senior Citizens and Persons with Disabilities," authored by Representative Salceda Ordanes and Basco and et al. Uh, thank you, Comsec. May we request Chairperson Salsada of the Committee on Ways and Means to deliver his sponsorship remarks. Thank you. HB 10061 aims to reconcile the question of whether senior citizen the discount should apply to goods and services with promo discounts. Existing law appears to indicate otherwise, but the point of the senior citizen is to provide a preferential treatment to vulnerable sector. Since promo is to everyone, and therefore there's no preference. So in other words, the differential in the pricing between goods and services available to the gen, to all, everybody, vis-a-vis -vis those available to only the vulnerable sector must be preserved. And that means including home offers. So it's short. Um, itong bill is very simple uh, may promo ka the discount stays that's all uh, Mr. Mr. Chair Basco. Uh, thank you uh, Chairman Joey may we now hear the comments and recommendations of our resource uh, speakers or persons first we have here the Department of Trade and Industry OIC Director Cheryl Carbonell. Good morning, Mr. Chair. The DTI uh, supports the bill, and we will um, cooperate um, how to implement the measure, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, may we hear from the Department of Health? Your Honor, Mr. Chair, good morning. Ang DOH po ay uh, is in full support to the proposed bill of uh, Kong uh, Honorable Chairman uh, Kong Ordanis and all the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, may we hear from the Department of Social and Welfare <laughs> Development? <laughs> Attorney Anthony Mark Moklip. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning to everyone. The DSWD supports this legislative measure, aims to help our dear senior citizens and persons with disability. Um, we will submit our position paper to the committee, Mr. Chair, once it, was, it will be signed by our secretary. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The, the Department of Labor and Employment. Good morning, Chair. Um, the Department of Labor and Employment supports the intention of the committee on promoting social justice and inclusion for senior citizens and persons with disability. Hence, we, sub we have submitted our comments regarding the House Bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Department of Agriculture, please. Mr. Manuel Piamonte. Uh, let's move to BIR. Attorney Oi. May we hear from you, sir? 
Um, good morning, Your Honor, from the BAR. Uh, the BAR interposes no objection in this set bill, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank, thank you. From the National Tax Research Center. Good morning, Mr. Chair, honorable members of this committee. Uh, we have some observation on Section 2 of the bill. And uh, we know that uh, there is a need to clarify whether the products or goods and services covered by the 20% discount uh, is differs from the 5% uh, discount subject uh, on basic necessities and prime commodities. We, there is a need to differentiate or to clearly clarify the distinction between those uh, subject to 5% discount and those subject to 20% discount and but exemption to avoid confusion and implementation in the future. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, can you show uh, section of 10061? Paro can cure it already. Okay. Oh, no, later in the long. Uh, pero that's your only concern. Marami po ba kayong concern? Uy, tapanda ka rin, ha? Uy, ikaw may salamin. Uh, Your Honor, may I request that my colleague, Ms. Beverly Amora, be recognized to... Yes, you may proceed. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, our observation is whether the 20% discount will be um, the promotional offers are the ones listed under the current uh, senior NPWD uh, law, which currently enjoys 20% discount and bad exemption, because it's not clearly defined in the bill. It is it does the only items for the promotional offers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Joey, to represent, uh, present the substitute view. Tapusin na muna natin. We will discuss, uh, we will recognize you later. Yes, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, can we may, go to NSCS? May we proceed to NCSC? Yeah, Attorney Franklin Quijano, please. Your Honor, thank you very much. Uh, we are really very happy of this development. And uh, of course, uh, we have prepared our position paper. But there's one thing we'd like to call this August body the issue. And uh, Yusek Dave Almiron is here. The issue of uh, e commerce and uh, the availment by the senior citizen over online purchases, Your Honors. Uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult because uh, there is no provision uh, mandated by. Perhaps uh, the ICT, Your Honor. But uh, you can call. Yes, I, I think that's for the next bill, okay. the one zero zero six three, not the one zero zero. Your Honor, it's not about the ID. It's really about the purchases. Uh, if you will notice, there was a joint uh, administrative order to allow purchases by senior citizens and PWD online, and then uh, in the last uh, meeting we had. Uh, there were those who provided the uh, platform with the discounts, but there are those others who are not providing discounts. So uh, this online purchase, even as we have the 20% discount. I think, attorney, it's embodied in the uh, other measure, like in the ego uh, PH uh, bill, uh, super up bill. Uh, since uh, you said Almiron is around, Your Honor, maybe we can be clarified by yeah, later. a return. We'll uh, ask the USEC later. We'll proceed now for the bill of 10061. Okay, may we hear from the National Council on Disability Affairs? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good yes, morning, proceed. Honorable uh, Representatives. Uh, on behalf of the National Council on Disability Affairs, we would like to express our gratitude for this bill and we fully support this bill, Your Honor. And we also welcome the task given to 
NCDA for um, taking the lead together with NCSC for the crafting of the IRR. Um, Your Honor, just one um, minor comment. We would like to request that the abbreviation of persons with disabilities to PWDs be removed. This is following the UN guidelines for disability inclusive language because members of the disability sector have um, in a number of times called out um, the abbreviation of um, the term PWDs. So if we may request, um, instead of abbreviating it for the entirety of the bill, we spell it out um, to also follow the UN guidelines. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, noted. We'll take this into consideration, ma'am. Thank you. So the right of first interpolation shall be given to the members of the minority. And thereafter to those of the majority, do we have questions from the minority? Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, manifestation of support, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. On the part of the majority, we fully support the deal. Thank you, uh, Congressman Palma. Me, I now call on Chair Salceda to preside over the meeting. Okay, let's uh, look at the substitute bill. So, in the law, huh? All right. This promo on promo. Pwede niyo palakiin, alam niyo ng PWM. So saan dito yung isasaksak yung section 2, no? Tama ba? Section 2. Paki-word nga nang gusto mo. Ah, uh, your honor, uh, for the consideration, for your consideration and subject and style, uh, we suggest to that uh, to insert additional uh, provision provided that goods classified as basic necessities and prime commodities by the Department of Trade and Industry in consultation with other uh, concerned agencies shall be subject to a discount of 5% based on its retail price, whether regular or promotional. It's an addition to the uh, first paragraph of Section 2, Your Honor. Okay, we will consider that. Um, pero not, not that, uh, no. Can, can you go back to the 20% the discount and exemption from VAT on goods and services provided under Section 4? Next, as amended, Senior Citizens Act and PWD Act, I, sorry, PR President Disability Act, shall be applied on the final price of the goods and services after a promotional offer or discount if any has been provided. So, anong, gusto niya idagdag na dapat wala siya sa listahan. Section 4, dito, dito. Okay na rin eh. We are referring to Section 4 and Section 32. Din yes, Your Honor. But Section 4 and Section 32 uh, includes uh, those subject of special discount. discounts. Yes, yes po. So, uh, dalawa po yung kinokopper uh, ng kuhan. Uh, so, Section 4A and 32A. Yun na yun. Uh, what about those uh, discount given to basic necessities and prime commodities under the section four? Uh, they're applicable uh, on hey, they're applicable hey, on the on the final price. Just amended shall be applied on the final price of the goods or services after a promo offer or discount if any has been provided to the general public. Okay. Okay. Anyway, kung meron, pwede na mahabulin sa, ano, sa floor kung hindi pa yan. Uy, DTI, ikaw mag-implement nito. Uh, 
Can you provide language na lang before we go to the floor? Yes, Mr. Chair, we will submit to... Can you just look at this and just provide language? In spirit naman, we know what we're talking about, di ba? I just want to uh, clarify so that there will be no confusion as to what goods are subject to 20 and uh, what goods are subject to 5% uh, discount. Maririte niyo 20 and 5. Pero pag prinomo mo yung nasa 5 tsaka 20, may 20 ka pa rin. Kaya ang sinasabi dito is the final price. So final price of anything, whether you are in the list or not in the list, but there's a final price, then the 20 applies. Okay, so... Hindi naman, baka na, did they bully you? May anti-bullying akba. May congressional anti, no, may anti-congress no, no, no. bullying uh, akba. <laughs> may bullying akba kami? Are you being, you feel bullied? No, no, no. no. Your, sen, your senior citizen. Ni, uh, di ka pa 60? Hopefully, Wait. I will be one. Mr. Chair, yes. I think uh, as you suggested kanina, that the TTI will uh, make some, uh, that the language should be uh, given by the DTI in order to clarify uh, the doubt of the NTRC. So that would be all right, uh, Mr. Bo? Uh, Your Honor, uh, the insertion of uh, subsection A is uh, yeah. so, uh, DTI naman sufficient naman. for the purpose. Yeah. So, DTI committed naman uh, sila mag-provide ng language as far as this bill is concerned. I think that's a good suggestion. Okay. Um, can you go down the line? Tax treatment of discount, the senior citizen, applied goods, and the input matter tributable shall be treated as part of the deductible expense pursuant to Section 34 of the NIRC. We're not changing anything, no? Pwede na tanggalin niya. Do you need that? Kailangan makita ng businesses. Okay. IRR. Ang daming gagawa ng IRR. Dapat NECSC and NCDA lang. O di, ini, unahin nyo na inyong in consultation with. Tapos the NNC, NCDA na siya. Oo, oh, para sure tayo kung sino susulat kung minsan kakaikot na yung tumatagal. Unahin nyo na yung in consultation. Format, ang kulit talaga ng mga sekretary at talo ang chairman. Sige. Okay, so any further amendments from the members in the in our no? There's none? Is so, it really if there's there's none? Okay. May I therefore make a motion? I move that we approve the outnum unnumbered substitute bill of House Bill number ten zero six one with its corresponding committee report subject to style. So move to suggest. Second motion. Seconded by Congressman Yop and Corvera. Are there any objection? Hearing none. HB 1061 is hereby here approved. Um, Mr. Chair, may I also move that thanks. all members present be included as co authors of the measure? Seconded by Congresswoman Aquino Masaisai, Secretary Sia by instructed to file the unnumbered substitute bill and its corresponding committee report with the bills in index para mapunta na sa Tuesday. May meron pa ba tayo sa Tuesday? Wala na. Um, sir? Yes. May I be recognized, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, I just want to provide an input, sir, regarding po dun sa ano, dun sa... Um, um, double discount. Yes. Uh, You're from where? Uh, from the Department of Finance, sir. Okay. Uh, under the existing regime, just the uh, additional input lang, sir. Uh, 
under the existing regime po, sir, um, uh, under the IRR, IRR of RA10754, Section 12, um, um, yes. it does not allow do double discounts, sir. Uh, no double discounts um, in the purchase of goods and services which are on promotion well, of discounts. Well, I can tell you it's a misguided. It uh, doesn't stand to any philosophical doctrine, ma'am. What's good for one is good for all. But if you want to prefer the senior citizen, then the discount applies on the promo. Because this is a social justice legislation. Um, I see. So, pag binigyan mo na ng promo, ang lahat, eh, wala nang pre preference yung senior citizen tsaka yung PWU. Alam mo, pinapahirapan mo talaga ako PWD. But, but anyway, sir, uh, nag, nagbigay lang po kami na, ng uh, additional input. Uh, and, but but the, we the IRR are is wrong. But we do subject to the wisdom of the body, sir. Thank you. Kasi nga, may pilosopiya tayo. <laughs> Kaya ba, mag Emmanuel Kant na naman ako nito sa iyo. Eh. Thank Pero you, sir. Simple, simple lang naman yan. Pag binigay mo sa lahat, eh, hindi walang preference. Di ba? May mahal ka ba? May jowa ka? So, so sinong katabi mo pagtulong? yung preferred mo, di ba? Hindi mo makatabi lahat. Oh, yan ang IRR na pinagmamalaki uh, mo. Um, uh, nagbigay lang po ng input based Dibig on the existing rating. Kaya nga, pag but we do, mo sa, bibigay sa, mo sa lahat ng promo, ibig sabihin, para, huwag na nga, ahaba lang tayo. Thank you, nice sir. Our agenda is now... Thank you, sir. 10062 before 10063 um, because uh, 106 integrates 1061 and 1060. Comsec, please read the title of HB number 10063. House Bill number 10063 entitled an act promoting the welfare of senior citizens and persons with disability through the inclusion of senior citizens and PWD services in the EGOG Super Act. Authored by Representative Salcedo Ordanes Basco et al. May I request Congressman Ordanes, Committee of Senior Citizen, to deliver his sponsorship remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning again to my colleagues and our resource persons. Mr. Chair, I am genuinely pleased to sponsor House Bill Number 10063, which aims to issue digitized and identification cards for senior citizens and PWDs, and to integrate business establishments into the EGO PA Super App, developed by the Department of Information and Communications Technology. The goal is to ensure equitable access to government services and the availment of rights and privileges, regardless of age or technological proficiency. This bill is a product of extensive discussions of the Committees on Ways and Means, Committee on Senior Citizens, and Special Committee on Persons with Disabilities on the vote proprio inquiry in aid of legislation into the implementation gaps regarding Republic Act 7432 as amended and Republic Act 7277 as amended and policies that provide discounts, incentives, and tax exemptions for senior citizens and PWDs. This bill recognizes the importance of inclusivity in digital governance by ensuring that senior citizens and PWDs as valued members of society are provided with the necessary tools and access to government agencies, specifically the bill seeks to mandate the ICT to incorporate dedicated sections for senior citizens and PWDs within the EGO PH Super App platform to include the following. Access to various national and local government agencies, local government services, 
including health care, livelihood, and social services. Informational resources on the rights and privileges and gradual integration with various establishments for seamless access and interaction. Direct the DICT to also develop a roadmap that will provide for the programs and projects to be implemented to ensure access to the EGO PN Super App, which shall include two phases. Phase one, database integration and digital identification cards issuance and pays to availment of discounts from establishments via the EGOP PX Super App, in which the business establishments can use the electronic Know Your Customer or EKYC facility of the app to verify senior citizens and PWD customers and eventually develop the app as an alternative mechanism to the purchase booklet for the grant of discounts. Direct the business establishments shall record on the Ego PH Super App the transactions related to the goods purchased and services performed with 10-20% discount and exemption per bat granted to senior citizens and PWDs for purposes of tax monitoring compliance. Prior to filing in today's discussion of the bill, we have also consulted with the DICT under Secretary for e Government, Yusek David Almirol Jr., who manifested his strong support and commitment to collaborate with the House of Representatives and other concerned agencies in the swift implementation of this bill. They will be presenting the features of the app later to facilitate everyone's understanding. Gusto po namin na mapadali sa ating mga senior citizens and PWDs ang pag-avail ng kanilang mga discounts. Through this proposed legislation, we are carving a path for better collaboration between our government, senior citizens, and PWDs in the age of digitization and technological advancement. As such, I urge our colleagues to support the passage of this measure. Thank you, Congressman Ordanes. Can I just upload something that Miracle did? Ito sana yung lahat sa mga kumpanya. Apply for a senior citizen discount. Anong page ba dyan ng Miracle? Ah, that's the page ng Miracle. Baka naman nasa dulo na naman yan. Get a 5% discount on specific components if your monthly consumption does not exceed 100 kilowatt. Sana ganon, mga proactive ang mga kumpanya natin. Napaka-simple, oh. Should be 6 and above. It should be under 100. Yung method dapat nasa pangalan ng senior citizen. You will get a discount 30 days from the approval of the application. And when your consumption does not exceed 100, Requirements, ID, or government ID, electricity bill under the senior citizen's name, barangay certificate or affidavit of two distinct. Eto katanggal nga natin sa merong po yan. Barangay certificate, um, double double. The continuous day I unveil of the benefits of the senior citizen discount. The senior citizen annually renew their application. Ano ba yan? Baka may patay na, ganun ba yan? So, taon-taon, mag-a-apply kayo. Kasi katulad ng Palawan, wala ng congressman. <laughs> Pero may discount pa. Kung minsan, di mo naiintindihan ko, ba't pinaglalagay ito? Eh? Anyway, so at this point, uh, may I recognize... We will hear the Department of DICT on their presentation regarding the features of the Ego PH Super App to help you put everything in context. Kindly integrate your comments on the bill in your presentation. Now, DICT USEC David Almerol Jr. is here by recognize. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and good morning to everyone. 
Yeah, so before we, we present the, the EGOB Super App, allow me to, uh, to brief you on the uh, soft launch of the, of the first uh, Super App uh, called the EGOB PH. Uh, this has happened to, uh, to imitate the several successful countries, the like of uh, Singapore. They have the SingPass Super App, where older citizens do not be using multiple apps anymore. In Australia, they also have the MyGob Super App as well. So the intention of this super app is to make sure that citizens will not be using uh, multiple uh, websites anymore. In the Philippines right now, Mr. Chair, we have around 600 plus websites and everyone is actually promoting their own. In the LGU level, we have around 1,200 websites and all of them, they are repeatedly uh, uh, getting the same document from time to time. Not from time to time, almost of the time. So the, the biggest issue here is the identity verification system. So. Uh, um, Part of our effort is to uh, amplify the use of the national ID together with PSA, Mr. Chair. And I think if we're able to integrate the national ID system, we're able now to automatically identify who are the senior citizen, so that we don't need anymore to repeatedly ask them to prove that they are senior citizen. So it's an automated system that I'll be presenting to you today, Mr. Chair. So in the screen, Mr. Chair, I'll be skipping several slides. Um, part of our uh, government digital transformation is uh, the EGOB Super App. Okay, so, Mr. Chair, under the ICT, uh, we are we, under the Republic Act 110844, uh, we are assisting around 455 national government agencies. And we sign agreement to uh, 67 uh, government agencies, including NCSC and other uh, government agencies, uh, Mr. Chair. Aside from this, we are also assisting 1,600 LGUs in partnership with the ILG to simplify the process also of data gathering and civil registry. Okay, so. Since the President also uh, prioritized the digitalization to uh, streamline processes, these are some of the challenges that uh, we aim to, uh, to uh, solve, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, uh, part of our learning is I think the, uh, the senior citizen, including the, the PWDs, they need to go to a certain place like LGUs just to get a certain ID so that they're able to avail uh, discounts and uh, benefits, Mr. Chair. Using the EGOB Super App, we can automate that since uh, the, the data of PSA, they have around uh, 85 million uh, registered uh, uh, citizen already under PSA registry. So we can fully automate that uh, by uh, immediately uh, issuing them a, uh, a senior citizen ID pagdating po ng 6 years old hindi na kinakailangan pang pumila pumunta sa LGU pwede na pong mag-issue agad-agad ang PSA ng automatic po na integration po ng, uh, ng uh, uh, senior citizen ID So meron pong limang uh, pillar na ginagawa po ng uh, e-government office ng DIC Unang-una ay we build platforms one of them is actually the e-gov super app we assist national government agencies. We also assist local government units. We build cloud services and data centers for them, and we assist them in their information system uh, strategic plan. Ganito po yung uh, mukha po ngayon ng kasalukuyan na ginagawa po natin, uh, Mr. Chair. Kaya medyo magulo po dahil paulit-ulit yung ginagawa ng each of the government agency. So we implement a so-called once-only policy. Ibig sabihin, pag in-enter ang data ng isang tao, dapat hindi ulit sa ibang departamento. So kapag meron na po tayong registry sa PSA ng National ID, dapat makikinabang na po yan ng pangkalahatan. Kaya po itong EGO platforms ay pinatupad po natin po last year at isa po dito na binild natin ay yung tinatawag po na EGO Super App. So once na nag-plug in po dito po ang, uh, ang DTI, uh, like yung una pong bill po kanina para sa 20% discount, Dapat pag nag-online shopping na po yung isang senior citizen, dapat alam agad-agad ng online shopping na senior citizen ito. So dapat bigyan agad-agad ng discount. Technology can be our tool to automatically identify and give benefits uh, to our senior citizen, Mr. Chair. Part of this is also the government services. Dapat po ay hindi nahihirapan yung mga senior citizen. Pag nalaman agad-agad ng sistema na 60 years old ito, dapat automatic po yung kanyang natawag po na 
uh, green lane. So ito yung pong uh, dapat hindi na po siya pipila or dapat sa bahay na lang, pwede na pong ma-avail yung mga national government services. So hindi lang po ito discount, Mr. Chair, ang pwedeng magawa ng ating eGov Super App. Ma-automate na niya yung pag apply niya kung ano-ano pong mga dokumento, para mga permits, mga clearances, uh, including mga iba-ibang mga certifications, Mr. Chair. So, ang DICT po ay nakabuo ng 21 na platforms for the past one and a half years. Isa po dito po yung eGov Super App, Mr. Chair. At sa 69 po na national government na nasistahan natin, isa po dito po ang NCSC na gusto pong mag-integrate po sa isang platform para hindi po paulit-ulit yung entry. Yan po. So, um, si E-Verify ay ilalunch po sa April 8, Mr. Chair. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng government agencies, including private entities, ay mararanasan na po yung benefit ng isang national ID. Dapat pag sinabmit ng isang national ID, kung saan man, dapat automatic na yun na ma-verify na authentic na, na, na document at talaga yun. So, yun po yung pong, uh, power po ng uh, PILSIS uh, e-verify na ginawa po ng DICT at uh, PSA, Mr. Chair. So, for the first time, kahit pa na mag-submit ka ng... Peking ID, alam ng system na hindi ikaw yon. Pag nag-submit ka naman ng driver's license man yan, or senior citizen na papel, or kahit na wala kang ID, kahit na wala kang cellphone, kahit na mahirap, kahit na mayaman, may cellphone o wala, dapat pag binanggit niya na ako si Juan de la Cruz, kapag siya ay nagkaroon ng biometric authentication, alam agad ng system po yon na siya nga yung 60 years old at dapat meron siyang discount at meron po siyang benefit. Yun po yung ganda po ng ego platforms na nagawa po natin. So meron tayong tatlong simplified APIs po na pwedeng magamit na po ito ng pangkalahatan. Pwedeng magamit po ito ng DTI, pwedeng magamit ng NCSC, pwedeng magamit ng mga LGUs, pwedeng magamit ng mga banko, pwedeng magamit ng mga national government agencies including mga online shopping para po magkaroon po ng identity verification, kasama po dyan yung age verification para magkaroon po ng discount or benefits sa ating mga um, senior citizen. So ready na po yan, ah, Mr. Chair, na pwede pong magamit. Example po, Mr. Chair, live po ito. If you use the eGov Super App, pag pumunta ka po sa loob, ma-access mo na yung contributions mo sa PhilHealth. Makikita mo na yung benefit mo, automatic na po yan. Pag ikaw naman po ay government employee, pag clinic mo yung GSIS, makikita mo na rin yung benefit mo sa GSIS, yung loans mo, contributions mo, benefits mo, uh, including pension mo. So ganun din po yung pwedeng magawa po natin po sa ating senior citizen module, Mr. Chair. So we have more benefits, Mr. Chair, but uh, allow me to uh, skip the, uh, the presentation po muna for, for if you have some questions po. But uh, the EGOP Super App po, meron po tayo pong uh, uh, 60 million na generated, na connected na po sa ating national ID. So, tayo po ay number 5 po ngayon worldwide sa labanan po ng super app at uh, we're trying to level up ourselves against Singapore, Australia, and other country po na nag-launch po ng tinatawag na one-stop shop sa kanyang mga mamamayan, Mr. Chair. Thank you po, Mr. Chair. Alright, I think um, we're open for questions. Any questions from members? Wala. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, bakit po uh, 85 million lang yung ano, may problema pa ba si PSA? Yes, the PSA? Is PSA around? Hi, nice, boss. Can you answer that question? Yeah, good morning, sir. Um, as of today, yes, that's correct, sir. As, uh, sorry, as of March 8, we registered around 85 or 80 million. Um, there are certain areas we have difficulties to register, like the far flung. However, the PSA is doing its uh, all, all its effort, like uh, mobile registration, sir. So we're st and there are, st there are still, sir, um, we are yet to register the zero to five part of the population. But we are starting to pilot the registration of the zero to five. Mr. Chair, if you are using only mobile and registration, hindi po ba magiging problema rin yan? Baka may mga uh, fictitious na naman na uh, ma-register natin? Yes, please. Yeah, okay, yes, sir. Um, the Filsis Registry has the process of which 
or it's called the duplication, sir. Where uh, that's the reason why sometimes your data takes time to be printed because it will be the uh, duplicated um, both uh, automation and manual. Parang i-check po niya kung nag-register, i-match po niya yung information mo dun sa database namin kung nag-register ka na po ulit. So you're, you may be able to uh, register again using uh, different demographic information, but the system can determine your biometric information. So, uh, wala po kasi as mentioned, wala pong dalawang tao magkaparehas ng fingerprint, uh, iris, or the facial uh, recognition, sir. So, there are certain uh, there are certain ways how to capture those uh, who intends to register again. Finally, Mr. Chair, uh, kailan po yung deadline matapos? Yung... Less yung 0 to 5 na edad. Yung uh, 5 and above uh, kailan po ang target na matapos? Uh, sir, that's, I'm so sorry, medyo maliit. Uh, we are targeting around 92 million. Uh, that's uh, our data of 85 million is the is 92 percent, if I'm not mistaken, of the total target. Um, let me get back to you, sir, kung kailan po yung target na matapos yung uh, total population. At this point, may I recognize Congresswoman Larni Labin Roque, my neighbor, and also of the great province of Bukidnon. One of the most... Who else may tanong pa? Yes, yes, sir. Mr. Chair, there is a uh, technology we call EKYC developed by the ICT para po mapag-combine or yung pong data po ng both PhilHealth at National ID. So since uh, PhilHealth, they have around 130 million, syempre kasama na po dyan yung mga nawala na po. No? So kapag yung pong EKYC, pag nag-query po, yung first query po niya ay National ID, pag hindi po niya nahanapan po doon ay lilipat po yung query po kay uh, PhilHealth po. So we have a system like that, Mr. Chair, para po uh, interim-wise, haba pong tinatapos po ng... Uh, ng PSA ang pag-capture ng 115 million uh, or 90 million as uh, yung target po ng uh, PSA uh, with your permission Mr. Chair uh, we can also use the DICT EKYC po para po mag-benefit po yung mga senior citizen na kahit hindi pa po sila nakapag-register sa National ID may kinabang pa rin po, po sila sa technology uh, engagement uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So may I DTI, any comment on 10063? This, are you on, kasama ba si Ala dito? Alamiron, yung DTI? Super gold. Hmm. Actually po, ang na-integrate lang po namin po ngayon is yung business permit po. Kaya nga po kayo na po, nahuli lang po ako, nag-raise po ako ng hand po kanina. Doon po sana po sa IRR po nung pong online uh, discount. I think mahirap pong gawin po yon kung wala pong technology engagement po ang mga online shopping. There's no way po na magkaroon ng automated discounting po sa mga online shopping pag wala pong technology enabled po na i-integrate natin. That's why I was sana um, humbly... Uh, requesting Mr. Chair, baka po ma-involve naman po sana. Wala po kasi po si DICT po dun sa IRR po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, noted. Sama ba natin? Sama. May, may any objection to an uh, amendment of an approved measure? To go up, can you move to uh, include the ICT as part of the IRR? Uh, I move, Mr. Sir. I move, Mr. Sir, to include the ICT as part of the agency that will uh, draft the IRR. Second. Are there any objections? Here now? So, it's approved. So, DTI, you're fine? Yes, Mr. Chair, we are fine to include the ICT. No comment? 
of the committee. But uh, Mr. Chair, may I just, May I just would like to raise uh, something. I, perhaps I missed it uh, earlier. Um, Which is 10061 or 10063? 10061 and 10062, Mr. Chair. Wag mo neto, kasi last year. Ah, last week. Six one. Ano, ano problema six one? Ah, uh, for the six one, sir. Uh, perhaps it will be in the six two. The the tax deductibility of the five percent discount, Mr. Chair. Oh, nandem ba yun? Pero nilagay na namin dun eh. Nineteen hundred. Sa six one meron din deductibility. Wala, okay. So six two na lang. Okay, yes, WD. Okay, Dole. Ah, senior. This W D your order. Ah yes, sorry. Um, we support the proposals for um, we support the proposal for the betterment of senior citizens and persons with disability, your honor. Um, we will be submitting our position paper with regard to the subject, your honor. Once it was it is signed by our secretary. Thank you. Can you answer that, Almila? What how? What happens to the visually impaired? Um, Your Honor, I'm, I just downloaded the application and it's accessible um, for visually impaired. Uy. Wow, no man. He, he, he answered it for you, but if you want to add, okay. Yes, uh, na Mr. Chair, um, the EGOP Super App is uh, actually it can be accessed. Na natuwa nga kami kasi marami po nag-download ng senior citizen. Kasi sabi nila po, yung mga senior citizen po, eh, sila na po yung maghapong nagpo-Facebook daw, kaya may cellphone na. <laughs> pero po, pati po sa, pero may mga concern po kami, example po yung talaga pong hindi po makita talaga yung app, o yung pong talagang, uh, let's say, blind po, na nabuo. Ito po yung mga pinag-aaralan po ng DICT po para malagyan po ng mga voice uh, integ uh, AI integration po ito. Uh, pero po, by next year po yung plano po namin ma-integration, Mr. Chair. Para po kahit po na hindi makakita or hindi po talaga makagamit ng uh, kung ano-anong uh, uh, gadget po, ay gamit ng kanyang boses po, ay po pwede po siyang uh, ma-register pa rin, Mr. Chair. Or gamit ng kanyang mga kamag-anak. Baka you're over-promising, ha? Huh? Yung kamag-anak, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> that's why, pag-aaralan pa lang, Mr. Chair, yung pong kamag-anak po, pwede po siyang i-rehistro. Yun po yung isang pinag-aaralan namin ngayon, Mr. Chair. So my consent po, yung kamag-anak, na-rehistro po yung isang... Uh, Uh, PWD po para po magka-benefit pa din po yung uh, hindi makagamit po ng ano ng uh, Igop Super App Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Para sa inyo mga congressman, ha? the most committed uh, voting sector are the senior citizens. The most committed. When you say committed, uh, if you compare to the Gen Z, they can flip-flop. Ito mga senior citizen based uh, sa kanilang psycho they are the most committed uh, voting sector hindi sila nadadala ng tiktok <laughs> so BIR I'm sure you have no questions um, your honor uh, as to the bill your honor um, 10063 yes your honor uh, e Similar to the objection earlier, Your Honor, as to the increase of the percentage of the uh, deductibility, Your Honor. Okay, uh, 0062. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. NS NCSC? Your Honor, three comments. Okay, one, 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 one puro thank you. <laughs> Number one, we're happy of so thank you na yan. Next. Uh, <laughs> the ICT's uh, effort because we immediately participated when Pero we were invited. Can Meron po. Ah, uh, si, you have no cell phone? Si, si ano na, si Yusik Dave na ang magpapakita. Oh, okay. The other thing, Your Honor, is uh, still the concern over e-commerce because like uh, what Yusik Dave said, uh, kung hindi sila kasali, hindi ma ma ano. and the, the concern is, for instance, if we enroll into a hotel through the uh, IT platform, yung mga discounts hindi na avail and then of course yung online purchases so uh, I hope uh, Yusuf Dave will be able to help us on this uh, the third your honor is about the Miralco you mentioned that uh, and it says uh, do not exceed 100 kilowatt hours in some uh, 
ECs, and uh, I, I know that uh, Congressman Dagok is here. In some, <laughs> in some ECs, uh, when it exceeds 100, and therefore if it's 101, wala na pong 5% discount. So there is an issue of interpretation. Because of the IR, perhaps, Your Honor, uh, we will be able to uh, correct this. Uh, finally, Your Honor, I think data sharing will, will be simplified if we have this EGOV application. Uh, there is a difficulty, for instance, on our side. We cannot get the, the names of uh, the senior citizens from PSA directly because of uh, data privacy. But uh, when you legislate, Your Honor, everything will be solved. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> it's a universal right. Privacy, how can I legislate against it? Ego can address, Your Honor. Ego can address if there is. It's called the data, uh, data consent po. So if there is a consent, consent po. Pag nag-consent na po yung may-ari ng data, wala oh. na po tayong problema po sa data privacy po. So since nag-consent na po sila na nag-register dati sa national ID natin at gusto nilang matamasa na po yung, yung benefits ng pagkakaroon ng national ID po, ay uh, wala na po tayong problema po sa data privacy, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Actually, the EGOV app has an AI for the uh, face recognition. In fact, if you try to lie about your information, if you download it, and then if you ask someone to be you, or you enter wrong information, or you enter a real information, but you ask someone to pretend to be you, the system will know using AI po yun, Mr. Chair. So we're currently, we're using that, Mr. Chair. Po. In terms of behavioral patterns, yung, I think it's machine learning, right? <laughs> so, itong dalawa, sigurado ko, they buy the same medicines. Uh, so, actually, po yung pong machine learning po, pwede po actually, it's called po the uh, um, machine learning AI. Sibig sabihin, pag tinuturuan po siya, siguro kung medyo pag maglakad na ay, pero po, this is futuristic, uh, um, Mr. Chair. No, I've just seen TV. In 30 seconds, they were able to, they were able to, ito, no, not because he has TV. I just wanted to see the machine. It was AI, I know, connected after the how do you call the X-ray in uh, 30 seconds. Binigyan kagad ng ano ng diagnostic. So anyway, I don't want to make things very you know. so. NCS at Puskanano, NCDA. Good morning, Mr. Chair. So we welcome this proposal and we're very impressed with the app, especially that it has been showcased today that it is accessible for the disability sector. So thank you to the ICT. Um, Mr. Chair, um, we, w we just have one clarification. Okay. Um, because, um, so I have here the copy of the substitute bill. Um, it says zero, zero, six, on sec yes, um, six to your honor. On six to? Yes, Your Honor, on the EGO. Um, on the transitory provisions, um, Section 6B, it says there that in order to maintain uninterrupted access to features for senior citizens and persons with disabilities until the full implementation, um, they may continue utilizing their ID card. Now, Your Honor, our question is that, so is it, um, reading the way this was phrased, um, is our understanding correct that it is meant that after the full implementation, the ID cards will no longer be used? And if that is so, Your Honor, um, may, if um, of course you will submit to the wisdom of the um, of the representatives. But our request is that the cards be not totally phased out for the reason that. There might be those who are using the, say for example, persons with disability ID cards in GDAS or who do not have access to technology. So we do not want to deprive them of the um, usage of, or, or we do not want to deprive them of the availment of the benefits if they don't have a cellular phone. Although of course ideally everyone would have an access to an app, but um, just that, Your Honor. Thank you. Almiron, what's your answer to that? Mr. Chair. 
Mr. Uh, Chair. So you can, you can address dual ID, one digital, the other one physical. Mr. Chair, uh, I'm sharing a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation, Mr. Chair. Okay. The power of national ID is not because meron kang daladalang ID. I know. So any, any ID you can present. So it's like Korea po or even in, in India, let's say po sa Pilipinas, kahit panong ID ang dala mo. Halimbawa, dala mo po eh, yung pong dating senior citizen ID mo or halimbawa driver's license po yan or kahit wala ka pong nadala at all. You just mention your ano your information plus yung face recognition natin. Alam ng system po yun po. Magkakaroon po ng verification system po yun. Ito po yung tinatawag po na National ID E-Verify, Mr. Chair. So, hindi na po natin kailangan pang asahan na may hawak ka pang ID o wala. In fact, ang, ang bagong mundo po ngayon, kahit na wala ka pong dala-dala na, ang dala mo lang yung sarili, kapag sinabi mo yung first name, ba nag-apply ka po on a certain website, alimbawa po sa Shopee, example po, Lazada, if may I use po, Mr. Chair, pag nag-register ako, nilagay ko po doon, Juan de la Cruz, nilagay ko yung aking, eh, nag nagsinungaling ako sa birthday ko, sinabi ko doon, mali yung birthday, hindi kagana po yung i-verify doon. Pero pag nilagay ko yung first name, last name, middle name, at birthday, at nung nag-selfie po ako sa Shopee o Lazada, na-identify niya nga niya, na-e-verify siya agad-agad nga, itong tao na to ay isa siyang senior citizen. Dapat po yan, ang mga online shopping, mabigyan agad-agad po ng discount po ito. So, it's a cardless system, uh, verification system po itong e-verify natin, Mr. Chair. So, sir, we just tried. He doesn't have his ID. It failed. Wala pang na, wala pa po siyang national ID po. Nag-apply na si oh. uh, So uh, tama uh, po 'yun. So perfect po yung system kasi hindi ka po nag-apply po sa national ID. Hindi nag-apply siya kagad na. Kasi hindi pa niya nakuha yung physical ID. Ayun. So maybe part po siya doon sa nililinis po ng uh, PSA po Lago, na. Lagi ka naman lagi may tat may sagot agad sa <laughs> Sorry po. Sorry po. <laughs> Nawawala po yun. Ano, may konting ano uncertain Mr. Sir. Chair. Yes, uh, Congressman Tu. May I, may, may I direct my question to PSA? PSA, kailan ho ba lalabas sa mga ID namin? Sa akin po, eh, two years na po ako nag-apply. Hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin. PSA, Mr. Chair, can you answer that? Yes, sir. Uh, let me get back to you on a formal uh, reply, Your Honor, because I need to consult my principals as to the issue of the non-issuance or non-delivery of the National ID. Mr. Chair, uh, can you tell your principals to give us an answer ASAP? Everybody's waiting for it. Yes, sir. I will. Kailangan, kailangan na po yan. Hindi po yan display. Hindi po yan na pang dagdag, pang pakapal na pitaka kung wala kang pera. We need that ID now. Yes, sir. I will relay the message to my principal right away, sir. And another question, Mr. Chair, for uh, uh, the National Commission for Disability Affairs. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have just received a report that uh, kumakalat na naman po yung mga peking PWD IDs, uh, particularly dyan sa, sa Manila. Nagre-reklamo po ang mga merchants dahil wala naman talaga hong uh, sakit. Mga bata, malalakas yung katawan. Eh, hindi mo rin pwede sabihin na Konting mali na, 14 kibot lang, malabo lang ang mata ko. Eh ako pala, pwede na ako mag-apply ng uh, disability affairs dahil malabo yung mata ko. So, what uh, these merchants would like, uh, Mr. Chair, na maimbestigahan mo siguro ito, bakit naglagana po ito mga fake uh, uh, PWD IDs? Can uh, NCDA uh, answer about this? Do you know anything about it? And uh, have you been doing something about it? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, so if I may address, I think in the first hearing, we shared an instance wherein um, similar cases of fake IDs, IDs that are actually being sold for a fee, either a soft copy or a hard copy of the ID. And then what we did was we reported the matter to the LGU of um, the city of Manila. We addressed it to the mayor and then we reported um, to them the reports that were forwarded to us. And then they conducted an investigation. Your Honor, we submitted the document with regard to that. However, um, if there are new cases, then we would welcome looking into it again because we also raised this to the Subcommittee on Access to Justice of the NCDA as chaired by the Department of Justice and we are willing to um, be coordinated with DOJ to take measures um, to file the appropriate cases should, should there be any forwarded to us on this matter. So. 
but nothing of recent, um, nothing recently from the city of Manila, Your Honor. Let me say, Chair, the problem is, uh, wala pong naparusahan, hindi po kinuha ulit yung mga IDs, yung mga in possession, kahit na hindi naman po sila PWDs, they still have those IDs. So the question now is, what is the action of the local government unit and NCDA? Kasi po, ang sinasabi niyo, imbestigahan, nandoon na po tayo, pero patuloy po na ginagamit itong mga fake IDs ng mga tao na wala naman pong kapansanan, kahit sa mo anggulo tignan, ay eh, ginagamit po yung ID. Hindi nga po sila senior citizen. Meron pa nga isang incident na naman, no? tatlo sila, isang pamilya, kumain na sa restaurant sa Maynila, tatlo silang puro may PWD. Paano naman ho kikita? Kaya minsan no, itong mga retailers, itong mga merchants, naiinis po sa atin, gawa tayo ng gawa ng mga batas, pero hindi naman po talaga na-implement na maayos at inaabuso po ng ilan, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair. Um... For your last comment, answer to that. Um, we acknowledge. Bakit the... hindi mo binawi yung ID? Uh, yung yung, yung ID. Uh, your Honor, we do not have the power to. Um, we do not have the power to, to do that as NCDA uh, under our charter. So that's our limitation, Your Honor. And then, as with um, with regard to the comment on, for example, there are some customers of certain establishments using IDs, and then to the point of view of the establishment, they do not look like they have a disability. While we recognize that probably there are those who are actually using fake IDs, um, we would also want to reiterate that there are those what we call non-apparent disabilities. These are those that when you look at the person, they look like you know any typical individual without a disability, but they actually have a disability. It is just not apparent. So perhaps um, that um, in some cases it might be the it might be the matter, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, of course, the right of first interpolation. Meron ba ako hindi na recognize? Okay, na lahat. So the minority, you have a problem. Manifestation of support again. Mr. Thank Chair. you very much. Majority. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Larni. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, in connection with um, Congressman Dolfo's uh, comment on the fake IDs from with disabilities, uh, with people with disabilities, there are also reports on fake IDs with senior citizens. Um, there was an establishment, they actually told me, we don't like... Uh, every time they, they submit to us our, uh, their IDs, some of them are foreigners. Why do they have senior citizen discount cards? And they refuse to give the discount. And they will be saying that these cards were given to us. So I think there should be some sort of a power that you can confiscate these IDs, especially when it's very, um, very visual that they should not be having this... Um, uh, senior citizens' cards in connection with the PW cards. And CSE? Your Honours, uh, in response to the question of uh, Representative Roque, Your Honour, um, under Republic Act 9994, Your Honour, the unit issuing the ID is the local government. Although, in my discussion with former Secretary of uh, DSWD, Corazon Alma de Leon, she was saying that the ID, which is on paper, was supposed to be printed by DSWD together with the booklets. However, in the subsequent events, it now is the local government printing the ID and issuing the ID at the same time, including the booklets. And so, uh, much as we want to prosecute anyone, Your Honor, we would like to say that in the redress mechanism, the redress starts with the LGU. Pag may reklamo sa LGU, sinasalo namin by asking them to furnish us copies. Right now, Your Honor, we would like to say that uh, we have yet to learn uh, a complaint about it. But if we do, Your Honor, we would like to assure you that we will, NCSE, will do the case build up. Uh, so, Your Honors, if there are information uh, coming from Representative Roque on that, we will gladly ask uh, that we be furnished the names or the circumstance so we can investigate, Your Honor. 
So are you suggesting penal clauses? Yes, Your Honor, there is already a penal clause in the 9994. Uh, if one uses the ID in violation of the law, uh, may penalty of uh, oh, 100,000 yata at saka may imprisonment. But it can be increased, Your Honor. Yes, Congressman Tupac. So, Chair, foreigners nga eh. Mga pangalan foreign. Mga Korean names. So these are fake IDs. And they insist on getting the discount. Although they are senior citizens, they're not Filipinos. So, in short, fake siya. So what can the, mer the merchant do to protect themselves? And maybe may they can confiscate these IDs if it's of use that they should not be having those cards. Uh, Your Honor, if we are only provided the names and the, the merchants, we will definitely investigate this, Your Honor. I have heard of uh, such thing, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the problem was Tama uh, Puyon from Southeast Asia po. And uh, reason niya is uh, an investor in here. Yung isa naman po na issue, uh, parang American ho yata, nakapakasawa ng Filipino, pero on process pa lang po yung kanyang citizenship. So, ang question now is uh, sa NCSC, can he use that because on process yung kanyang citizenship or yung kanyang uh, residency uh, in the Philippines? Can they, can, can they have that? Answer is no, Your Honor, because uh, RA 9994 is very clear. Only Filipino citizens 60 years and above. So if one still wants to be a Filipino citizen on process, pa mukhang, mukhang hindi. Chair, can you, can you, can you do a, a news release about it para everybody will know? Kasi if you guys will just be quiet, then then uh, maabuso para alam din po ng mga merchants natin, ng mga traders natin na hindi po pwede. Why don't you do a call a press conference and then announce that foreigners are not allowed to use senior citizen ID or PWIDs if they are foreigners, kung hindi pa po sila Filipino citizens? Okay, your that, will, that will address the problem. We'll comply, Your Honor. Okay. We'll monitor that. <laughs> so can we present now substitute bill uh, 10063? Mr. Chair, may I make a motion? I move that we approve a, uh, a number uh, of substitute, substitute bill HB number 1063. Subject to style with its corresponding can committee you, report. Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, no. Can we all that? Uh, can you push? Yan ba yan? 063 next. Yan ba yung super oh, gap? Next, next, next. Adapting next. So you have no question here, Almira? You read it now? I, Mr. Chair, yes. um, if may, may I just uh, humbly uh, uh, discuss the, the solution that uh, our Honorable Senator Tulfo was discussing. When we launched the... This, the Congressman is better looking. <laughs> Sorry, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so <laughs> nalito po ako. And then po, um, nalo mo pinasama ang pwesto mo. Ano po ba niya? I think your wish, ano. Okay. I'm sorry po, Mr. Chair. Okay. Na, ano, na, na malikmata po ako, Mr. Chair. Anyway po, um, when we launched po the EGOP Super App, Mr. Chair, one of the features is so-called e-report. Live na po siya ngayon po, Mr. Chair. Although wala pa po yung senior citizen. In fact, if you report for child abuse, the, the, the Commission for the Welfare of Children will receive the complaint. If you report for women abuse, the Philippine uh, Commission for Women on Women will receive the message. If you report for crime, the PNP will receive also the message. The phase two, if you report po for fire, the BFA will receive the message. Report for overpricing, DTI will receive the message. If report for, for red tape, our town will receive the message. And we're adding po senior citizen concern. And I think some merchant concern, we need to add that po, so that we have a solution for them also to report. Kasi po kung wala silang tools po to, to report, we are really running without head. So I, I think if we're able to promote also uh, that merchants can report fake uh, uh, PWD IDs or senior citizen IDs po at least po ma-receive po ng ano po yan 
ng uh, NCSC o kung sino man po yung po pwede pong uh, tumanggap po ng reklamo, Mr. Chair. So I think we have a solution, Mr. Chair, but I think it's just about the pronouncement po as uh, mentioned po by uh, Congressman Tulbo po for announcement. Okay. Uh, let's go to phase two. Dali. Okay. So nabasa mo to ha. Almero, nabasa mo to. It's all about super gold. Super gold. Super up. Next. Kailangan pa ba ito? Yung discount. Yun, 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 yun. Kaya ba yan? Tingin mo? Yung booklet, e-booklet, booklet. May answer, yes. Mr. Chair. So, doon po sa booklet po is kapag pinakita na po yung kanyang uh, uh, IGOB app, pag iniscan po ito ng merchant, example po na grocery po yung isang senior citizen, ay bumili po siya ng pagkain. At nung during sa kanyang pagbabayad, ay pinakita niya po yung kanyang app, meron pong application programmer's interface po na pwede pong i-provide po tayo po. Para po ma-automatic na po malista po sa booklet yung kanyang binili. Kasi po, ang pinaka-hurdle po ng uh, booklet ay imamanual po ito ng senior citizen. Yun po yung luma pong way para magkaroon po ng booklet uh, kung ano ang naging benefit niya, ilan ang naging... I get that. Everybody gets that now. But uh, what, what about double dipping? Double dipping, using a manual to get one and then using the digital to get additional. Same thing po, doon po sa manual, kahit po na hindi po cellphone ang gagamitin niya, pag binigay niya po yung any ID po, the same API po yun, gagana po yun, Mr. Chair. So, hindi po required po na cellphone. So, mauhuli mo siya? Mauhuli po yun, Mr. Chair. Sigurado ka? Opo, if you may be allowed po to, later on po to, to, to present po live yeah, po. present na lang to tool po, he sells the house of rep naman. Ako, tagagawa na ng batas. <laughs> Okay lang ba? Pwede po. Can you explain it to him? Um, so, okay na kayo dito, NSC and CDA, you have no problems about e-booklet? Um, no problems for now, you're on. Talaga? I mean, um, this is because we so just received the copy. So, pag dininay but... kayo ng parmasya, okay. uh, dahil on... wala kayong dalang booklet, ito ipapakita mo. Your Honor, what I meant by for now is that um, we would like awesome. to be given the chance to really consult this with the with our sector first, Your Honor, because we value their inputs. And in the disability sector, they have this motto of nothing about us without us. So since this is a huge change, um, we would like to be given the opportunity to like conduct the proper um, consultation with them, Your Honor. Ano ni pa natin lalagay ng deadline to? Puro alternative mechanism to a manual booklet. Ilang bang senior citizen ang may cellphone? Ilang bang taksil sa inyo? Well, so far, Your Honor, from our online registration, uh, 4,600,000 may cellphone yun. Kasi ano sila? Pero there are 7.2 million voters. Uh, there are 11.6 million voters, Your Honor, na senior citizens. 11.6, the most committed pa yan, ha? They really vote? Yeah, of course. <laughs> for what, for who they want? Yeah. So, bala na. So, alternative mechanism. So, you future congresses, so we leave it to them to uh, abolish the manual booklets. If, Your Honor, if I may be allowed, Your Honor. I think uh, we will have to define the transition phase because union. Paano ba to? Gusto na i-approve ni Tulfo sa bahala na. Sa baba na lang. So, Mr. Chair. Yes. Kasi nga po, yung booklet ho na yan, it's it's really a bahala. Even you can ask Congressman Ordanes. Senior citizens have they always have senior citizen moments. Kaya ho, pagdating ng po, pagdating ho ng pobre doon sa counter wala siya, no discount po siya dahil yun po yung store policy. Kahit na obvious pa ho, sometimes yung mga kahera natin are not using their head, di ba? 
Eh, hindi ho eh. Kailangan ho eh. Policy, mas masususpindi po ako, mamememo po ako. So we really have to do away with this, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay, I know. Namawala uh, ako pa nagsalita ka ni. Eh. Ano ba yan? So, kaya nyo to? Ang uh, mga ilang taon kailangan mo. Mr. Chair, I mean to automate, to digitize the whole process of... Ito po yung naging discussion po, Mr. Chair, with, ano, during the brainstorming, dapat wala pong ginagawa na yung yung madali yung buhay ng ano nung uh, nung uh, senior citizen dapat wala siyang ginagawa basta pag pinakita yung ID niya pinakita yung cellphone niya or sinabi yung kanyang information the moment po na pinasok niya sa isang sistema yung sistema po ang mag-automate po doon sa e-booklet tapos sasabihan din siya na uwi lampas ka na ng 500 of course po <laughs> si may cooperation po kasi yung merchant dito Mr. Chair eh. it cannot be done in a full automated way kung kinonsume po, alimbawa po, online shopping po, bumili po yung senior citizens sa online shopping. During the registration, meron tayong EKYC po na na-implement. Alam ng online online shopping yon na siya ay senior citizen. Bumili ng isang, let's say, bumili po ng pagkain doon or whatsoever po. Pagkabili po doon, alam niya na item 1, item 2, item 3. Pagkaklik niya ng pay, nagbayad online regardless kung anong ginamit niya. So po, automatic po yun na alam ng merchant na yung item na tatlo na yon ay binili po noong senior citizen na yon So dapat po yan, kaya nang ibato po yan sa e-booklet agad-agad sa data po ng senior citizen na yon So ma-automate po yon Pero wala pong ginawa at all dapat si senior citizen. It's a system-generated e-booklet, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, siguro pwede nyo nang isama dyan na automatic ho magkukompute yung app na yan para pag chinek man ni senior citizen yung balance niya ito na lang, 5 pesos na lang yung discount mo. Ito na lang, 100 na lang, dahil nagamit mo na. You know, pag walang ginagawa sa senior citizen, i-check niya yung balance niya. Kung magkano pa ang kanyang discount na ma-avail sa susunod na punta niya sa grocery store. Can, can, can we do that, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, may answer po. Yes. It can be done technologically po, but I think this is really a massive implementation po, which I think DTI can assist. Since we have the e-commerce, uh, the, the Internet Transaction Act uh, passed uh, recently, if there is a mandating power that all merchants should use this kind of validation, mao automate po yon, Mr. Chair. Kaya pong gawin po yon. Pero kung ayaw gawin po ng merchant, wala po tayo po magagawa, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, assistance of legal guardian, tax administration for purposes of tax monitoring, business. So under the eco it's related to food service with 20% discount exemption from VAT granted to CSP. For your PWD, ah, it's a gawa kayo ng batas na bawal na ayang ano. <coughs> so, yes. Mr. Chair, uh, just a suggestion on the tax administration provision to include the 5%, not only the 20%. Okay. So, uh, pakimove naman dyan, no? Pakimove na yung uh, section 5, yung dagdag yung 5%. Kahit Tagalog na, alam na namin gagawin. I move, Mr. Chair, to include, yes. uh, include uh, in uh, section 5, the uh, 5%. Thank you. So it's the 5%, the 20% discount, and the VAT exemption. Okay? So... Now, uh, is there a second to the motion of Congressman Tufo? Seconded by Congresswoman Larney Roque. So are there any objections? Hearing none, so the super go. <laughs> the super up for, um, for senior citizens and for persons with disability is hereby approved. Okay, finally, to the last. The unnumbered substitute bill in House Bill number 10062. May I request Congressman Ordanes to preside. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But, but before we proceed, I'd like to ask the representative from DTI, could you please provide an update on the results of the public consultations regarding our recommendation to raise the discount from 1,300 
to 2,500 with subsequent adjustments every five years to accommodate inflation. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, we finished the consultations and um, we are in the process of finalizing the joint administrative order. Um, there is only one um, comment or major comment from the retailers and that is to um, include tax deductibility for the discounts that are that they give um, to, to senior citizens in the Mr. Chair. But we have to do that via legislation. We cannot do it in the joint Thank you. Uh, let us consider House Bill Number One Zero Zero Six Two. Come, sir, please read the title of the measure. Thank you, sir. Your Honours, House Bill Number One Zero Zero Six Two, entitled "An Act Rationalizing the Benefits and Privileges of Senior Citizens and Persons with Disabilities," authored by Representative Salcedo, Dennis Pascoe, et al. Your Honours, thank you. May we, may we request your person Baskook of the Special Committee on Persons with Disabilities to deliver his sponsorship remarks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my honor to sponsor House Bill Number 10062 entitled an act rationalizing the benefits, the benefits and privileges of senior citizens and persons with disabilities. This bill was a result of the investigation of the joint committees which revealed the need to harmonize the benefits provided under RA 7277 as amended and RA 7432 as amended. Among those benefits harmonized are the following. Number one, discount on utilities. Number two, exemption from training fees. Number three, additional deduction from the gross income of employers of senior citizens and PWDs. Number four, monthly stipend. And five, free medical and dental services, diagnostic and laboratory fees, such as x-rays, computerized topography scans, and blood tests to indigent senior citizens and PWDs in all government, government facilities. We also provided the following additional incentives. Number one, 20% discount on goods and services that are on promotional rate. Number two, 20% discount on parking fees imposed by establishments. To provide ease and access to services and benefits, we mandated the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or the DICT, to include sections dedicated to senior citizens and PWDs in the EGOV PH Super App. That will hopefully do away with the medicine and basic and prime commodities booklet. These provisions, Mr. Chair, will bring substan substantial benefit to our senior citizens and PWD. May I therefore earnestly seek your support for the measure and at the appropriate time move for the approval of the measure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> may we now hear the comments and recommendations of our resource persons. Please comment on the provisions that were not addressed in House Bills number 10061 and 10063. May we call on uh, first the Department of Finance. That earlier, um, the, uh, the position of the, the um, draft position of the Department of Finance is that uh, uh, under the current regime, it's uh, uh, double discount is not allowed. But um, um, uh, as uh, I have manifested earlier, we submit to the wisdom of the body. Good. Uh, and as to the... We talk to Dr. Vina. On the... 
monthly utilization of water and electricity by public utilities. Um, um, we're still, uh, uh, we cannot, I cannot yet uh, comment on this, sir. Um, I, I have to submit to the uh, comments of the of the uh, of the uh, principals, um, but we will um, provide our um, uh, official comments as uh, as early as possible, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, from uh, BPI or IC Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, aside from the one that I've mentioned on um, tax deductibility of the 5% discount, we would also like to suggest that the body consider a case where an SE is also a PWD. So in that case, I believe it is not the intention of the body that um, the, there is a separate discount as an SE and as a PWD, Mr. Not Chair. Double, not double D. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And also, um, in, in the case where an establishment is mandated to provide 20% discount but is also selling BNPC. So in that case, um, our position is that um, that establishment should also provide the 5% discount, Mr. Chair. So both the 20 and the 5%. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, from the, the Department of Health. Huh? Mr. Chair, magandang mahali po. On the part of the Department of Health, we have no comment on the proposed bill. Um, Doon lang po sa mga x-ray, yung CT scan, blood test, uh, usually naman po na sasagot naman po yun ng hospital, as well as yung medical assistance program ng Department of Health. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, may we call on the DSWD, Attorney Anthony Mark Emokling. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, the DSWD supports the legislative measures um, helping um, persons with disabilities and senior citizens. Um, Mr. Chair, we will submit our position paper once it is signed by our secretary. Thank you. Uh, next is from the Department of Labor and Employment. Good morning, Chair. On behalf of the Department of Labor and Employment, as we have stated a while ago, we support the intention of the committee on the, uh, on the promotion of the social justice and inclusion of senior citizens and PWD. Hence, we have, as we have stated, we have submitted our comments in relation to um, House Bill Number 10062. For the consideration of the committee, um, uh, may I read as, uh, as follows? Under Section 2 of um, Letter F, uh, the additional deduction from gross income of the employers of senior citizens and PWDs equivalent to 25% of the total amount paid as salaries and wages to senior citizens and PWDs, provided that such entities present proof certified by the DOLE that the senior citizens or PWDs are under, the em under their employee. On the said provision, the concerned establishment can submit a certification validating the employed senior citizen or PWD as well as their period of employment and employment status. Subsequently, the department can issue valid. Paro Maria Pami Zamora, uh, DML uh, Janet. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Naririto, rin, na, naririto ulit kami. Maraming salamat sa invitasyon. And I'll give the floor to the younger ones to make their opening statement. Uh, magandang umaga po sa uh, mga kaibigan natin sa press, sa media.
discussion today. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I think this is the first time I have joined uh, this press con. Uh, but I think our friends in the media do know and realize that this has been a very hard-working uh, house of representatives. And I think it really is part of our uh, obligation no, to the people of the Philippines to also be able to convey to them the type of things that the work in the house, in fact, also entails. So, magandang umaga po, and I look forward to uh, hearing your questions. Thank you. Uh, Mela Lismoras from Channel 4 for uh, your questions. Hi, good morning po mga Kongs. Uh, two session days na lang, Holy Week break na ng camera. So may question is for uh, Congressman Galin, but others can also answer. Ano-ano po po kaya yung planong uh, ipasa ng uh, camera? And uh, kasi sa Senate naman po, sabi naman ni uh, Senator Angara, sila daw magpo-focus sila sa LEDAC pills at uh, sadi yung madidefer mo na discussions on economic amendments until mag-resume ang uh, session sa April 29. May I also get your thoughts on this po? I believe we have uh, two or three um, urgent matters that has to be tackled in relation to LEDAC priorities. And um, uh, uh, we, we would submit to the majority Pero alam naman ng lahat na natapos natin on second reading yung RBH 7 or the economic chacha. Um, most probably in the next two days, we'll be able to finish it on third reading. And um, well, I do respect the Senate na ipapagpaliban mo na yung econ chacha, uunahin yung leda. Um, this brings us to the issue of ano ba ang priority? Kasi sa pananaw ng Kongreso, priority lahat eh, lahat ng leda. Plus the econ cha, -cha. Kasi bawat araw, bawat minuto, bawat buwan, at magiging taon yan, at taabutan niya ng eleksyon, that we are going to delay economic cha, -cha. E lalo natin, pinapabagal ang pangudlan ng Pilipinas. So, I still have hope in the Senate, na alam ko naman mga hardworking naman silang lahat, magdo-double time sila, na unahin talaga yung napaka-importanteng Paano kalang batas na ito? Dahil hindi ito para sa aming mga politiko. This is a very important step that we need to take boldly as a legacy to our children's children. Ay, yes, si Kong Lima Porpo. Thank you. Um, and that's a nice question because it brings into focus the urgency of RBH 6 and 7 and the remaining LEDAC bills. Here at the House of Representatives, we've completed 57 of the LEDAC measures. In the Senate, uh, I think we still have 33 for them to tackle of the 57 that we've completed and passed on third reading. Uh, not, uh, and then on top of that, we have the RBH, which uh, is more than likely going to be passed on third reading, RBH 7, this afternoon or before we adjourn. Now, if you think about it, when we adjourn, we return na naman. We only, I think, have one month. Then we have a long break. Then it's SONA. After SONA, it's budget, and we're all very busy with the budget. Come October, we'll be filing for, for our candidacies. So we really only have until the SONA to get all of this done as legislators. After the SONA, the circus is in town again, and we'll be campaigning. And, you know, so I really hope, and I have faith in the Senate, they are, you know, an independent institution. But I really hope that this is not dribble, dribble politics. Because at the very least, the Filipino voters deserve to know how our senators stand. It's not busy, busy, busy kami. We need to know where does Senator Bato stand when it comes to the issue of nationalizing, you know, anti opening up RBH 6 or RBH 7 will negatively affect our nationalist ideals. He used to be our chief PNP. Where does uh, Senator Robin Padilla stand? He's a staunch um, nationalist uh, you know, figure, uh, proudly Filipino, when it comes to the type of debate that we're having here in the House of Representatives. Where does uh, Senator Pia Cayetano stand when it comes to, for example, the education sector being opened up to uh, foreigners, she comes. Uh, she's a product of UP system, for example. Uh, Filipino voters need to know exactly where their senators stand. 
So at the very least, I hope they bring it to the plenary and bring it to a vote before the Sonat comes. But the urgency is there. We take a break, one month is gone, then we'll only have one month of work to do. And there are, the Senate is 33 LEDAC measures, measures short of the House of Representatives. Quick follow-up. Yeah, I, can, can I add to that? Um, sa Congreso kasi, even if it's a break, committee hearings continue. Um, lalo lalo na kapag ito ay may impact kay Juan at kay Maria de la Cruz. So, I'm still very hopeful that Senate will stick to its word na itatakal nila ang RBH 6, which is the counterpart of RBH 7, o yung tinatawag nating economic chacha ang batas na magbibigay ng flexibility sa dekahon nating konstitusyon para magkaroon ng daan na umakto agad-agad ang Kongreso at Senado sa bawat problema ng taong bayan. Uulitin natin, ang panukalang batas na ito is all about flexibility. Nakakahon tayo ngayon, hindi ka makagalaw. Parang kumbaga wala pang cellphone sa panahon na ginawa yun, wala pang data, wala pang IT, marami ang wala dati na yun ang naging basehan ng batas natin. We are very restricted, nakakahon tayo, hindi siya flexible. And if we fail to give that flexibility, at uulitin natin ha, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag ipinasang economic chat siya, eh agad-agad magbabago ito. Dadaan ito ng plebisito kung saan ang taong bayan ang maghuhusga. Kapag ito ay naaprubaran ng mayorya ng Pilipino sa pamamagitan ng plebisito, Congress and Senate will now take it one by one, providing a stepping stone. Kunyari, pag-usapan natin yung edukasyon. May eksperto tayo dito. Pag-usapan natin yung public utilities. Pag-usapan natin yung logistics, transport sector. Isa-isa yung itatakal ng Senado at ng Kongreso sa paraan ng legislation. So hindi totoo na mawawalan ng kamay ang gobyerno dito. So now we go back. Is it an urgent matter? Is it a need? Klarong-klaro naman po na talagang kailangan ito ng taong bayan. Kasi habang pinapatagal natin na ipasa ang RBH 6, ay lalo natin sinasabing magtiis ang mga Pilipino sa mahal ng bilihin. Bakit ito nagiging mahal? Dahil hindi tayo nagpapapasok ng logistics sa Pilipinas. At anong impact nito? Lahat ng bagay-bagay na galing sa ibang bansa, na raw material ng ating pangangailangan, or finished product na kailangan natin, pagkain man ito, bahay man ito, damit man ito sa araw-araw nating pangangailangan, ang pag-ikot niya sa Pilipinas is triple the cost. Kaya, handed down yan. Ito yung isang pangunahing tinutugunan ng chacha, ng economic chacha. Buksan ang Pilipinas, tanggalin ang dekahon, make it flexible. Flexible for what? Para kapag may problema, action agad ang gobyerno. So I really can't see the logic why Senate is delaying this matter. Because the primary responsibility of Senate and Congress is to work hard, work double time, regardless of schedule. Kasi utang natin sa taong bayan ang ating obligasyon. So just clarify my statement earlier. When I said that there's a sense of urgency, you have to also understand how both houses work. Dito sa Congress, the hard work is in the committee. And when it comes to plenary, most of the time it's fast. In the Senate, baliktad, the committee is supposed to be the faster one kasi actually normally it's a one chairman committee. No? And then in the plenary, it's not like here where we're being regulated for time management purposes. In the Senate, as you know, uh, as long as you want, debate, 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 interpolate. So the question is, when will RBH 6 or 6 in the Senate reach the plenary level? And it's good that, uh, Senate, uh, that uh, Representative Garin mentioned it. Senator Angara can work on it during the break. And what we hope to see is that the Senate is tackling it in the plenary before the next SONA. Otherwise, it will be too late. Are there any comments from other guests? Okay. Quick follow-up lang po about uh, sa sinabi ni Congarine. So, uh, 
given na halos tapos na nga po yung mga LEDAC and other priority bills, uh, sa mga susunod, ano po kaya yung dapat i-look forward? Ano, parang uh, dahil tapos na lahat, ano pa po kaya yung gagawin? Parang wala na bang gagawin yung camera? Ano pa po kaya yung pagpo-focusan nyo pagdating naman even after the break? Well, the, the oversight powers of Congress is a very, very clear mandate, mandato na para matingnan natin kung nagiging epektibo ba yung budget ng Pilipinas, kung nagiging epektibo ba yung mga batas na ginawa natin. Kaya nga, isegway ko lang ng konti, no? kasi natutuwa tayo sa bilis no? ng uh, galaw ng Department of Social Welfare Development na tugunan yung pangangay. Ilangan ng... Naglobas. Huh? Mic test, mic test. Mic test. It's okay. Uh -oh. So, balikan lang natin. May mga bagay-bagay na kailangang tugunan ng Kongreso. Yung Department of Social Welfare and Development. It's okay. Oh. Alam naman natin na matagal na nagiging usapin yung four P's. At karamihan sa kanila. Sorry. Yan. Mic test. Baka kailangan kantahan. Oh. Uh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bell. <laughs> yeah. Balik tayo, no? Na sinabi ko lang yung kasi minsan sa hirap man, kailangan ang bawat pamilyang Pilipino sa damdamin at sa isip nila, ramdam nila na Pasko ang nasa loob ng kanilang tahanan. No? Pero sa dami ng problema, syempre imposible ito. Kaya kapareho nung nakikita natin sa Department of Social Welfare and Development, alam ng karamihan yan. Meron ngang ibang mga alegasyon, yung iba humihinto na sa trabaho kasi gusto na lang nila yung ayuda. And this is being taken seriously by Congress. Nakita kasi natin, isipin mo meron kang, may teacher tayo, magkano ang sweldo ng teacher? Sabi natin sumisweldo siya ng 20,000. May apat na anak yan. Eh kung ang kaniyang yaya ay sisweldohan mo ng minimum wage na 12,000, eh may iwan sa sweldo niya, eh kulang pa sa pagkain nila. Kaya, aminin man natin o hindi, at alam din ng Senado yan, maraming nagtatrabahong Pilipino ang hindi nakakaabot dun sa minimum wage, especially if they do it out of service. Yung nagiging katulong sa isang bahay ng ating health worker, yung nagiging yaya or caregiver ng mga matatandang retirado ng empleyado ng gobyerno. At dito nga, kinonceptualize yung ACAP. Na yung ACAP, ay pantawid pamilya dun sa mga nagtratrabaho pero kulang ang kanilang kinikita. At yun namang mga employer na nagsisweldo ng kanilang mga empleyado pero kahit anong gawin nila ay hindi nila kaya ang minimum wage or kung hanggang dyan na lang. And that paved way actually, well, ikinakalungkot natin na nagkaroon siguro ng miscommunication and it ended up with allegations and plans to have it investigated. Pero again, this delay, sino ba ang nag-suffer? Yung ating mga minimum wage earners or those below the minimum wage who should have benefited from this. Yo, ito yung mga bagay no, na pinapasok na natin, yung oversight powers ng Congress. Kasi hindi rin naman talaga dapat na pag hindi ka nagtatrabaho or wala kang trabaho, bigay ng bigay ang gobyerno. Tama naman yan, pero meron yung hangganan. Hindi ba mas kailangan idagdag na natin magtrabaho ka dahil sa pagtrabaho at pagsisipag mo ay tutulungan ka ng gobyerno. And that's one of the thrusts that Congress pursued para nga mabigyan ng mas masaganang buhay ang pamilyang Pilipino where they can feel that government is helping them as long as they also keep on helping themselves. Maybe the... Yeah, yeah I'd like to also add... Um... Uh, I think with the LEDEC measures finally completed, we can here, here in the House focus on local bills.
because that's of the utmost important to, importance to most of us here in the House of Representatives, yung mga local needs ng mga constituents namin. And secondly, we also have other tasks. Um, one of the tasks that I've been um, um, assigned to uh, by the speaker is in EDCOM 2. So we'll be digging deep into the problems of the Bangsamoan Autonomous Region and their problems with uh, education, why they have the poorest of the poor in terms of performance when it comes to uh, uh, education uh, statistics and indicators. And uh, our chair, our chair, uh, Chair Roman, uh, wants to set up a subcommittee to properly tackle this, uh, this uh, problem. So this is something that we'll be working on after, after the break. But I would like to turn it over to my co-EDCOM 2, <laughs> so the spotlight can shine on him, uh, Kiko Benitez, because he's actually an expert in one of the many things that we've been trying to tackle on, and that's the inability for DepEd, TESDA, and CHED to get their acts together. So you have the floor. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kong Khalid. You do have two EDCOM members here from Congress uh, in front of you, no? Um, <clears throat> but to first answer the question kung ano pa, sa totoo lang, mayroon pang tatlong natitirang uh, LEDAC measures, no? Na, na kailangan pang tapusin ng, ng lower house. But tatapusin naman siguro yan. Malapit na silang, malapit na kaming matapos sa committee at least on these sets of issues. The second is the ongoing um, issue of uh, oversight. Kasi sa oversight lang, uh, kagaya ng EDCOM, halimbawa, marami hong lumilitaw na problema na hindi generally nakakapture no, in the normal years uh, legislative process. Um, so sa EDCOM pa lang, uh, sa totoo lang, uh, BARM as uh, Kong Khalid, uh, uh, Commissioner of EDCOM has also mentioned, uh, is a major issue um, for us uh, in terms of education. Uh, but also internationalization of uh, higher education is another major issue. No, um, Mabalik ko lang dun sa issue ng uh, RBH7 and I think the general um, concern no, about education, malinaw naman sa amendment na proposed na carved out and protectado ang basic education. It's really tertiary education that's being opened up. And the issue in tertiary education, I think, um, is really not about ownership, but it's about regulation. So tama din si Kong Janet, no, that at least with the amendment, the questions of regulation can emerge and Congress can properly tackle uh, that issue with greater flexibility. No? Um, wala pang malinaw na posisyon ng EDCOM sapagkat uh, as part of EDCOM's law, kailangan evidence-based ang policy recommendations nila. So pinag-aaralan pa lang and that's going to be part of the second year of EDCOM's oversight. No? Um, so there are many issues and many legislations that uh, still need study beyond or outside uh, LEDAC priorities. For example, uh, the lower house passed on a third reading the new uh, Early Childhood Care and Development Act no? that, that tries to address a uh, consistent uh, national problem of uh, malnutrition and stunting for children five and below, for example, right? And aligning it with uh, DepEd uh, school readiness uh, competencies. Sa housing, meron din kaming pinag-uusapan ngayon uh, with regards to the NHA charter renewal and the institutionalization of 4PH and finance re reform. No, So, ano lang ma'am, just to respond to the question quite directly. Obviously, we have issues with regards to oversight that will continue even after we finish the LEDAC priorities. Um, we have issues of local bills that still need uh, legislation, and those continue as the needs of our uh, local constituents you know, change and emerge over time. And the third is there are still bills of national importance that are not included in the LEDAC priority, but are nonetheless important for Juan and anong pang, anong ngala, natawag mo, Maria de la Cruz. Nan. 
Juan de la Cruz and Maria de la Cruz, no? Na importante pa rin sa mga taong bayan na kailangan din naming gawin, no? Uh, so hindi naman ho yan titigil. Hindi naman ho totoo na wala na kaming gagawin, no? And that will still be on top of as Kong Galit Khalid has already said, magdadagdag po kasi October filing na, no? So dagdag ho yan sa trabaho namin. Um, yun na lang siguro muna ang, ang, ang response. No? There are, out of the oversight function, marami pong lumilitaw na kailangang ayusin pa no? and in terms of uh, legislation and policy direction. That Congress, and certainly this Congress, has not shied away no, from dealing with. Um, siguro, just to add to that, I think it's a very unfair statement to say wala na kaming gagawin. <laughs> Hindi po natatapos yung trabaho namin. Even when mm. there were led up measures that we were tackling, there were still other committee hearings ongoing. There's still committee hearings ongoing right now. Uh, as of now also, uh, pinag-uusapan yung other led up measures na uh, ipapasok sa Congress, like uh, I think Create More, is being discussed. <laughs> And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are about 10,000 bills that have been filed by various congressmen, 10,000 plus. So hindi po matatapos yan. Uh, and we are all trying our best na, diba, to hear the various uh, local bills, national bills, um, all other uh, bills na gusto namin lahat mapasa sa, na sa, na, na may isa batas, no? So uh, the work never stops. Even Monday to Wednesday, nandito kami, uh, umuwi ng mga probinsya po ang mga iba't ibang congressmen para uh, kausapin at mag-support, bigay suporta sa kanilang iba't ibang mga lugar. So, you know, the work really never stops. Even during the break, Jan, uh, mas mas magkakaroon ng oras to be with the various constituents. So, I, I, I think it's a very unfair statement to say uh, wala na po kaming gagawin. Yun lang po. Um, magandang umaga po. Um, tama si Congresswoman uh, Migs na sinabi niyang unfair kasi habang nababalita lang sa sa TV at sa Jario yung RBH7, napakarami po talaga namin ginagawa. Sabay-sabay po yung mga committee meetings namin. In fact, this week, hindi lang naman po RBH7 ang pinasa namin, ang ipapasa namin. May 45 local and national bills po na papasa ngayong linggo. So... Kung naipagsasabay-sabay po namin yon, siguro naman po, malinaw na sabihin, hindi lang naman namin pinaglaanan ng pansin yung RBH7. Sabay-sabay po, kinakaya po namin lahat. Maraming salamat po. Sa isang speech po ni President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., ipinagmalaki niya yung lower crime rate at bumaba din yung uh, human rights violations ngayon. At uh, ang sabi nga niya, we have done it without resorting to legal shortcuts or short-circuiting uh, the process or acts that subvert the rule of law. In short, parang hina-highlight nga niya na kaya naman to ng uh, non-violent or bloodless campaign. May I know your action, please? Well, um, I think uh, for me, uh, well, we'd like to congratulate again the president on um, his achievement in making improvements from the previous administration when it comes to human rights uh, um, abuses and also the main uh, criminal indexes. No? And I think that attributes to his background as a former local chief executive. When it comes to crime, you, uh, as a president, I feel you need to have a strong bond with your mayors and the governors. And I think that's one of the advantages or assets that uh, President BBM has um, in this, uh, this, uh, this administration. Uh, he has a very clean and a very good relationship with our local chief ex executives. And uh, any problems in the LGU level, he tries his best to resolve. 
And uh, what's critical here is uh, in, term, in, in, part, in the part of criminality is the, uh, is the, um, are the, um, uh, the police directors, in our, for my part, the provincial director. No? And the general tone that he sets. He wants international standards. He doesn't want abuse of law. Uh, and he wants us to be an example when it comes to the, our in the international community on how we safeguard the rights of uh, his, the Filipino citizens. So I think that's the general tone that he has, and it cascades down to the police. And he, with this good relationship with the mayors and the governors, he was able to achieve this very nice uh, achievement, which is improved uh, um, statistics when it comes to crime. Could I? Sorry. Um, I think in addition to that, we, we should be very clear that that balancing act that the president mentioned actually helps strengthen our institutions, our democratic institutions as well. No, na pwede namang palakasin ang ating mga demokrasya, institusyon pang demokrasya, kasabay ng uh, kap karapatang pantao, as well as uh, peace and order at the same time. Um, that kind of balancing act is not easy. No, so I, I, I suspect Kong Khalid is correct, and I would like to uh, echo it, that it probably comes from the president's own uh, background and experience as a local chief executive. Let me add to that. No? We congratulate the administration of PBBM for the bloodless campaign on uh, implementing laws. While uh, the former president probably had his... Uh, um, goals, no, yung kanyang uh, hinaing at yung kanya namang intention ay mabuti, the problem with um, like looking, uh, seeing children or teenager or people being killed right and left, yung mga nakabalot ng mga tape, medyo masamang picture kasi siya na ipinakita sa Pilipinas. So there are, well, the intention of the former president is to curb um, drug abuse May kita mo kasi medyo maliliit yung mga natamaan. At ang pinakamasakit dito, I mean ako, inanay rin, so we all have children. Alam naman natin that when that happens, when you tolerate that kind of act, dalawa ang pwedeng mangyari. Impunity, yung mga nasa baba o yung mga implementors ay pwedeng umabuso. At pangalawa dyan, syempre, ano yan, dagok sa turismo. So if we talk about tourism being hit, because how can you invite tourists to come here when you see all over the newspapers na puro patayan ang nangyayari? So talagang deterrent siya. No, hindi siya nakakapaangat ng ekonomiya ng Pilipinas. Now let's talk about impunity. Yes, maganda ang hangarin ng ating dating Pangulo, pero pagdating kasi sa baba, marami kasi mga marites sa Pilipinas. Kunyari pag initan yung iyong anak, or intriga, or i-divert, Sa isang teenager, sometimes, na-stereotype eh. May tattoo lang, sasabihin ka agad na adik. No? Medyo hindi lang ganun kapogi at kaganda, sasabihin ka agad na adik. So, <coughs> mind you, when we were doing an, a study on HIV patients, sa Pilipinas, napakalakas ng stigma na kapag ikaw ay hindi gaano mapute, flawless, hindi ka mestisa, positive ka. Kapag ikaw ay maganda, bata, ang ganda ng balat, swak na swak yung makeup, negative ka sa HIV. But it's actually not the truth. And daming young professionals who turned out positive because they really did not understand how to protect themselves. Ganito rin ang nangyari sa drug campaign. Na kapag ikaw ay medyo out of school or medyo nagkukunting bulakbol, pwede kang pag-initan sa baba. So you become a diversion of those who have impunity at ang nagiging kawawa doon, yung mga tao sa baba. So we congratulate the current administration in its bloodless campaign. But of course, we also have to make sure that rules and laws are implemented. Kasi minsan, kung puro tayo patayan, tinatanggalan mo ng karapatan na magkaroon ng boses ang maliliit na tao. And this is very hurtful to parents like us. Uh, siguro to add na lang to um, all that has been mentioned, no? um, 
well, as a lawyer also, syempre, kahit hindi ka man abogado, dapat naman, you don't take the laws into your own hands. You do not violate Diba? the laws. Dapat, so, nakakatuwa and congratulations to this administration for doing that. Na kaya naman pala. Diba? And makikita natin na um, kung walang gulo, walang krimen, diba? peaceful, mas ma-prioritize natin ano bang nakakabuti sa taong bayan. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And at least now, diba, makita natin hindi galit talaga mga tao, walang krimen, walang gulo. We can hopefully work together in a peaceful country. And uh, kami, dito sa Kongreso, uh, mas talaga makaka-focus kaming lahat, tayong lahat, uh, sa kung anong pwede natin maggawa para ibalik sa taong bayan. Thank you. Mela, do you have uh, ad, ano, other questions? Uh, Big Sabintak from uh, Net25. Big Good morning po. Ma'am Janet, uh, just a quick follow-up lang doon sa issue ng ACAP. So ano na pong status noon ngayon? Kasi nung na-delay siya, Tapos na ba yung implementing guidelines noon para ipatupad ng DSWD? Um, as, as far as I know, nagkaroon na siya ng guidelines. Pero yun nga, nung uh, uh, inungkat na ipapaimbestiga daw ng Senado, um, pinaliwanagan muna. No? And I'm not sure but I believe the guidelines are already out. At um, we're, we're really looking forward that this be implemented. Kasi kagaya sa distrito ko, maraming mga katulong or marami yung mga utility o yung mga labandera na hindi na nila maiwanan o yung caregivers na hindi nila maiwanan yung kanilang mga alaga pero minimum wage sila or even below the minimum wage. So the ACA program is geared to address 12 million families. Supposedly the target is 60 million pero kulang yung pondo. Kaya the earlier we implement it, lalo na't wala pa yung tag-init at pag nagkaroon ulit ng tag-init, eh, marami ang, uh, let's say, among farmers, medyo mabigat, no? Marami nagkakasakit, marami ang nasisira. Yung crops, hindi ganun. Ang pangingisda lang yung hindi ganun masyado na-affected. So, the impact on the people in the rural areas will be, uh, will be doubled or even tripled. Kaya mas kailangan ipat ipasatupad na ito. Okay. Going back to... Uh, Economic cha-cha. May we know the uh, plan B of the House of Representatives kasi mukha yatang yung window of opportunity ay papasaran na kasi kahit na sa inyo po sa mababang kapulungan ng Kongreso, mailusot nyo man yung RBH number 7 pero yung sa Senado mukhang ang priority nila lahat yung ledak ka na kung saan eh, deficit sila. So, what will happen if and when na mabigo ang Senado on or before the SONA ma-aprubahan ang uh, RB7? May sinabi si Majority Leader, pag tinapos ninyo yung RB7, diretso na sa COMELEC, pero sigurado mayroong legal questions. Um, let me let me just put the statement of the majority leader categorically. No? Kasi ang ibig niya namang sabihin, pag natapos yung RBH 7 ay idiretso sa COMELEC, he was actually referring to Senate as staying true to its words. Yung paninindigan nila, yung sinasabi nila, kapag nagmi-meeting ang liderato ng Senado at ang, ang liderato ng Kongreso, kung saan sinabi na ang Rebay March, tatapusin nila yung RBH 6. So the House is uh, geared towards adapting the Senate version. Although kulang yon, that's a lot better than nothing. So yan yung intention ng ating majority leader. Plan B, as of now, wala kaming alam na plan B kasi sa pagkakaintindi namin, naniniwala pa rin kami na sincero ang Senado sa kanilang tungkulin sa taong bayan. Maybe what is best to discuss now is kung ayaw nilang talakayin ang RBH 6. Bakit? And I believe it's best to call a spade a spade. Kung ayaw, sabihin nila. 
kung gusto naman, eh di pag-usapan. Because mahirap yung sinasabi mong okay, pag-uusapan, pero ayaw naman. We, we really have to be very transparent to our people because we need the people to know what is in there for their future. Personally, alam ko walang plan B, pero kung ako yung tatanungin nyo, we really need the people's initiative. Kung ang ginagawa natin ay hindi totoong cha-cha, atras abante kasi, di ba? So we move a few steps forward, we move several steps backward. Ang tingin ko merong iba na mga nagdadasal lang na makalimutan yung usaping economic cha-cha pagdating ng kampanya. But Congress, I mean, me, myself, me personally, ang Kongreso, hindi yan papayagan. I mean, kung hindi man kayani ng Kongreso, let the people judge our government officials. No? But uh, it's really best that Congress sticks, that Senate stick to its commitment of tackling RBH6 within the month of March. Kaya, yun, ulitin ko ha, walang plan B sa pagkakaalam namin, pero ako, personal ko lang na pananaw yan. Kung talagang ayaw ng Senadong gumalaw, let's give it to the people. Ibalik natin sa people's initiative dahil kami, at ang mga senador, pareho kaming wala dito kapag wala ang boses ng taong bayan. We would like to acknowledge okay. the presence of uh, Senior Deputy Speaker Aurelio Dong Gonzalez uh, Jr. Yes. Ma'am Janet, just one last point na lang for my, on my, uh, from my end. So is it safe to say now with uh, regards to the situation on uh, the economic cha-cha with the uh, mabagal na action ng Senado, is it safe to say that the House of Representatives is uh, hope against hope tayo? <laughs> We're still hopeful, no? And... I might be wrong, but the reason that the Senate is taking it with a slow stride, eh baka tinitingnan nila kung naiintindihan na ba talaga ng taong bayan yung tunay na kapakanan ng economic chacha. Because when the members of Congress during the committee deliberation as a committee of the whole started deliberating, marami ang nakarinig, marami ang nakaintindi, at pa konti konti bububukas yung isipan ng taong bayan sa economic chacha. I believe this is the trigger that Senate is waiting. Kasi nga, politically, they will always side by what is popular. And that is something that we respect. Kaya nga, kung talakayin ng Senado yon, kami naman dito sa Kongreso, ay lalabas sa aming mga distrito para ipaunawa sa taong bayan na economic chacha ay hindi pamulitika. Ang economic chacha ay pagbukas ng dekahon na konstitusyon para maging flexible. Ano po ba ang flexibility? Kapag may problema ang taong bayan, Action agad ang gobyerno. Yan lang ang gusto ng economic chacha. And I will pray every day that the uh, Senate takes away that fear. Kasi as of this point of time, I still cannot hear their exact reasons why they are not tackling RBH 6. Siguro, isang-isa na lang. Since nabanggit po ninyo yung reaction po ninyo doon sa image ng Pilipinas during the past administration with regards doon sa fight against sa uh, illegal drugs yung uh, tokang na nagbigay ng masamang imahe sa atin compared ngayon sa Marcos administration na medyo okay kaya pala na hindi daanin sa marahas o kaya magkaroon ng human rights violations so the ICC ngayon nagpupumilit makapasok sa atin so, supportahan nyo ba na dapat papasukin ng ICC sa Pilipinas in order to remove that bad image sa atin at makita yung through their investigation? I leave it to the decision makers. No? Kasi alam naman natin, pag walang tinatago, walang dapat na ikapahamak. Uh, Elson Kismore from Manila Bulletin. You are recognized. Hello po, um, good morning. Tama, morning pa. Uh, clarification po kay Congarin. Ma'am, you mentioned po kanina na in the next one or two days may mga marami pang pending. So, does that mean may session po tayo ng Thursday? 
<laughs> Sorry na nawala sa isip ko. Tuesday na pala okay. ngayon. Okay. I thought. So it's a uh, session will be until tomorrow. Just making sure lang po. Uh, tapos, <laughs> tapos uh, for anybody po, do you share po the concern of the Makabayan Black na yung pong pagpili ni Pastor Kibuloy kay former President Duterte as his assets administrator slash caretaker could lead to some ano, uh, money laundering issues. That's how they put it. Uh, your thoughts po? If, if I could clarify, no. Um, during the Committee on Legislative Franchise, when this was brought up, um, sa process, sa pagpili ng administrator, uh, klinaro naman po nila na, yes, may papeles on appointment, pero it's only in case of inability, meaning hindi pa siya operative ngayon. So um, I think it's premature to talk about that, but being a lawyer, diba, if they can prove their facts, that's their opinion naman po nila yun. And there are various legal means and there are various processes that they can um, look into or bring forth. Uh, pero iklara muna natin na yun nga, yun naman yung lumabas sa committee hearing na as of now, uh, hindi naman pala talaga siya po ang administrator, just in case lang. Uh, uh, incapable to manage the assets uh, si Pastor. Uh, konting dagdag lang. I believe this is the statement from the Makabayan Black. Ta Tama po na? Uh, yes po. Uh -oh. Ando dun yung fear nila na baka mag ito sa money laundering. Now, the best person to answer that issue should be the former president. Maganda rin talagang lumab lumabas no, si former president at sagutin niya uh, bakit naging ganito? I mean, as a lawyer himself who has also been a former prosecutor, siguro alam niya yung reasons. Kasi nagkaroon naman ng, in fairness to the Makabayan Black, I believe they also had this confusion because it was all out in media eh. Na-announce kasi na siya na magiging tagapag, tagapagmahala. T tagapa, taga, tagamahala. Taga, he will be the caretaker. Okay. Bisaya <laughs> Kung, kung sa Bisaya pa, siya ang kanang muasikaso. Oh, muasikaso sa tanan nga assets sa uh, SMNI. Well, personally, I, I myself as a politician is quite surprised with that bold act. Kasi, syempre, may investigasyon, may mga allegasyon ng, um, let's say, tax evasion or ill-gotten wealth or whatever the sources of the uh, money, of the businesses, of uh, the executive Pastor Kibuloy, um, magugulat ka, why get a former president? No, So w what's the direction? Is it because um, he can have a hand on, actually lang sa totoo nga, as of this point of time, we really don't know how much in terms of monetary value is the available cash and asset of Pastor Kibuloy um, considering that he has been a religious leader internationally for a long time. So, andun ba yung fear? Now, there are cases, not in the Philippines, but abroad, related, related to this. Siguro dyan nang gagaling yung kon konteksto ng statement ng makabayan. But again, ang hirap eh, kasi nagulat din lahat bakit former president ang magiging administrator. Kasi during the incumbency of former President Duterte, alam naman niya na meron ngang mga kaso ang Amerika or kung ibang bansa ba yun, I believe uh, may mga na-hold din ng mga empleyado. So medyo masalimuot. So getting a former president as a possible administrator of your properties and your wealth can be misconstrued as hiding something. Kasi you have to get somebody powerful to do that. So, siguro, nahiya lang din si PRRD at tinanggap niya either nahiya siya na sabihin hindi o kung he's doing it as a friend or he's doing it as a lawyer. So, all of these questions can properly be answered by the former president. Para naman, mawala na itong mga lumabas na um, pangamba ng makabayan black. Anybody else po? Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, 
Earl Tobias from IBC 13. Sounds up. Good afternoon po our good congressman and congresswoman. Um, sa akin lang po, the House leadership uh, has also been uh, very committed into um, tackling po yung NFA issue natin. No? Uh, as of now, ombudsman ay nakatutok rin po dito and it's uh, marami pa po mga nangyayaring uh, development with the issue. Uh, given now we are looking forward with what's happening next year and baka ina-anticipate din ho ba natin na ito ay magiging isa sa mga malaking priority ng Kamara Uh, bilang pagtugon po doon sa function nitong NFA at what does it mean din po para sa ating taong bayan na maayos itong issue na ito. Thank you. <laughs> the, um, obviously, I think the first issue um, has been at the least in the last year and a half that uh, food inflation has been one of the highest no? and it was the, one of the biggest almost, I would think, if I remember correctly, mga 50% contribution to our inflation. I think it was 50%. So anything that you can do to address food security and food inflation will be down to benefits to our uh, people. No? Um, sa ngayon nga, na may hearing din at discussion on uh, minimum wage hikes and so on and so forth. Ang nagtutulak ho niyan ay pangangailangan ng taong bayan sapagkat may inflationary pressure nga naman. Uh, dahil sa mga moves na ginawa ng camera, I think, no, um, particularly the aggressiveness by which the House leadership looked into the issue of food inflation, um, uh, pababa po ng pababa, actually, ang inflation natin. And again, it, it really is because we're very deliberately and I think quite systematically addressing uh, food inflation. So, ang, ang, ang madaling sagot ho sa tanong ninyo is yes. <laughs> right? Uh, that's going to be a focus um, at the end of the day, I think, uh, moving forward because we need to sustain uh, having to control inflation um, because it's the entirety of our economic recovery na iniisip po ni Speaker Martin. No? Uh, madami hong ugat yan, madaming sanga, at lahat ho yan tinatalakay at pinag-iisipan actually ng House leadership. Um, so the, the first is really, uh, yes, it's going to continue. Uh, the second is, um, it really has to do with food security kasi pag gutom po ang taong bayan, napakahirap. Wala hong ibang pwedeng pag-usapan. So it's a very basic need, no? Kung ang sikmura nila ay walang laman, wala na ho silang pakikinggan, di ba? Na iba pang uh, issue. So it's so basic and fundamental. It needs to truly be addressed. At hindi lang ho sa, sa, sa rice, halimbawa, but on all uh, the commodities, in our case, for example, sugar, no? Um, malaki hong issue ang food security. So it is going to be part of an important uh, concern no? for, for, for the House. Kasi kailangan na rin talagang siguraduhin na hindi masyadong mahal ang bilihin para may laman ng tiyan ng bawat Pilipino. Yeah, no. Um, yun nga, di ba? Kung gutom ka, di ba? May term nga tayo na hungry, di ba? Galit ka. But um, even with that, the administration is also focusing on that. I think the, the DA said that the, their, their 2025, the 2025 budget, he reprioritized nila for um, poultry, uh, high-value crops. Uh, so it's not just Congress that's working on it. It's this administration. It's the various departments. Kasi nga, Uh, I think even um, earlier, the ba, in the term of uh, PBBM, uh, he said that gusto niya nga zero hunger, sana. And in line with that, Congress is also looking into various uh, means, legislation to aid. So my support in focusing on food security. Meron tayong mga programa, yung uh, Bagong Pilipina, Service Fair, di ba? Meron mga ngayon, yung sa Sibol, sa Farm, sa Card. So it works hand in hand with the aid that we're going to the we're giving to the people uh, with the priority of this administration and also the Congress looking into various measures and legislative measures uh, to make sure sustainable itong mga bagay-bagay na hindi lang puro assistance. Diba? It, it, so it's a, it's a focus kasi uh, importante nga na 
hindi nga magutom ang taong bayan. Uh, well, I'm not really abreast in the you know, the, invest, the issue of the NFA, but uh, in general, um, I think the House leadership is uh, doing very well in helping the executive, our president, kind of steer our country in a clean path. I say what what I believe uh, President BBM wants is to impress in the, into the Filipino people that this administration is not what his uh, oppositionists are saying, the corruption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's where the House comes in to conduct investigations to provide the evidence needed on either corruption or incompetence, which leads to the detriment uh, of public service for the Filipino people. And what we hope to see in the coming months is action in part of the executive. What we don't want to see is what happened in the last administration. Na may mali, yung head of agency tinanggal tapos na recycle sa ibang area ng, ano, ng uh, gobyerno. Uh, we want to see a very clean, strong arm from the president himself na you did not do a good job, get out of uh, my administration. Thank you. Uh, I want to acknowledge Billy Vegas from Abante Politico. Medyo ano lang po, lalo na po kay Kong Dimaporo. Kong, I understand every year na lang nagkakaproblema yung mga Filipino Muslims na pumupunta sa Hajj. So, nasolusyon na ba ng NCMF yung mga naging problema before? Thank you. Uh, and uh, again, that's what I hope we won't be doing this, uh, this coming, the remaining months that we have uh, working for this Congress, 19th Congress, dahil every year may bagong Hajj, every after Hajj may bagong investigation when it comes to this 19th Congress. So we had one uh, the, for the 2022 Hajj, we had an investigation for the 2023 Hajj, now we have, uh, we are now preparing for the 2024 Hajj. Kanina, before this press con, I came from the Committee on Public Accounts and we were informed by the NCMF that there really is a danger that Hajj 2024 might not occur because of all of these uh, problems that's happening within the NCMF. Now, on the part of the House, we, uh, the Committee on Muslim Affairs is proposing a um, uh, possible solution. And that is the bills filed by Representative Mujib Hataman and Representative Siti uh, Amina Dimaporo. Uh, and that is the privatization of the Hajj. So you have to think about it. Kayo, uh, my Christian Catholic brothers, sisters, if you want to go on a religious pilgrimage to, let's say, to Israel, you know, to see where Jesus was crucified, uh, why do you have to go through a government agency? Why does a government agency have to dictate where you will stay, and yung hotel mo, and yung transportation mo? No, shouldn't it be freedom of choice? That is the bill that has been filed in the 19th Congress. Hopefully, it will be prioritized um, um, uh, and it will pass into third reading before we, we adjourn uh, even better before the SONA. But that's one of the things that we hope to accomplish in the Committee on Muslim Affairs, the privatization of the Hajj. Thank you. Uh, Red Mendoza from Manila Times. Good, mor good morning po, mga congressman. I'd like to direct this first question po kay Kong Kiko Benitez kasi medyo mainit itong issue na ito. Uh, you filed House Bill 9939 which uh, bans the dubbing of English movies of, uh, to Filipino as a way for us to improve our English proficiency. But many sectors, including voice actors and fans of Filipino dub shows, criticized the move as it would could remove them of their livelihood. And one voice actor, I named him Jeff Otanes, he posted on Facebook saying that the industry should not be blamed on the low English proficiency of the Filipinos. What is your take on this, Kong? Uh, tingin niyo po ba nakasira po ba sa dubbing industry itong bata sa talo na sa mga namamahal sa dubbing, the Filipino dub uh, programs? Kasi yun lang yung way nila para makapanood ng mga anime, Korean, Korean drama, Mexican novel and all. Um, okay, uh, klaruin ko lang ah, unang-una sa tanong mo, meron ng um, misunderstanding. So that might be part of the issue. Uh, it's the, the bill is actually designed to try to at least have a conversation so that we can balance the economic effects on creative industries. 
particularly with the dubbing and voice actors. With the educational impact of a decrease in exposure for our population to English media. Okay. So, una-una ho, kailangan malinaw sa atin na English media lang po ang pinag-uusapan. Ang Korean telenovela, ang Japanese anime, i-dub nyo ho yan kahit na gano'n nyo kadaming beses at anumang klaseng lingwahe ang gusto nyo i-dub. Okay lang. The premise is that English is a official language of the Philippines and anything that we can do to increase exposure of our students and access of our general population to English language media can only improve no, uh, English usage and English capacities locally. No, but siyempre, uh, malaki ho at ma... ma malawak no ang continuum ng anong ibig sabihin ng English media. Uh, kaya nga ho, uh, sinulong namin ng uh, batas na yan, a potential measure, uh, because we need to have a conversation about the educational benefits versus the creative industry economic costs. No? Um, siguro naman hindi laan sa inyo that I am also a champion of the creative industry you know, and the development of the creative industry and the creative economy. But we must have that conversation. No? And so it hasn't yet, I think, been scheduled or agendaed for a hearing. So we look forward to as many of the creative industry stakeholders to make their voices heard during the committee hearing and to see if it in fact can be amended or tweaked, and whether or not, in fact, the committee decides that the creative industry economic costs far outweigh any educational benefit of such a measure. But let's have the conversation. Rather than, for example, the recurring uh, complaint naman of another sector, in fact, of the creative industry, which is our BPO sector, that has been saying uh, for quite a while that the quality of our English capacities have actually slowly been going down over time. Yun lang naman yun, sir. It's not that complicated, uh, but it is going to be a discussion, I hope, at some point, uh, that will be coming up in the Cong in Congress. Okay, thank you po. My final question na lang po to everyone kasi nag-file po ng resolution ng makabayan block para imbestigahan ng lumabas po sa Manila Times na promise di umano ni former President Rodrigo Duterte na alisin ng Sierra Madre, quoting an anonymous source. So what is your take on this po? Anyone po? Alisin po yung ayu, ano, Sierra Madre. BRP Sierra Madre. Meron daw pong promise, may lumabas... BRP Sierra Madre, to, sorry. BRP Sierra Madre. May promise daw po si former President Duterte na nakipag-usap daw po siya sa Chinese government according to our anonymous source po. Again, it's very difficult to put ourselves on the shoes of the former president. Kaya nga, maging maganda rin na masagot ito ni former president para lan maliwanagan, no? Either nagkaroon ba ng miscommunication or is somebody putting words into his mouth and uh, it's best answered by him. He alone can shed light on this very important matter. Thank you, Red. Uh, Kat Porbes from uh, Radio Pilipinas, you're recognized for your questions. Ay, good morning. Ay, good afternoon po mga Kongs. Uh, although, since first time po ni Kong Benitez, sa kanya po yung question ko. Uh, Kong, uh, the House adopted po yung Senate version ng NIR, yung Negros Island uh, Region Bill. Uh, how important is this po? Tsaka, habang inaantay po natin na malagdaan siya ng Pangulo, ano po ba yung... Uh, preparations for since May transition period. Sorry. Okay. So I, I would like to thank obviously the Senate and I have done so before. Um, and hopefully the President does sign the NIR bill in the soonest possible time. Matagal na hong uh, pinag-iisipan at, uh, at uh, dinadasal ng mga taga-Negros na magkaroon ng uh, Negros Island region. Uh, meron hong executive order dati no? na tinanggal din ni President Duterte because primarily of costs, right? 
So the new measure attempts to try to address the issue of cost by creating this transition period. And so there has to be a um, transition team as well and a task force um, comprised mostly of local stakeholders so that the LGUs themselves uh, and the provinces, the, the governors, no, can help uh, in the transition. Kasi kung ang, kung ang issue kasi is cost, halimbawa, ang tanong ay, okay, saan mo ilalagay ang uh, regional office ng CHED? Or saan mo ilalagay ang regional office ng DPWH? At sino ang uh, magbabayad? Diba? Kasi it's a budgetary issue. It, on principle, kasi I think everybody is in agreement that bringing services more uh, to the people and making it more accessible can only redound in faster and better development. No? Um, so the question really is, who will shoulder the cost and for when? So yun ang pag-uusapan ngayon ng transition team. Diba? So mag, mag uh, di discussion sila. Uh, depending on what the evaluation of uh, the efficiency no? and, and the cost benefit. Um, kasi sa, sa transition team, apat naman yan sila actually. There's the city of Bacolod, which is uh, a uh, chartered city. There's the provincial governor of Negros Occidental. There's the provincial governor of Negros Oriental. And there's the governor of Siquijor. Diba? So pag-uusapan ho nila kung sino po ang handa, sino po ang able, at sino pong willing no, to, to help ensure that the budgetary issue that DBM uh, is very clear about and was the original reason bakit tinanggal ang uh, NIR dati, ay pwede namang masagutan. In other words, dahil may clamor ho from the ground na ibalik ang NIR, uh, I don't know of any or any real measure na lahat ho as in lahat ng representatives uh, involved ay pumirma as principal co-authors actually. No? Um, kasi nga ho ganun ang clamor sa amin. Um, now that there's such a clamor and since we are the ones who want it, the local government units and the local chief executives are willing to help in the transition to ensure lang that it's viable and feasible and it, it is realized in the shortest possible time. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Annalisa Berano from Bobo, Bombo Radio. Congarin, good morning po. Uh, this is a local uh, issue, Kong. Um, exam link po sa West Visayas University. Ang uh, may mag, ano daw po, mag retake po daw ng exam ulit ang mahigit 20,000 na mga estudyante. Uh, may we know po kung anong update dito ko bilang uh, isa sa mga board of regent ng nasabing university. Thank you. Yeah, that is correct. No, um, uh, In fact, I was the one who requested that that be discussed by the board of regents kasi may mga natanggap na tayong mga complaints. Just just a quick backgrounder. No? So ang Western Visayas, ang West Visayas State University is the premier university in the Visayas. No? Um, uh, this is the university sending out doctors to many areas in Mindanao. Um, napakaganda nung kanya academic uh, reputation. However, the recent admission test, I think the applicants were more, more or less around 21,000 plus. Nagkaroon ng anonymous na info na nagkaroon ng leakage. And then somebody already posted on social media. This was, I think, a brother of uh, one of the examinees. At uh, nakita nga natin na malaki ang posibilidad na nagkaroon ng leakage. This is a challenge kasi nga sa pagbago ng teknolohiya, merong mga nakakapagdala na ng mga camera or whatever. So it's not, it's not yet 100% confirmed, but it's gearing towards that direction that during the a pilot testing, probably in Rojas or somewhere, may nag-picture ng pilot test. And that was leaked to the, uh, nauna kasi ang pilot testing a few days ahead na leaked siya dun sa ibang mga applicants. So whether it was sold or whatever, that is something that is currently under, uh, on undergoing investigation. And um, we have already requested NBI to come into the picture. Be that as it may, we cannot delay 
the decision of the students. So there are three factors here. Una, una, siyempre, galit yung ibang mga estudyante, lalo na yung mga alumni, no? because they don't want to taint the reputation of the university. And we have to preserve that because that has been carved and honed throughout many, many, many years. Pangalawa, yung iba naman na baka sana eh makakapasa, eh ma, ma out because of the quota, that is also unfair for them. And hindi naman natin na uh, minamaliit yung mga nakapasa pero hindi dapat deserving, but the academic challenges that they will be garnering within the institution might also be difficult. So maganda nang kesa na pupunta ka doon tapos hindi mo kaya maghahanap ka ulit ng so ang dami talagang problema. So during the board meeting that we had um last um Saturday I believe either Saturday or Friday apologies medyo nawawala na tayo sa mga senior moments okay. I I put forward the proposal of uh, um a possible retake and everybody agreed the um, honorable chairperson of the Committee on Higher Education is also amenable kasi ibang mga proposals will take time. But that does not mean that the investigation will stop. Tuloy-tuloy ang investigasyon kung sino ang dapat managot, mananagot. But for now, we have to tackle the very first major impact. And that is yung nalilito yung mga 21,000 plus applicants. So earlier this morning, I was in conversation with the university president. Um, chances are the retake will be mid-April. Uh, magkakaroon ng maraming venues. No? They will be coordinating with the local governments and the universities and other schools all throughout Region 6. Um, kinarve out lang yung areas, yung address ng mga nag-take nag dati. And mind you, at no cost. No? Walang, walang bayad yan. Thank you. Uh, for today's uh, last question, phone-in question from Isa Bendanyo Mali from uh, GMA DCWB. Inabot lang po siya ng uh, live report niya. To Congresswoman Migs, viral ngayon sa social media ang isang teacher na nag-live sa TikTok at nanermon ng mga estudyante. Para kay Congresswoman na madalas din trending sa kanyang content sa TikTok at FB, ano dapat ang isaalang-alang sa paggamit ng social media lalo na kapag politician, teacher, or kilalang tao? Trending pa ba ako hanggang ngayon? <laughs> Lahat po ata kami trending, si Konga rin ngayon. <laughs> trending to. Um, you know, um, I'd always say naman pagdating sa social media, you don't have to be an influencer. Kahit lahat tayo, ba? You have to be a responsible poster. <laughs> diba? Uh, diba? Uh, yung social media is a platform that you can use for the good or evil. It's either maninira ka ng tao or gagawin mong diba, pang clickbait or whatsoever. So hopefully, diba, gamitin natin yung social media sa tamang paraan to you know, educate, to uh, be a better person, to be a kinder person at hindi yung mga paninira or fake news at lahat. Uh, so ito, kung ginamit niya pang sermon, as long as I guess hindi siya nagmumura or wala. We go back to goodness na lang instead of hate, <laughs> di ba? <laughs> so, yun. Siguro yun lang po. Um, ako, napanood ko kasi yung teacher na nag-viral sa social media. Uh, Kong Mix, uh, malayong malayo siya sa pag-tiktok mo. Uh, medyo napakasakit talaga nung sinabi nung teacher. At hindi ko maintindihan ang context kung bakit siya napadbad sa social media. Um, para sa akin... Napaka sakit ng mga salita niya, pananalita niya, napaka uncalled for bilang isang guro. Bilang isang guro, dapat nag-practice talaga siya ng, ng self-control. Dapat huminga muna siya ng malalim kahit ano pa yung ginawa ng mga estudyante sa kanya bilang guro na ginagalang. Dapat hindi siya talaga nagwala. At uh, pinigyan naman siya sa pagkakaalam ko ng DepEd ng tatlong araw para magpaliwanag. Siguro antayin na lang natin yung napakaganda niyang paliwanag. Uh, kasi matindi talaga yung mga pinagsasasabi ng guro na, na nag-viral. At napakasakit ng mga salita niya. Tinawag pa niyang, uh, wag na nating ulitin. Pero... To the effect na sinabi niyang 
uh, walang karapatan yung mga estudyante kasi mahihirap sila or something to that effect. E kaya nga siya yung nagtuturo eh para matuto yung mga bata. Paano pa sila matututo kung ganun yung klase ng pagtuturo? So, siguro antayin na lang talaga natin yung magiging sagot niya. Bigyan natin siya ng three days, sabi ng DepEd. Pero kahapon pa yon so two days na lang. Antayin natin. Salamat po. Okay. I, I saw the video, not fully, no? But um, looking from the balcony, this can also be an, an eye-opener. May mali ang teacher, yes. There is also the impact of social media, yes. But we also have to look at the bigger picture. Baka yung ating mga public school teachers ay meron ding pinagdaraanan and wala dun yung avenue na yung mga needs nila o yung mental problems nila o yung kanilang acceptance dun sa mga pinagagawa ng ibang estudyante. Because it's a very big institution. And uh, there should be a command or a chain where they can vent out their problems. And um, I, uh, syempre ngayon, marami rin, marami ang nagagalit sa kanya. At the, uh, on one hand naman, hindi lang din natin alam, iilan sa ating public school teachers are feeling the same. Ano ba yung pinagmulan ng lahat ng mga ito? Where is she coming from? And um, nakakalabas ba sila ng boses? So within the Department of Education, is somebody hearing them out? Is somebody hearing their problems? Or is somebody supporting them? Ano ba yung mga bagay-bagay? What should be the feedback mechanism between our teachers and their administration? This is a very important thing that should also be looked into. Because for all we know, baka mamaya sa loob-loob niya ando na yung galit, pero hindi siya makalapit sa principal, sa regional director, or baka nakalapit siya, may problema na, pero kinocontain kasi hindi nila maipalabas sa central office. So, and mind you, we need to look into this kasi baka mamaya it's not an isolated case. Nagkataon lang nalam, nalaman ng lahat kasi nilive niya. It's, it, nilive niya, di ba? Was it live or somebody took it? I'm, I'm not sure. Nilive niya, di ba? Yun ang pagkaintindi ko eh. So, Hindi siya by accident, it's intentional. There's a deeper message behind that. It's 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 venting out and and doon yung baka mamaya hindi na niya alam ano bang gagawin ko. Who can hear me out? Who can help me? Kasi minsan yung mga tao, they want it to be viral because they need the attention or they want it to be viral because nobody is paying attention to them. Or is this a support na kailangan <laughs> No, 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 no. I, no, the, 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 this is for, for the sake of the teacher kasi it's a very challenging environment. And then we go back. Marami tayong mga government employees na nasa baba. Na ang dami nilang challenges. Maraming nakakasuhan. Wala namang pambayad ng abogado. Maraming napagbibintangan. Hindi sila makavent out. And that is where leadership comes into picture. And that is why this problem should be looked deeply by the Department of Education. Ano ba ang problema? Meron bang feedback mechanism? And mind you, we have also teachers na talagang may problema. I had an experience before na medyo nagkaroon ng problema, personal problem yung teacher. And pinag, unsa galing ng, yung pinag, ano niya? Pinagbubuntungan. Yeah, pinagbubuntungan niya ng kanyang hinanakit ay yung mga estudyante, pinapalo niya ng payong. But because she was not like that before, I decided to come in and look into the situation. And I realized she had personal problems na kailangan nating intindihin siya. But at the same time, the children cannot suffer. So the solution there was we requested her transfer to the regional office to do admin tasks. Para naman palitan muna siya as principal. And again, this speaks of a bigger situation, a wider situation, na dapat talaga tingnan ng liderato ng DepEd. And solutions must be in place. No? Baka mamaya nasasakal siya doon, dito muna siya sa admin task, o yung namang support na ando doon, o yung baka meron tayong mga teachers na nahihirapan mag-cope up kasi may mga challenges ang 
challenges ang mundo eh. That's that's normal. It's not a perfect situation. Now, where will we place them? What is the solution of uh, DepEd on that matter? Bibigyan ba natin ng parang option to retire pero meron siyang hanap buhay na gagawin? Or ano ang magiging partnership nila with other institutions? That is where the management should come into play. Because at this point of time, nangangailangan ng nanay. No? Nangangailangan ng nanay. Both the students, the teachers, and the institution. Thank you. We invite our uh, honorable speakers to share their uh, close, uh, brief uh, closing uh, statements. Uh, can I start na lang? Um, kasi actually I was going to add on to what uh, Kong Janet said. Um, again, no, as part of EDCOM 2, uh, to be quite frank, learning environment conditions are part of what our next year's oversight function is going to be one of the priority areas we will look into. Um, the lower house and Chairman uh, Roman has already passed a mental health and wellness uh, proposal, no? um, particularly for public schools. Um, the PISA results, as a matter of fact, show that the Philippines uh, scores very low when it comes to um, learning environment and school bullying and so on from the student's point of view. Uh, but it also uh, apparently has great difficulty in terms of our oversight functions in order to ask precisely the kinds of questions, in fact, that uh, Congresswoman Garin has already pointed out. Um, ang naman sa amin uh, ngayon, I think as a closing statement, no, is that uh, hindi pupotopos ang aming trabaho. Uh, in fact, if we take on the same intensity no, of our work as we have in the last year and a half or so, uh, mas marami pa kesa sa 57, 58 LEDAC priority bills no? ang magagawa po ng Kongreso. And as a matter of fact, kung titingnan ho ninyo ang uh, output on third reading um, ng, ng 19th Congress, ay malinaw naman po that this Congress works hard, that this Congress has a larger uh, policy framework in mind that really has to do with improving the lives of Filipinos, no? Um, sana naman po sa ano, isang oras at kalahati o isang oras natin na uh, pag-uusap, uh, malinaw rin po sa inyo yan. At uh, hanggang po sa susunod, no? Kasi gaya na sinabi ko ng ating umpisa, bahagi naman po talaga ng aming trabaho ay ang magpahiwatig sa inyo ng mga nangyayari po sa Kongreso. Kadahil ito po ay dahil din at para din sa inyo. Maraming salamat po. Um, sa pagpasok namin sa nating lahat sa Holy Week break at sa pagpasa ng House of Representatives ng RBH7, uh, umaasa po kami ng aming mga kaibigan sa Senado, maliban po, syempre napakahalaga din po talaga na maipasan nila ang um, LEDAC priority measures. Sana mapagtuunan na din po nila ng pansin yung RBH6 kasi nagko-close na po yung window, nagko-close na po yung panahon. At kung hindi pa natin 'to gagawin ngayon, kailan pa? Babalik na naman tayo sa square zero, quite frankly. At gano na naman, parehong mga problema na naman ang tatalakayin, parehong mga so, parehong mga issues na naman, imbis na mabigyan na sana ng solusyon. So, yun po yung ating inaapila sa ating mga kaibigan sa Senado. Maraming salamat. Yan, uh, I'd like to uh, say thank you to our media friends. Um, and uh, I think the next time we'll we may see each other again is uh, after na the holy month of uh, Ramadan. So, I... Uh, Bless, uh, I would want to greet you uh, again, a peaceful weekend, peaceful uh, Holy Week, and um, uh, thank you again for your all your time. 
Um, siguro just to add, no, with everything else, uh, kanina, di ba, sinabi natin, uh, mahirap magutom mga tao, siguro gutom na tayong lahat. But thank you, everyone, and hopefully nga, this Holy Week, no, we get to realize ano ba talaga mga priorities natin. Um, tayo, di, kami dito sa Kongreso, alam naman, I think it's very clear what our priorities are, also our friends in the Senate, at uh, um, wish everyone a peaceful and uh, very um, good uh, Holy Week. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. At dahil gutom na tayong lahat, health tip lang. No? It takes 20 minutes for our brain to realize na busog na tayo. Kaya wag yung sundin ang ginawa ko. Kasi dati, siguro naman makakatestify dito si SDS Dong Gonzalez. I was 20 pounds lighter before. Oh. Kaya lang, Kapag di ba meron tinatawag takaw busog, okay, na parang atakaw mata, na akala mo gutom na gutom ka, tapos kain ka ng kain, then and all of a sudden para ka masusuka. No? Because it takes 20 minutes for your brain to decipher the information from your stomach. So pag kumain ka, hintayin mo, after 20 minutes malalaman mong busog ka na. So eat moderately. Thank you sa lahat-lahat. Thank you, Deputy Majority Leader uh, Janet. Uh, sir, you want to say something? No, thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Salamat. Very supportive lang ako sa mga ano natin. So maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Ako, kailan ako nakaschedule? Araw-araw nakaschedule ako dito. Salamat. <laughs> salamat. Sir. Thank you, uh, Deputy Majority Leader Garina Piloilo. Deputy Majority Leader um, Migs of uh, PBA Party List. Uh, Chairman Galid, Chairman Kiko and Congresswoman uh, Pami for your participation. To everyone, maraming salamat po ulit. Congress TV, uh, para po tayo ma-inform, magkaroon po ng talagang, ma-intindihan po natin ng talakayan ng ating kongreso sa mga batas na mag magkakaroon ng apekto sa atin, makakabuti sa atin. So again, I invite you to watch uh, Congress TV. Salam! Pulibong kwentong pang-aabuso. Reklamo laban sa abusadong amo. Problema sa pamilya. Kasalang sa akin. Problema sa kalusugan. Lahat ng yan ay inaksunan. Nang ako pikol, tabang o ramismo ni Congressman Saldico. Sa ikatatlong anibersaryo ng ating serbisyo publiko. Sabay-sabay nating kilalanin ang bagong mukha. Ang mas pinaaksyon at mas pinalawak. Sa darating na biyernes, ang Akupikol Tabang Ora mismo ay live sa Barangay Taysan, Legazpi City. Alauna ng hapon hanggang alas tres ng hapon. At patuloy na maghahatid ng serbisyo publikong maninindigan at tutubon. The Unity League Mobile Legends Bang Bang National Tournament is here! And we heard you! To accommodate more players, Unity League is now open to younger gamers. So if you are a Filipino citizen, age 15 years old and above, and have never joined in any professional league, assemble your team and join now! 
registration is open to all. The Unity League Mobile Legends Bang Bang National Tournament. Ang po kayo na to watch uh, Congress TV para at least malalaman po at nalalaman yung everyday kung ano ang nangyayari sa ating bayan, lalo na sa Kongreso. Iba-iba. Iba-ibang pinag-uusapan po dito. Kaya it's very interesting to watch and support this Congress TV. The Unity League Mobile Legends Bang Bang National Tournament is here, bringing together the best troops from all over the country. For the online qualifiers, a total of 128 teams per tournament leg. From NCR, Northern Luzon, Southern Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao will battle it out for the top eight. Advancing to the on-site qualifiers, the top eight teams will go head-to-head -head for the top two spots. The top two teams per tournament leg will represent their respective regions in the grand finals. A total of 10 teams will face off at the championships and represent the country with the national team Seabull. For more details, visit the Unity League Facebook page. Itong araw na ito ang pagkaton ng House of Representatives bilang mga representante ninyo sa Kongreso. Magpapasalamat kami lahat sa inyong serbisyo at sakripisyo. You are actually the shining star. Not only in the Philippines, but you are now regarded globally as one of the few success stories in this endeavor. That is why we are here to acknowledge you, to salute you, and to thank you for your service. You have done something that most countries could not have achieved, and we are so proud of this. For we live under the peace and stability that we have created and we can only acknowledge and reward you with all the support that you deserve. Over the decades, Filconsa has stood witness to two constitutional changes and countless constitutional issues. Dutifully, you have proven yourselves to be a proactive witness and defender of our constitutions, past and present. It is once again being called upon for its role as a constitution's vanguard. Mabuhay ang ating saligang batas. Mabuhay ang iisa at nagkakaisang bagong Pilipinas. Ito talaga ang mensahe ang ating mahal na Presidente, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., at sinasabi niya parati, sama-sama tayo babangon uli at walang iwanan.
Pinapasa po kayo na patuloy po kami na mag-iisip at magsasagawa ng iba pang karagdagang tulong na pwedeng ipaabot sa inyo upang matupad ng bawat Pilipino ang kanyang buong potensyal. Ito po ang bagong Pilipinas. Pamamahalang nagmamahal, hindi lang salita kundi sa gawa. Lumalapit para matugunan ang mga pangangailangan ng taong bayan tungo sa sama-sama nating paunlad. Speaker Martin Romualdez, maraming salamat po sa pagpunta ninyo. Nagagalak po kami na nakapunta ka po rito dito sa isla ng Sikihor. Yung pag-aaral, yung edukasyon ay napaka-importante. Kaya nandito po kami, tutulong kami sa iyo para meron kayong ayuda dito sa ating pag-aaral. At hindi lang yan, para sa magulang ninyo at para pag-graduate ninyo, meron pang mga internship program. Ito ay bahagi ng ating ISIP program. Maraming salamat po sa tulong niyo. Speaker Martin, nandito po kayo sa amin ngayon. Maraming tao ang matutulungan niyo, kagaya namin mga mahihirap dito sa province na City Hall. Papasalamat tayo sa inyo lahat kasi kayo talaga ang uh, baga, nagsusunod talaga ng inyong oras, inyong panahon, inyong mga resources para maging mas maunla ng ating ekonomiya. Maraming salamat po sa pagpunta mo, Sir Martin, dito sa Sikihor. Ikaw ang gabay sa malaking tulong dito sa probinsya ng Sikihor. Yung gusto lang natin, ibigay sa iyo mensahe ni President BBM. Basta sama-sama tayo, babangon muli. At nakikita tayo ngayon, sama-sama tayo. May magandang programa at ito ay para sa iyo, handog ng ating mahal ng Pangulo. tayo na naganap itong bagong Pilipinas Servisyo Pero sa Sikihor. Ngayong araw po, dumating na sa Sikihor ang bagong Pilipinas. Mabuhay ang Sikihor, mabuhay po kayong lahat. time ko sa Sikihor. At napakaganda ang lalawigan. Kaya napakaswerte ako nakapunta ako ngayong araw na to at kasama ko kung mga kongresista na 19 Congress. Ito ang panglabing isa na probinsya na binisita natin dito sa bagong Servicio Fair. At nakikita natin itong card program ang pinakapopular. Bakit kaya? Kasi premium rice at cash pa rin. Gusto lang natin ibigay sa iyo mensahe ni President BBM basta sama-sama tayo babangon muli at nakikita tayo ngayon sama-sama tayo may magandang programa at ito ay para sa iyo handog ng ating mahal ng Pangulo.
Yung pag-aaral, yung edukasyon ay napaka-importante. Kaya nandito po kami, tutulong kami sa iyo para meron kayong ayuda dito sa ating pag-aaral. Sama-sama, babangon tayo muli dito sa Siki Hall. Sama-sama tayo kay umabangon ng Siki Hall. Papasalamat tayo sa inyo lahat kasi kayo talaga, kung baka nagsusunod talaga ng inyong oras, inyong panahon, inyong mga resources para maging mas maunla ng ating ekonomiya. sama-sama tayo dito sa itong Sibol program na gaganap natin itong araw na to. I assure you na bilang leader ng House of Representatives, isa ang inisip lang natin yung maganda ng kabuhay ng ating mga kapong Pilipino. Kaya dito sa Startup Incentives Business Opportunity and Livelihood Program, we wish you all the success and sa lahat ng tiga si Kihor, mabuhay po kayo at naghan salamat sa iyo lahat. Ito ang pangako ng ating mahal na Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Patuloy tayong iikot at maghahatid ng tulong hanggang sa mas marating natin ang bawat sulok ng Pilipinas. Hindi tayo titigil kahit anumang pambabatikos at panira ang ibato sa atin. Good President and the Speaker declare Bagong Pilipinas. We also declare a Bagong Sultan Kudarat here. Kaya napakaganda po mga kababayan that we all work together and ensure peace, prosperity, and development in our area. Talaga tama yung sinabi mo, Gob. Priority talaga ang Sultan Kudarat. Hindi natin nakalimutan yung support na binigay mo sa ating unit team, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Ang ating pagkitipong ngayon umaga ay simbolo ng ating mas malawak at pagkakaisa at katuparang ng ating pag-asa. Pagkakaisa para sa ating sama-samang pagbangon at pag-asang ni mas maunlad ng bukas na naghihintay para sa Pilipinas. Ipinangako ko po itong bagong Pilipino Servicio Fair ay mananatiling nakatutok at paglalapit ng sirbisyo at ayuda sa bawat Pilipino. Ito naman yung ginagalap naman natin dito ngayon, yung card. May isang cash assistance rice distribution programa na pinag-isipan natin sa Kongreso. Itong programa ng card, uulitin-uulitin din natin, hindi lang one time, hanggang maging rice self-sufficient ang Pilipinas at hindi na tayo mahirapan dito sa isyo ng bukas at sa kahirapan ng ating ekonomiya. Presidente, parati siya na trabaho, naglalakbay, naghahanap ng investments para magbigay ng trabaho at livelihood at para lalo lumago ang ating ekonomiya. Saan nyo na lagi narito ang gobyerno para sa lahat ng Pilipino sa Luzon, sa Visayas at Mindanao. Maraming maraming salamat at mabuhay ang Sultan Kudarat. Mabuhay ang bagong Pilipinas!
totoo lang po sa mga tiga sultan kudrat, sumama lahat ng mga kongresistas dito, House of the People, almost 50 congressmen na tiga Mindanao, lang kakaisa for Sultan Kudarat at sa Republika ng Pilipinas. I'm delighted to visit Sultan Kudarat for the 12th Bang Pilipinas Servicio Fair. Ito isa sa pinakamalaki. Ang ating pagtitipong ngayon umaga ay simbolo ng ating mas malawak at pagkakaisa at katuparang ng ating pag-asa. Kaya nandito mga kongresista kasi sila po kasama ko sa kongreso ay gumagawa ng batas ng budget na yung gusto ng ating mahal ng presidente na ilapit ang mga programa at serbisyo sa taong bayan. Asahan nyo na lagi narito ang gobyerno para sa lahat ng Pilipino sa Luzon, sa Visayas at Mindanao. programa ng card, uulitin-uulitin din natin, hindi lang one time, hanggang maging rise self-sufficient ang Pilipinas at hindi na tayo mahirapan dito sa isyo ng bukas at sa kahirapan ng ating uh, ekonomiya. Presidente, parati siya na trabaho, naglalakbay, naghahanap ng investments para magbigay ng trabaho at livelihood at para lalo lumago ang ating ekonomiya. Speaker of the House of Representatives, I pledge to marshal all the necessary resources to support our key developmental priorities. The support from Congress for Puerto Princesa, Aborlan, and the whole of Palawan will remain steadfast and unyielding. The programs and projects of the 3rd District of Palawan include a variety of initiatives aimed at enhancing infrastructure, healthcare, agriculture, and technology in the region. These projects are part of broader efforts to improve the quality of life, economic development, and environmental sustainability here in Palawan. Our focus remains unwavering on the essential aspects of development, providing the resources needed to empower the people of Palawan to meet their specific and basic and emerging needs. My commitment to our district remains absolute. Through the establishment of the district caretaker, we ensure continuous service delivery to our constituents. Palawan, the Philippines' largest province and its last ecological frontier, has garnered global acclaim as a top tourist destination, reflecting its unparalleled natural beauty and biodiversity.
together, we will achieve the vision of a vibrant, sustainable, and inclusive future for the third district of Palawan as well as the province as a whole. Mabuhay ang Palawan niyo. Maraming salamat po. Nagagalak po ako na makasama kayo ng araw na ito sa pagbubukas ng Bangong Pilipinas Service Fair. Masaya po ako dahil sa pagkakataon na binibigay ninyo para may paranas sa mga mamamayang botonan at sa lalawigan ng Zambales ang mas mataas na antas ng servisyong publiko hatid ng Bangong Pilipinas. Ma'am, isa ito ba'am sa unang beses na nangyari ngayon, ma'am eh. Kaya... Talagang napakagandang magkaroon ng ganitong uh, service fair, ma'am. Kasi uh, sabi nga, parang nandito na lahat, ma'am, wala ka nang hahanapin pang iba mo. Uh, yung pong binigay sa amin na uh, sister po ito na bangka, uh, bali magagamit din namin sa mga uh, pa pangisda namin. Papasalamat kami kay Sir Martin na sa mga binigay niya na mga tulong sa amin na mangisda. Kami ang gagawa ng paraan na makakaroon ng sapat na pondo funding galing sa General Appropriations Act na itutuloy ito, programa ito na farm. So, huwag kayong magalala. Yung uh, mahal nating Pangulo ay talaga iniisip niya araw-araw at kami po sa Kongreso, wala kami ginagawa kung hindi araw-araw naghahanap kami ng paraan kung paano natin may bibigay sa inyo ng mas magandang buhay. Ang administrasyon ng ating mahal na Pangulong BBM ay nahalal sa platforma ng pagkakaisa. Ang pagtitipon po natin ngayon ng hapon ay katuparan ng pangako ng pagkakaisa na ang mga suliranin ng ating bayan ay mas madaling mabibigyang lunas kung ang lahat ay nagkakaisa. Sama-sama ang Department of Social Welfare and Development, Commission on Higher Education, at Department of Labor Employment, Technical Education Skills Development Authority, at ang Civil Service Commission para makaroon kayo mga eskolar ng isip ng isang programa na tumutugon sa lahat ng inyong pangangailangan pang edukasyon. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagkuntan niyo rito. Mabuhay ang lalawigan ng Zambales. Mabuhay ang sampayanang Pilipinas. Maraming maraming salamat po. from the Philippine Statistics Authority, which is our registered births and deaths. And you're correct, the registration in 2022 was very low. And there was a big dip when the uh, pandemic started in registrations, which may not have been caught up. Um, so one of the most important things we can use at the moment is data, meaning that we need the data from the Philippine Statistics Authority, and we need a active campaign for all LGUs to collect birth and death data, to send it to PSA for collation, and then for PSA to publish. Because at the moment, 2023 data is only up to November, as of November, but only includes data up to August, 2023. So we really don't know what's happening when there's no data. So um, just my, my comment is, you know, I'm the lady who's been following data for three years. Um, PSA probably know of me because I keep hassling them on where their reports are. Um, but I'd like to emphasize, no data is like driving in the dark. We don't know what we're doing. Thank P you. PSA, you know, ang, ang data na lang naman na kulang nyo yung 2023. Asa na PSA? PSA ang, oh, yan, complete sila ng 2022, complete na kayo. Hindi, Hindi complete. <laughs>
is, is it not complete yet? The 2022? 22 was released. 23 has only been released effective as of November, which is data up to August. So, so what I'm trying to tell, uh, to tell this body, uh, uh, Sally, the 2022 is already complete, yes, but sir. the 2023 is not yet. Yes, sir. So, uh, ano ang 2023 hanggang kailan ng uh, updated nyo? For our data, it's up to October 2023, sir. October 2023. At October 2023, ilan ang access deaths? Hindi pa po natin ma-release for 2023, sir. Kalo ko updated na October 2023. October 2023. Ah. November and December, sir. Ilan? Can I comment, sir? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Okay. The 2023 data is effective as of death and birth registrations received by November 2023. However, the data that has been released only contains data up to August of 2023. And you could see that it takes several months for the data to be substantially complete. And of the data that is currently available for 2023, we can only look at the first half of the year because the second half of the year is very incomplete. When we look at the excess deaths in 2023, we can see March, April, and May already have deaths, and June have deaths close to 10% higher than 2022. Okay, so, I understand your point, yeah, uh, Sally. Thank you. Uh, but uh, we have to give the chance uh, sa PSA to uh, update, ano, yung, uh, we're yes. asking for the 2023. Uh, we know the concern of uh, Ms. Ali Clark, but uh, we have to give the chance uh, PSA to update that no? completely. Thank no? you, Your 2020, 2023. Okay, so, oh, Michelle, asan ka? Buka rito. Oh, no. Tatanungin kita ngayon. Tama ako, mali ako. The first four, tama ako. Yes, but for Ayaw. the first four, you're correct. Po. It's the official um, link, yes. po. official yung, documents. Yes, po. yung pang panghuli, for the last hindi nyo mabuksan. Yung, yes, po. Right. So, February 6, yung International Health Review Committee final report na, di ba? And uh, yung February 6, yung uh, amendments by article, kompleto kom kom na rin. February 6, 2020, amendments by country, kompleto na rin. So, these are all the amendments. Di ba tayo Nung sinasabi mo 307 kasama dito sa pinag-usapan. But, meron ka rin point that it will be ratified on the, 20, on the May 2024. So ngayon, ang tanong, yes. pag nasa plenary na kayo ng uh, World Health Organization, wherein our representative are there, can you debate and interpolate on the amendments per se? You cannot. Hindi nyo kaya nang makontrol ma 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 yung, yung narrative nila doon. Because, Nagkaroon na kayo ng final amendments sa ano eh, parang committee level eh. It, this is a committee level eh, itong ginawa nila. Sa dapat, doon pa lang sa panahon ng committee level, andun na kayo. Yan ang sinasabi natin para updated tayo kasi pagdating nila ng May 2024, they will ratify it. Yes po, they will ratify po yung final package based po doon sa mga previous discussions. Um, and magbe-base po yung, kumbaga, yung sinasabi nga po nating adoption po no, ng World Health Assembly kung two-thirds po ng no, mga uh, member states would accept po the adoption. Well, hindi naman tayo concerned sa buong two-thirds eh, sa Pilipinas. Oo oh, eh, yung Ang amendments natin. Ang point ni Mr. Perlas kanina, yes. merong mga objectionable na. And based sa sinabi ngayon ni Chairman Dan, tinanggap natin yung mga objectionable na yun. Yun that's precisely po we are uh, we yes. note po doon sa response letter po no ni Yusek Tayag yung technical assistance from the DFA if we can share po yung mga positions ng Philippines article per article may position um, na tayo from the DFA um, the, the discussions well, po no yung 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 pinos po na discussions during the discussions po kasi so ongoing discussions next? po eh ongoing pa so yung mga sinasabi ni yes, Mr. Po. Perlas kanina yung objectionable na ilang provisions, hindi pa natin ina-accept yun. That is subject to an amendment. Eh, pero tapos na. Wala tayong discussion, Richelle. Tapos na discussion. Hindi pa po tapos yung discussion. Meron sa pa plenary. pong April, meron pa pong April okay, 2022 okay. to 26 okay, po na meeting. I will give you again yes, po. the And benefit I... of the doubt that that will happen. Yes po. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm happy to find out that there's still one final updated amendment that will happen on April. If that is really true, thank you so much. Tapos yes, yung position natin, ipa, ipa, ano na natin, ipasok na natin. 
yung mga objection give us a copy of your ano of the position of the government confidential ba yan or can you have you have, have you have you tried to give it to, to the president kung ano yung ating mga amendment that uh, uh, will be uh, will be included baka hindi rin alam ng gobyerno ng gobyerno itong mga amendments na, na pinag-uusapan niyo o tingnan niyo kayo kayo na lang ano ba yan we will all be binded by that tapos kayo kayo nang uusap paano ang presidente paano ang kongreso paano ang Sena senado yes richard Um, yes, but no. So that's why. Um, for a while, but I'll just. Um, Masigay ka talaga, Michelle. Ganon talaga, Michelle. Since wala, hindi pa alam ng presidente, hindi pa namin alam, hindi pa alam ng lahat. So April pa naman yun. So tignan yon. Basahin niyo lang yung mga mga contentious uh, issues that that will affect us all, di ba? Oh. Is it confidential? Pwede ba tayo magpasubmit dito sa committee, sa joint committee? nung st final stand din niya by by right after the April ano. Yeah, this Para is alam namin kung hindi naman to confidential eh because everybody knows about the 307 amendments. Mag-Google ka lang makikita mo na eh. So Richelle, could, uh, you say Taya, Richelle, will you submit that to this joint committee by uh, before May? Kung ano yung stand ng uh, Philippines in this different ano. Uh, all the amendments be to be approved or ratified sa May. Um, if what happens in May na meron ng final package, uh, it will be uh, compared doon sa uh, stand ng Department of Health or the Philippines. And so, if substantial yon, the Philippines may choose not to vote for its ratification. If you do not vote, if the Philippines does not vote for the ratification, but it still reaches the the, the minimum two-thirds, we are still going to be bound by that. Uh, meron pong 12 months for to finally reject or approve it. Ah, okay. And for member states, yes. 10 months. Okay. So, At dun sa period na yon, yes. kailangan namin na marami ng kakampi. <laughs> kung, wala kasi, kayo, kung wala tayong kakampi hindi lang naman kayo eh. tayo yan eh. alam mo you know what you, wala na you need to ano, tayo. Uh, chair you need talaga to uh, uh, update the members of the uh, committee and the congress and the senate para uh, alam namin kung ano yung nangyayari kasi kung hindi pa namin na-search to eh, hindi pa natin malalaman and, and just to remind everybody ano, at the end of the day uh, may constitution tayo there's a Philippine constitution which, say, which says that Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. Uh -huh. So, hindi natin pwedeng i-give up yun. Uh -huh. Or else... Sir, yun ang pinaka-tripwire namin. Uh, yes. One, uh, any incursion sa existing national laws yes. is specifically in sovereignty natin, yes. non-negotiable so, pa. Non-negotiable lang. May ano tayo doon. No? And then, the final point na lang, so you will apologize? Habi mo yung last point. Hindi, siya ano mag-apologize. Ano mag siya mag-apologize. Diba I told you, if, ah, I, if I'm right, oh, you will apologize. Na And if na I'm wrong, I will apologize. Oh, wala so, Miss Richelle, what? <laughs> wala na. Let's, ano na tayo? Ano na tayo? Um, Sir, Chairman. but the last link is not working. And um, not of it. Oh, Komo na lang. Komo. <laughs> Richelle, I ask you kanina, kapag napatunayan ko na tama lahat yung link, di ba you will say sorry? Etong daw is last mo, hindi mo lang siya ma-open. But basically, lahat siya tama, apat ang tama, isa lang yung hindi mo ma-open at hindi mo malaman kung tama o mali. You have to say sorry to me. Let's wait. Okay. Okay. Ah, so wala pa. Ah, the last word will be uh and the NSC muna. Uh, we, we have to ano muna yung NSC, you no? Know? Andiyan yung National Security Council. Sir, uh, oh, yeah, para yeah. at least matapos na tong uh, ano natin? So, sa National Security Council, uh, oh, can you kindly comment on this uh, issue pertaining sa, of course, uh, at stake yung ano natin dito, yung security ng ating mga mamamayan because uh, kung bumababa yung ating population, somehow, makaka-apekto, di ba? So, what's your position on what is, ha on what is uh, happening on all of this? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Co-Chairs. And apologies for Secretary Anya for not being able to appear to this August body. But uh, the, the National Security Secretariat uh, uh, supports the, the resolution being filed by, by the committee, Mr. Chair. And uh, 
we our stand is that the importance of reporting debts accurately will make sure the country's health system capability in responding to diseases. In return, this will also help in recalibrating Philippine policies and regulations on health care and in preparation for and response for future pandemics. Uh, on the earlier discussion, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, uh, as mentioned earlier by the committee, uh, we need to work for the Filipino people in order for us to protect the rights and lives of the Filipino people, Mr. Chair. Yung numerous previous uh, reports of, uh, of uh, PNP and AFP dying, uh, did it reach your office? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, but then unfortunately, uh, we, we don't have uh, the capability nor the database of information on number of deaths and accept, access deaths at the moment, Mr. Chair. And then uh, we, will, we will find out for the accurate data on that matter, Mr. Chair. So give us all the details no, para at least no, uh, malaman din po namin yung sa uh, issue about it no, uh, na ilan yung uh, namamatay talaga. Kasi Ay, kayo yung may, ano eh, meron kayong mga intel report dyan eh. Dapat mas, mas ano nyo yan eh, mas dig nyo nga yung sitwasyon eh. Di ba? Ay, Mr. Chair, we will just collate the, the necessary reports and data, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Mr. Perlas. Now that you, uh, can I just follow up with the working group uh, on IHR? There's, there are a number of points uh, that have emerged which are not clear. The first point is that when the amendments are approved, it will not pass through the legislature. I think we have to be very clear that the Congress will have no power to oversee those. I mean, this is in the IHR. It's different from the pandemic treaty that will have to pass through Congress. But the IHR amendments, uh, it's gonna be the responsibility of the executive branch, basically the president of the Philippines. So that, in other words, there's no uh, oversight power of Congress in that. That's why it's very dangerous, uh, Mr. Chair. And that leads to my second question. Uh, is it the rule in the working group of the IHR and the WHO that they cannot comment on those 307 amendments while there's draft being formed? Because it will basically be useless. There's no more time to make the comments. You cannot debate 307 amendments in the General Assembly. So I just want to clarify if at this point, our Philippine position on those 307 amendments can now be actually sent to the WHO. And if they change some of those, but at least we got our, our opinion, some of them will be retained. I just want to ask if that procedure is acceptable within the WHO working group on IHR. So can I ask to you, Mr. Chair? All right. So, kasi nga, if the president was not given the 307 amendments, eh, so much more of us. No, exactly. Uh, hindi tayo nabigyan ng uh, amendments. So, yeah. anyway, uh, it's all written naman in the, you know, in the uh, sources natin sa internet. No? So, we can but, really find out the, you know, uh, yung mga different uh, comments. Pero all of the countries have already commented and proposed amendments and uh, uh, issue yung kanilang mga objection. And I was reading all the countries that have uh, commented and uh, commented and uh, objected. Wala, wala naman ng Pilipinas. Eh. Kaya nga, yung sinasabi nyo that uh, we will be having a discussion again. Tignan natin sa May 2024 para at least uh, malaman po natin what, we, what really will happen. No? Because that amendments were already discussed thoroughly by the World Health uh, uh, Assembly and the IHR. Anyway, all right. So, uh, any more discussion? Uh, as, a, as a suggestion, Mr. Chair, can the, yes, uh, can the representatives of the WHO from the Philippines send, send your committee and then to the public a copy of their position? Because yeah, we requested the, yeah. you know, the representatives. You know, ano, Yusek Tayak, ang pangalan ng representative nila sa atin. Hindi natin sa kanila. Yung representative yeah. nila sa atin. Si Ruby po. Ruby. Ruby, R-U-I. Oh, yeah. Ruby. So, uh -huh. can we ask them to uh, furnish us doon sa mga amendments that they have? Yes, uh, sir. They, but ang sinabi nilang caveat, they may have to refer it sa WHO Geneva. 
<laughs> point lang yung, yung Philippine stand. What yung, we want is that akala ko meron na kayong stand uh, comments. But they're, why, they're not aware of yes, our Yes, sir. Hindi sila right? tayo. Uh, Philippine. The Philippine delegation already has a stand. In fact, they're consulting the DFA. So, pero merong may final na amendments for final package sometime in April. So, after that, could you please provide this committee before May yung official position ng Philippines on the on the different amendments? That's possible, sir. Yes. Uh, yun yung request lang. Thank you. Okay, so there will be the last word from uh, my partner, Vice Chairman Akop. Vice Chairman Akop. <laughs> Any comments? May comment yan. Yan ang final word. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Sige, go ahead. Kung sa May 27, dihado pa rin ang Pilipinas dun sa regulations na yun, then we file a resolution again to investigate bakit ganun ang nangyari. Yun. So uh, at least uh, coming from my, uh, my vice chairman, no? uh, galing siya sa kabilang uh, hearing ano, sa public account, so nalate na siya. But uh, next time, uh, if sa May 2024, ang uh, nangyari is adverse sa gusto ng ating mga mamamayan, I think uh, we will be opening up again the investigation. Okay? But for the meantime, we'll be waiting. Wala na naman pong, ano yan eh, ilang months na lang po yan from now. And we will be finding out if all those amendments that have been uh, written and the, uh, all the sources that uh, we have seen ay uh, wala tayong na-contribute man lang. Di ba? Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, Congressman uh, Ray Arugancia. Uh, Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn. So there's a motion to suspend. Suspend. Uh, suspend. Sorry, I withdraw my motion. Motion to suspend, Mr. Chairman. So there is a motion to suspend and duly seconded. The reason why we suspended because after May 2024, we will start again the investigation. So <laughs> uh, hearing suspended. On the part of the uh, Committee on Public Order, this uh, hearing is suspended. On the part of the Committee on Human Rights, this uh, joint committee is hereby suspended. Thank you to all invited guests. Thank you to the members. Itong araw na ito ang pagtaton ng House of Representatives bilang mga representante ninyo sa Kongreso. Magpapasalamat kami lahat sa inyong servisyo at sakripisyo. You are actually the shining star. Not only in the Philippines, but you are now regarded globally as one of the few success stories in this endeavor. That is why we are here to acknowledge you, to salute you, and to thank you for your service. We have done something that most countries could not have achieved, and we are so proud of this. For we live under the peace and stability that we have created and we can only acknowledge and reward you with all the support that you deserve. For the decades, Filconsa has stood witness to two constitutional changes and countless constitutional issues. Dutifully, you have proven yourselves to be a proactive witness and defender of our constitutions, past and present. It is once again being called upon for its role as a constitution's vanguard. Mabuha!
mabuhay ang ating saligang batas. Mabuhay ang iisa at nagkakaisang bagong Pilipinas. Ito talaga ang mensahe ang ating mahal na presidente, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. At sinasabi niya parati, sama-sama tayo babangon uli at walang iwanan. Pumasa po kayo na patuloy po kami na mag-iisip at magsasagawa ng iba pang karagdagang tulong na pwedeng ipaabot sa inyo upang matupad ng bawat Pilipino ang kanyang buong potensyal. Ito po ang bagong Pilipinas. Pamamahalang nagmamahal, hindi lang salita kundi sa gawa. Lumalapit para matugunan ang mga pangangailangan ng taong bayan tungo sa sama-sama nating paunlad. Speaker Martin Romualdez. Maraming salamat po sa pagpunta ninyo. Nagagalap po kami na nakapunta ka po rito dito sa isla ng Sikihor. Yung pag-aaral, yung edukasyon ay napaka-importante. Kaya nandito po kami, tutulong kami sa iyo para meron kayong ayuda dito sa ating pag-aaral. At hindi lang yan, para sa magulang ninyo at para pag-graduate ninyo, meron pa kami internship program. Ito ay bahagi ng ating ISIP program. Maraming salamat po sa tulong niyo, Speaker Martin. Nandito po kayo sa amin ngayon. Maraming tao ang matutulungan niyo, kagaya naming mga mahihirap dito sa province na Sikihor. Papasalamat tayo sa inyo lahat kasi kayo talaga ang uh, baga, nagsusulat talaga ng inyong oras, inyong panahon, inyong mga resources para maging mas maunlad ang ating ekonomiya. Maraming salamat po sa pagpunta mo, Sir Martin, dito sa Sikihor. Ikaw ang gabay sa malaking tulong dito sa probinsya ng Sikihor. Yung gusto lang natin, ibigay sa yung mensahe ni President BBM, basta sama-sama tayo, babangon muli. At nakikita tayo ngayon, sama-sama tayo, may magandang programa, at ito ay para sa iyo, handog ng ating mahal ng Pangulo. The FBM will cease operations by May 31, uh, March 31, and the uh, Office of the Presidential Advisor for Amaravi Rehabilitation uh, will take over the, the final stages of the rehabilitation and baka uh, i-oversee din yung uh, compensation. Okay, so, so all the assets and all the documents will be turned over to the new Office. Pinangunahan ng Task Force Bangon Marawi ang recovery, reconstruction at rehabilitation ng lungsod kasama ang anim na government agencies at development partners na nagsanigpwarsa upang matiyak ang mabilis na pagtugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga apektadong residente. Ang TFDM ay nabuo sa bisa ng Administrative Order No. 3 series of 2017 na inilabas noong June 28, 2017 upang pangasiwaan ang pagbangon, rekonstruksyon at rehabilitasyon ng lusod ng Marawi at mga naapektuhang karatig lugar. Sa ilalim na administrasyon ni Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., nagpatuloy ang pagsasagawa at pagkumpleto ng iba't ibang mga programa at proyekto na naglalayong ibalik muli ang sigla na ekonomiya ng Marawi at muling gawing normal ang pamumuhay ng mga internally displaced persons. 
Limang taon mula nung matinding kaguluhan, babango na ang Marawi City. Nangumbalik na ang sigla sa pamayanan, maraming proyekto ang nakumpleto at mga infrastrukturang na itatayo. Kasalukuyan na tayo nagpoproseso ng tulong panansyal para sa mga biktima ng Marawi Siege upang sila ay makapagsimula muli. Naway mamayani ang pag-asa, naway magpatuloy ang pagkakaisa, pagmamatyag at paghahangad ng kapayapaan at kaundaan. Sa kabutihang palad, nanaig ang hustisya at sa tulong na rin ng gobyerno at iba't ibang mga organisasyon, unti-unti nang umuusbong ang nag-iisang Islamic City ng bansa. Sa kasalukuyan, ilan pang mga bagong infrastruktura ang natapos at malapit ng pasinayaan at i-turnover sa kanilang mga end-users. Ilan pa ang mga proyekto ang kasalukuyang minamatsyagan ng kanika nilang mga implementing agencies at pagsisikapang makumpleto sa lalong madaling panahon. Nakatakda ang opisyal na pagtatapos o pagwawalang bisa sa mandato ng TFBM sa March 31, 2024 sa bisa na Administrative Order No. 14, Series of 2023. Layunin ito na pagtibayin at pagintingin pa ang mga tungkulin ng mga ahensya ng pamahalaan tungo sa agarang rehabilitasyon ng Marawi City. Sa kasalukuyan, mananatiling nakatutok ang anim na mga ahensya. Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, Department of Interior and Local Government, Department of Public Works and Highways, Department of Health, Department of Social Welfare and Development, and Department of Trade and Industry sa agarang pagkumpleto sa mga natitira pang mga proyekto gaya ng patubig at supply ng kuryente sa most affected area. Sa mahigit anim na taon, walang dudang nagampanan at nagtagumpay ang TFBM sa pagtupad ng mga tungkol nito para sa ating mga kapatid ng Maranao. Malaki na ang naging pagbabago sa Marawi City at patunay dito ang iba't ibang mga proyekto na malasakit at dedikasyon ng pamahalaang muling itaguyod ang lungsod. Asahan ninyo ang ipagpapatuloy ng gobyerno ang mga nasimula ng TFBM upang makamit muli ang progresibong ekonomiya ng Marawi City. Thank you, uh, ASEC. So, I guess uh, members of this committee, uh, would we allow first uh, the agencies to, pres to ano, present uh, to us 
their accomplishment before we can ask questions, no? Would that be okay, uh, Ma'am Lan, Ma'am Larni, and Congressman Arbison? So, uh, which agency is uh, next to present? Uh, the ICT, okay. I believe you have a flight to catch, no, the ICT? Okay, sige. O sige, baka malit ka sa ano mo, eh. Ako namin na mag, ano ka ng penalty mo. Sige, ma'am, ano. Birahin mo na. Yeah, ano salam. Thank you, sir. Mo. First of all, assalamu alaikum. Ano? and good afternoon po to everyone, to Mr. Chair. <laughs> good afternoon po. Uh, for the ICT po, uh, can we, can I have the slides po for, for this presentation? Do you have a, uh, also a prepare a hard copy of your presentation? Meron po, sir. Okay, pa pakibigay na lang po dito para may copy din po yung mga members ng committee. Then after the ACT. So after the ACT, the soon and then Lua para ma-prepare nyo na po yung presentation ninyo. Uh, before you proceed, uh, I'd like to recognize our chairman of the Mindanao Committee on Mindanao Affairs, uh, Congressman Bambi Imano. Thank you, sir, for coming and for joining us. Please proceed, uh, the ICT. Pwede ka na ba? Di ICT, akala ko nagmamadali ka. Ah, okay. So, while we're, ano, while uh, we're waiting for your presentation, tanong ko lang si ASEC. ASEC, yung mga, meron ba tayong DepEd dito? Meron, no? Uh, we we met yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, wala sila. Sila, wala, wala sila ngayon siya. Wala din sila doon sa mga remaining agencies, no? Na part doon sa yeah. ano. Yeah. Pero may ongoing pa sila na ano. Uh, in, yung uh, five school buildings, hindi lang na turnover pa. Nag-punch uh, listing na sila. Uh -huh. uh, they will turn over uh, baka mga April siya. Kaya lang, may mga yung uh, uh, auxiliary facilities uh, hindi na po ang duhan last year. O kasi so, nakita ko, parang meron pang kulang na 277 million yes, yes. na budget. So, so, yun sir, ang wala, walang budget, hinahanapan ng pondo ngayon. Uh, but uh, kailangan pa yun sir, kasi para makompleto yung uh, integrated school. Yes, oo, oh, yes. tama. Okay, mamaya na lang ano, para makapresensi. Thank you, uh, Sec Castro. DICT, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, again. Uh, for the ICT project in Maar, the most affected area. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for the first part of the component ng sa DICT po, uh, we have uh, constructed the DICT building in which it will, it will house the uh, facilities and communication techno uh, facilities. Then, it costs about 8.5 million. Next slide, please. Wala yung slide. Wala yung slide, ma'am. Ah, ito po yung nakikita nyo ngayon. Mag I'll go over with these slides na lang po. Ito po yung sa fiber optic laying. Yung light kay in color blue. Yan po yung implemented na sa fiber optic na connect sa mga barangays. Then yung sa green po, lower, uh, lower portion, left, sa, uh, left side, yan po yung for proposal pa na ikakabit natin sa Marawi GovNet na existing sa provincial office. Bali yan po siya is, uh, ang IT equipment niya is nasa Marawi provincial office, ready for deployment and installation. Uh, next slide, please. Ito po yung pictures ng ongoing na Fiber optic laying sa Marawi Road, uh, most affected area. Underground po yan siya pag-install pag natin. 
Then next slide po. Construction of the ICT network is uh, important po to house yung mga communication facilities natin, yung mga equipment. Uh, without yung facilities na yan, uh, needed po talaga na yung mga equipment natin is nasa secure area. Next slide please. Ito yung picture ng building. Ito po sa unused po talaga yun siya na turnover na nung March. Uh, October 4 siya na complete. 2022 in, in was turnover last May of 2023. Ang cost po niyan is nasa 8.55 million uh, with the presence of Mayor Gandambra and our former regional director, Director Asum po. Uh, next slide please. Bali, ang needed po ng the ICT building natin is yung uh, ma-energize siya. Bali, may concern lang di po ata sila sa record pertaining sa ener uh, energization po. Uh, then next slide po. Ito po yung mga na-procured na ICT equipment para sa Digital Transformation Center o yung sa constructed building. Kasana, kasama na po dyan yung mga computer table, computer desktop, uh, furniture and pictures and mga camera and mga lead TV po. Next slide po. Ito po yung tools and equipment para sa fiber optic, yung mga OTDR and other uh, electrical or tec technical equipment po na needed sa, sa pag-maintain ng fiber optic. Next slide. Medyo magulo lang po yung <laughs> pag-arrange ng kuwan. Pero ito po yung breakdown ng mga uh, remaining uh, uh, activities na ipoprocure ng uh, DICT. For the remaining part is yung sa DICT tower the it cost the 4.7 million ito po yung itatayo sa may camp uh, cap kapantaran po then yung sa supply and delivery ng wireless mile link yung 8.2 yan po yung magko-connect from uh, from the, the DTC natin yung sa building yan po yung magtatapon ng signal sa mga nearby na na barangay then yung sa design delivery ito na naman po yung subscription ng bandwidth which cost 3 million. Ito po siya, isinantay namin yung second and third trans na downloading ng fund from NHSA po. Next po. Ah, yan po siya, Mr. Chair, yung presentation ng the ICT. Thank you, uh, Thank the you ICT. Po. Now, I know you are, ano no, uh, you're catching a flight later. That's why I would like to, ano, kung if there's question from the members, no, bago ka namin, paano, okay lang? Oh, can, is it okay if you if you can accommodate hey, ma'am, ma'am, flight sir. So flight. flight mo? Oh, may pala po mga 8:45. Pero yung ginahabol ko kasi uh, sir, yung traffic. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pero yung traffic, yung traffic. Eh, hey, wala traffic pa diyan. Tapos na yan. So, uh Congressman Bambi, would you go ano, first? Yeah. Okay. But with the uh, indulgence of the chair. Yeah, please. Yeah. For, for, for the ICT, I thought that the infrastructure you're laid out already. You even have your infrastructure as building. Opo. When is it operational again? Uh, sir, uh, bali, waiting po kami para ma-energize yung area. Bali, yung sa Lasureco yung inantay namin na ma-energize. Pero parang nagkaroon nata sila ng problema na sunog yung underground cable nila. Kasi yung building natin is along the main road. Yung paglagay nila ng electrical cable ata is underground. So, ang nakausap ko yung bago. Ba't ba hindi mo alam? Ko, but di mo alam? Parang panagiging para ka, hindi ka sigurado sa sagot mo. Uh, no sir, bali, kao po ko lang po as regional director ng Region 12. Bali, yung task force barangon na pukukan natin po. dito. Noong January po sa March, March, April, March. Tatlong buwan, hindi mo pa rin alam? Hindi sir, bali, uh, sa stand collector sir, bali, yun lang yung words of kwan lang sir. Ginawa kasi ito eh, para mabilisan yung trabaho. Opo. Tapos sa uh, three months, hindi mo pa alam mo nung ginagawa mo doon. Ano sir, bali naka-pending kasi yung trabaho so, ano doon. Yung... Anong nasunog? Yung electrical cable po, yung underground. As per uh, info from Las Oreco po. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, may I be recall next? Uh, yes, uh, would you like to respond to the question po? Uh, uh, yes po, I would like to clarify the uh, yes, director, answer. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes po, sir. General Manager With regards po to sa energy station, actually sir, Yung pinagawa ang, ang energy station sa Lasoreco is dalawa po. Si Lasoreco yung overhead. 
uh, yung sinasabi po niya kung nasaan under yung area nila is doon sa underground cabling. Uh, hindi po muna na turn over ng uh, Inmarie yung underground cabling kasi hindi po sila sorry kung gumawa. So as of now sir, yung sinasabi niyang problema, hindi po sila sorry ko sir yung may problema. Opo, yung sa DITC kasama doon sir sa underground facilities na hindi pa na-energize. So hindi pa po na turn over yung underground uh, facilities sa Lasoreco. Bali ang uh, underground na gumawa doon sir yung contractor na si Edmari. So yung ah uh, ng housing. So uh, just uh, on no, no March 4 sir yung underground cabling nila na uh, na energize na. Kaya lang nagkaroon ng problema yung uh, underground cabling nila was because uh in energize na namin uh pumutok yung sinasabi mo was because may illegal tapping na naman na ginawa ng uh, doon sa area nila which is hindi po kasali sa amin kasi hindi pa na to turn over. So uh, between lang po yan sa uh, ano tawag sa Edmarie at saka doon sa uh, NHA. Uh, so wala po kami doon sa ano. Ang sa Kaila Soreco is to just to energize the uh, uh, distribution line with regards po sa ako no, hindi pa po na turn over sa amin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, ang problema hindi sa Lasoreco? No, sir. Opo. Hindi pa sa po NHA? Na, uh, yung underground cabling nila, hindi po na to turn over pa sa amin. Sa NHA po yung ano. Oh, director, ba't hindi mo alam niya? Uh, oh, implementing po, po agency. Actually, sir, yung may focal naman tayo dito. Siya po yung nakakalam talaga. Bali, yung sa task force Marawi kasi, Medyo hindi ko pa masyado kabisado yung uh, construction doon. Pero as per info na ko natin, yan po yung na-present ko ngayon na uh, uh, accomplishment mo ng DICT. And yun pertaining po sa Lasoreco, my apology po, hindi po ako nakakapan. Yan lang yun po yung na-relay sa akin. Before, before ICT, saan ka? Oh. Before ICT, become my director. Saan ka, saan opisina galing? Telecommunication office po, sir. Saan? Dating DOTC, TELOP, then the ICT po. Saan, saan? Uh, I was assigned as, as, as provincial officer ng Sultan Kudarat Province. Uh, malayo po siya sa Lanaw del Sur, Maguindanao Province. Bali, ang involved po ng mga tao is yung before, is uh, Mindanao Cluster 3 ka kami, Region 11 and 12. So, bali, yung actual na nagtatrabaho po, involved dyan is yung from MC3 and yung nasa provincial officer po ng Lanaw, Marawi City. So doon sa ground zero, sa area of concern director, ilang percent na may signal na ng cellphone doon? Sa so, anong network? A globe and smart po yung nandun sa area, sir. Pero yun lang, medyo hindi pa ata na-update ng uh, telco yung kanila ilang, technology. Ilang percent? Ilang percent nga? Ito ba, Director, yung presentation mo is 6.19 kilometers link for niche and finish? Ito ba yun? Yung sa urbanized area lang po ng Marawi City talaga, labas doon sa kanya po yung medyo malakas ang signal, pero yung sa area, wala po masyado. Sa so, percentage po, uh, no idea po ako doon. Sa, sa MTC po yung, may na nga po sa, bali sa MTC po yung sa kwa ng telcos, yung nakakabigay ng data noon. So, so ano ginawa niyo? Dahil mahina man signal. Bali, Anong, kinakausap, na po, bali kinakausap na po namin si Telcos na kung pwede, uh, si, through NTC, na kung pwede, kausapin natin si Telcos na i-upgrade yung technology nila from 2G to 3G and 4G. Kasi yung doon is medyo talagang late na. The same din po pa, doon. Pa, parang sa, future kinakausap, nakausap na, hindi pa? Nakausap na po namin ni ano Director Troilan. Uh, gagawan daw po nila ng paraan, sir. Yun ang advice sa amin. Ano Nang yan? Na officially uh, may written communication kayo or ano lang? Verbal lang muna, sir, yung ginagawa namin. Bali, kasi Pero, kung... Na, nasa gobyerno tayo, eh, di ba? Parang lahat kailangan papel, eh. Yes, sir. Bali, gagawin po natin. Bali, sir, ko po, pa. Gagawin Ay, po natin. Paano namin alaman kung totoong nag... Uh, you know, you're working for and you're talking to the telcos. If, uh, we, if we do not have a, a document to show us the, with the committee. The director, before you, as you assume the office, I presume you already also were informed about yung, kung ano yung mga hindi pa natapos, ano yung mga naging problema, ano yung kwan, di ba? Yes, sir. I'm aware po ako, sir. Aware ka. So, isa, yung sin sinasight ni Congressman Bambi is just some of the issues na I presume you already know. 
you already knew before your assumption, your actual assumption, is it correct? Yes, po, sir. Then, then why up to now, after three months, you still we are still facing with this kind of problem? Uh, kasi sir, bali yung sa telcos naman, di natin, di ko, di control ni, di natin control yung kanilang magiging ang action. So, bali, through verbal instruction and then through sa NTC, nakipag-usap kami sa kanila. And I, yun na po, sir. Mr. Chair, did, did, the, did the director endorse the help of the local government unit? Did they talk to the governor, to the mayor? Have you approached your congressman na, to help you with the NTC? Because you, you, in, in the province, in Misamis Oriental, that's what, what you should, we should usually do. When, uh, when we have challenges of uh, dead spots, we try to talk to telcos. And the uh, local government unit plays a very big role. Now, the question is, were you able to approach local government units already? Sa ngayon, sir, wala pa po. Bali, yan po yung direction ko na makipag-usap doon sa, sa local government unit. Magpapatis ko tayo. Parang past up future tense ka lahat, ha? Parang kami nagsasadya sa trabaho mo, tapos parang yung gagawin mo, no? Hindi po, sir. Bali, yan, yan na naman po yung direction namin sa DICT. With, with partnership po sa uh, NTC, kami po yung dalawa makikipag-usap sa mga local government unit. Okay, we, makakatulong naman po yun sa amin kasi may mga existing problems po. Uh, wait lang, with indulgence of course, Bambi, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, okay? So, at least have you relayed this to TFBM being part of an interagency task force? Problema mo? Have you communicated this? Dinin ko sa po director. Ah, uh, siya po yung excuse me sir, papa, pardon po. Ba siya, siya po yung task force bangon maray focal natin before. Uh, Hindi na siya pa upo mo diyan no, baka mas masagot niya. Yeah, okay, sige. Uh, what's can you can you please identify yourself? Ah, uh, engineer. Ah, uh, that that guy coaching director. <laughs> I apology po sir. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, may mga hard questions lang si Congressman Bambi and we expect na ano, you know all, all of these things. Can you please Identify po sino kayo. A uh, director, do not ano, leave your seat. Uh, isa lang bang kuupuan dyan? Can somebody please uh, bring an uh, additional chair? And maybe, ano, wag ka, man, wag ka na lang kumandong kay director. Sige, <laughs> sir. Ramadan ngayon. Uh, so, can you please identify yourself? And then, uh, can you answer the questions of Congressman Bambi Imano? Uh, good afternoon po everyone. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am Engineer Abdul Muhaymin Ismail, uh, the focal for the uh, TFBM. How long have you been part of the ano, DICT? Uh, Specifically this program on for Marawi? For con na po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, since 2019. Uh, so you're knowledgeable to answer questions? Uh, yes, uh, okay. Mr. Chair. Okay. So, can you answer the question of Congressman Bambi, Mano? Ano? Kanina, kinu-coach mo si Director. Ngayon, si Director na kukoach sa'yo. Uh, yes. Kawawa naman kami yung taga uh, Yes Ganyan. po, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually, uh, Lanao del Sur is uh, part po ng uh, bar. Can you answer? My question is, can you answer his questions? Kasi since you've been there for the 20, since 2019, uh, the Director like... has just assumed for uh, after... Since January. So, since masa, may alam ka ata kasi nagko-coach ka kanina kay Director. Eh. Okay. Congressman Bami, please proceed. Uh, 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 if I may, Mr. Chair, I would like to, ano, uh, uh, what is this, to uh, hear uh, again yung question po. Ni, uh... yeah. Let's go back to the question. How many percent of uh, the ground zero of Marawi have you signal already, sir? Uh, actually, uh, uh, when it comes to on sa uh, effort ni DICT, uh, we are all already uh, we have already uh, lay out fiber optic yeah, cable. Yeah, I, I saw in the presentation. Answer me with something that's not in the presentation, sir. Yes, po. Uh, Kasi nakita yung green line, blue line, di ba? You know. So yun. Uh, actually, eh, eh, like ilang po siya na may signal sa loob ng Marawi, sir? Uh, uh, as zero. of now, wala pa po kasi hindi pa na-operationalize uh, na yung ating uh, fiber optic cable network. So once that what is... What about for commercial? Like Globe, Smart? Uh, yes po, my presence po. My presence po dyan. So ilang percent nga? Uh, as to the person, wala kaming data pero 
uh, based on uh, uh, visiting the site and uh, inspecting po uh, actually may meron talagang signal however yun nga po uh, mahina ang signal so how do you update your record your file if you do not have a record kung ito na area ngayon wala next year ito yung papalagyan natin kausapin natin yung globe or smart or dito ito mga uh, optic uh, fiber ba uh, ano yung bang use nito para maintindihan namin uh, is for actually, Yes, please. Actually, ang fiber optic cable, eh, established namin yan within the MAA or the most affected area to co to connect the mga government offices and public areas lang uh, through government network of free Wi-Fi. Okay. So, uh, but you still need uh, so, uh, providers, service providers like exactly Adobe Smart. Po, oo. Okay. So, pero not necessarily the smart or the low. Actually, nasa pipeline po ng project namin with the uh, task force Bangon Marawi yung provision of uh, internet connection or the bandwidth na nasa 500 Mbps. So, once na ma-finalize or ma-completo po yung uh, pag-establish natin ng fiber optic cable network within Marawi, then that's the time na ipoprocure namin yung uh, bandwidth subscription para isupply po doon sa ating network. So, Do you have for, uh, yeah, so so uh, ngayon kayo naglalagay kayo ng fiber optic. Yes po. Ang naglalagay sino? Ah, uh, DICT. DICT po. DICT. Tapos ang provider maglalagay doon wala pa kayo. Nung provider for the bandwidth subscription po, wala pa po kasi hindi hindi pa actually uh, aside sa hindi pa kumpleto yung network, inaantay din namin yung budget na ibababa from uh, National Housing Authority. Mm. But, but usually the providers they're uh, the big players and there are actually small players and what they usually do is that if you're interested you sign a contract with them then they will lay out the fiber optics yes, Pero ito sa Marawi, apparently the government bought yeah uh, actually the fiber optic cable network they procure po namin ito uh, with the uh, Uh, wireless link technologies sila po yung aming contractor sino yun sino yun wireless link technologies incorporated pero provider din sila uh, sila yung ng bandwidth uh, pwede rin po sila maging provider ng bandwidth pero yun nga po uh, uh, sir hindi pa po kami nakapag procure ng bandwidth Mr. Chair ito na lang can we, they submit the terms of reference and the contract uh, that they purchased with uh, ano yan Wireless link technologies. Wireless link, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and also to Kwan, how many percent pa yung dapat yung i-accomplish? Uh, actually, nasa 81.55% po kami ngayon. Including yung nasunog. Yung kailangan yung ano yun. Yung nasunog po sa... Yung nasunog po is yung sa electrical cable naman po. Ah, na hindi, siya, yung... hindi siya. Sa, hindi kasama po yung fiber optic natin. So please comply with the... Yeah. Would that be yes, possible, sir, Director, yes, on sir. terms of reference and the purchases regarding the uh, ICT, uh, the ICT activities in uh, the Ground Zero area? And, Director, kung ano plano nyo? Yes, sir. Para sa susunod na meeting, iba naman pag-usapan natin, hindi yung paikot-ikot tayo. Uh, yes, sir, we will comply po. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Imano. Uh, meron lang akong, ano, dyan sa presentation nyo kanina. Yung building na yun, when, when was it turned over to the local government? Yung yung office na yun? Uh, it, was, it was not turned over to the local government. Uh, bali, from the contractor side po, na-turn over from the ICT. Ah, from the ICT. Oo, oh, sa so, the ICT po na-turn over. From pinabid ng the ICT yun, then... After natapos ng contractor, na-turn over po sa atin. Yes, but when was the building uh, finished? October 20, 2022 po. So there's no turnover after you have received that from the ICT? Uh, wala po nila na-turn over. Meron po sa nung May 2023. So which agency are supposed to handle that and maintain that building? The ICT po. Kayo? Yes, sir. Oh, kasi kanina, tinanong din ni Congressman ano, Imano, sabi niya, ba't walang tao? Uh, main reason, sir, kasi hindi pa in-place yeah, yung ILO. Yes, hindi pa nakabalik. But what about the supplies that you procured? Hindi pa nagagamit, baka masira yun. Nasa, yeah, yes, sir, nasa Kwan po siya. Nasa provincial office po natin sa Marawi City. Meron mm -hmm. po tayong sisting na provincial office doon. 
Sigurado kayo din masisira kasi sayang yung pera ng ginastos niyo diyan. Naka-well kept yeah. naman po siya, sir eh. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, yung sa IT equipment sir, kasama po diyan yung mga computer units, the furnitures. Then mga lead TV, yan po yung needed para sa DTC. Aside pa kasi sa building, i-house niya yung digital Digital Transformation Center and yung IT equipment. That, ha? Yung mga... Anyway, how much, yes, po, how much to... Kasi may nakita kung ano eh, for the completion of your projects there in Maa, you still need how many funds uh, as ASEC? Alam, parang present mo, no? Uh, yung... Yes? How many, how many, how much money does the ICT need in order for them to complete? Uh, wal wala siya doon yung DICT, sir. Oh, wala? Wala, sir. Oh, wala. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, sir. Yung DICT... Uh, meron silang pondo na ida-download ng NHA yes. na ina-arrange pa nila ngayon. So you're you're already uh, accomplished 82% of your projected ano? So uh, fiber infra? optic pala po 'yun sa sir. Fiber ah. optic na project ah, fiber po. Optics. But, yes sir. Yung sa building is 100% na kasi apat na components siya. Yeah, how many so uh, in for in these four components, how many actual projects, specific projects do you still have? remaining remaining po uh, yung sa tower po kung, uh, yung communication tower then oh, yung sa delivery ng can you, bandwidth can you also submit that yes po sir we will comply okay. po okay. any members wish to ano uh, no before we proceed okay thank you DICT thank you Best po sir stay ha medyo maaga pa ano yes po sir <laughs> so next to present is uh, the sud please uh, director Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, Congress uh, uh, representatives. Good afternoon, Paul. Okay. So I'm here to present the Department of Human Settlement So to the House Committee on Monopoly Rehabilitation and Victims' Compensation. Okay, next slide, please. On my presentation will be the status of temporary shelters and permanent shelters Issues of concerns and way forward. Next. Okay. <laughs> okay. So for the status of transitory, we have um, um on Second Songan, we have uh, 1052 and it is currently occupied um on the same number. So lahat ito na na occupied na. So Second Songan 88, um 300 occupied na rin siya. Sa so Lake View, ito yung Bunga, Bunga nga, is 1.5. Uh, Roragos, uh, 350. Sa so Dulay, 430. Sa so Patani, 270. And uh, yung subtotal ng energy is 3,902. Sa so Development Partners is uh, 1,114. So ang uh, current issue dito sa transitory is yung uh, tubig na orang stable. So... And then um, starting January 2024, yung bill ng electricity will no longer be shouldered by NHA. So sila na yung magbabayad. Next slide, please. Okay, Wait, this... Magbabayad yung, yung, yung occupant. Yung occupant na, sir. So hindi na, before uh, NHA is shouldering it, uh, pero as uh, starting January this year, uh, yung occupant na po magbabayad. Okay, so sa NHA... Um, this is part of the presentation of uh, NSA with my uh, colleague here. Uh, I will skip this one and uh, he will discuss this in details. Next slide, please. Okay, so for NHA, ang, uh, ang mga issues nila, uh, just to apprise the good uh, chairperson and the representatives, um, they are awaiting for the list of beneficiaries ng mga Marawi City LDU for permanent shelters. Uh, sa barangay Kilala at Vidongan. Provision of water and power supply still persist in the temporary and permanent. And um, reports of squatters occupying the housing units. Next slide, please. Okay, so itong uh, permanent shelters. Okay, it's not on my side. Okay, I'm going to go to Okay, so we have, uh, uh, on Kilala, we have a uh, targeted uh, 250. Uh, and um, Shapsi uh, had built uh, 
250 and awarded the same to the um, recipients. On Gadongan, we have 50 and uh, likewise it's all, all awarded. On Barangay Kilala, we have 33 is all awarded. And Dulay West, we have 109, all are awarded. Dulay Proper, we have 120, all are awarded. And Patani with, and with uh, 438 and all are awarded. Okay, um, for now, uh, I'll turn, next slide please. Okay, I'll turn over the floor to NHA uh, for the presentation details of the projects. NHA. NHA, please. Uh, ano lang, before NHA po, gusto ko lang pabalikan yung ano, yung sinabi mong starting January of this year, Yes, sir. the, the co-occupant will be the one shol uh, to shoulder the ano, yes, bills, sir. no? Mga electric bills. Yes, sir. You mean permanent shelter or yung temporary? Uh, temporary po. Even yung temporary? Oh. Wala pa namang permanent, may na award na ba? Wala, wala pa nga. Pa. Yes, sir. Thank you. NHA. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ma'am. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, we're waiting for that. Yes, yeah, can we start asking the issue while they're preparing? Yes. Uh, because I was, uh, you know, water is the most basic commodity in every home. So uh, one of the challenges was water and uh, was told that uh, Lua is here. Yes, sir. W what can we do to help them with the challenges of water? What are the, cha actually, what are the challenges of water? Uh, yes, I'm uh, Congressman Imano. Uh, actually, I, there are so many questions regarding <laughs> water. Can can I, can I humbly request okay. that? I, I yield to the wisdom. Yeah, I, 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 I yield because to the wisdom of the chair. After NHA will okay, proceed. Okay. I, I yield, I yield. Yes, okay. Thank you. NHA? Uh, good afternoon, sirs. Uh, Ma'am, next slide. Uh, this is the status as of March 14, 2024. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll start with the establishment of NHA of 18 community facilities in our permanent shelter project. Uh, out of the 18, uh, five has already been uh, finally accepted, uh, and this will be for turned over to the LGU with nine for final acceptance an eventual turnover to LGU on second quarter of this year and the remaining four uh, community facilities uh, will be turned over to LGU on the third quarter of this year, sir. So that would complete the, all 18 community facilities. So yung naiwan na lang po yung tatlong school building at isang covered court which will be completed by third quarter and eventually turn over to LGU the same uh, the same period sir. Uh, next. These are the pictures of the completed community facilities. All of this will be turned over to the city government of Marawi. And this will benefit the 1,500, expected 1,500 uh, occupants of the permanent shelter. Next slide. Next. So we have police outposts, health centers, daycare centers, uh, elementary school buildings, secondary school buildings, livelihood centers. Next slide. So may mga daycare din tayo and material recovery facility. Pero Next. wala pang tao dyan, hindi pa nagagamit yan, no? Ah, uh, for turnover pa lang siya, sir. Ah? For turnover. Pro five projects will be turnover within first quarter, okay. nine in second quarter, and the remaining four by third quarter. Okay. So everything uh, will be utilized within the year. Okay. Next slide, please. So may mga elementary school buildings, may livelihood buildings, and... Uh, all of this uh, hopefully will be uh, utilized within the year. Next slide. Next slide. 
Trust to our permanent shelters. The expected 1,500 units. Next. Uh, we are only, uh, there is only 300 ongoing. However, uh, they are uh, they are practically suspended because uh, the remaining tranche of funds has been held in abeyance by NHA pending the submission of the local government unit of the status of receipts and disbursement as required. Yes, sir. So the moment uh, the funds, uh, the final tranches are released to the city government and the provincial government, then uh, we expect the same to be completed, sir. Why are why are these funds uh, uh, to be you know, uh, to be transferred? To be downloaded, to sir, be downloaded to the sorry. province to and to the city. Sila yung implementing agency. Yes, sir. Sila yung implementing agency. Okay. Next slide. So ito po yung pictures ng uh, permanent shelter project natin. Yung mga bago dyan, sir, yung mga community community facilities lang. Next slide. Uh, for everybody's, ano, uh, the 1,500 units is 750 po yung ginagawa ng province at 750 units yung sa city government. Next slide. So these are the other projects for approval of the NHA board. Slide, please. Uh, yung resolution of three property, no, uh, uh, resolution of uh, menor property uh, claims lang, uh, inaayos lang namin, sir. Uh, we're just awaiting the appraisal report in order to uh, effect resolution of the same. These are affecting the permanent shelter project. Then, of course, we have two pending projects for our sharers and renters. Uh, medyo nakalimutan lang sila konti, sir, uh, because this has been the clamor of our sharers and renters uh, still occupying transis transitional shelters. So they are requesting that we provide units for them. So we are, ex we are uh, planning to generate 100 units in Barangay Patani which we will call as Ranao Torogan Phase 1 and another in an NHA property which has an area of 7,000 square meters in Barangay Papandayan to generate 50 units. So this would total around 150 for our sharers and renters. Next slide. So ito po yung sa uh, Barangay Patani, three bedrooms. Then yung next slide. Ito po yung sa Barangay Papandayan na uh, two-story uh, row house. Uh, that completes my report, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, okay, I have a few questions to ano, NHA. Doon sa, <clears throat> doon sa 534 na permanent housing units, sa may um, bato in the area, Barangay Gadungan, kilala? Yes, sir. Uh -oh. Uh, ano tong sinabi na NHA is waiting for the waiting for the Mar LGU Marawi for the submission of names of qualified beneficiaries. Big sabihin, wala pa kayong naibibigay na qualified uh, beneficiary? No, sir. Uh, the office of the city mayor will be yeah, the wala pa silang one to, Yes, sir. Ito? Yun pa. Uh, they are uh, giving us in tranches. Yung the last time na nabigyan kami is uh, 95 names uh, uh i think the la, the other week sir so i meaning to say out of the 534 units only 95 have been occupied no sir uh out of the 534 may mga 300 na lang na hindi occupied naghihintay kami sir ng names okay when was this ano this facility turned over to ano marawi LGU. The permanent shelter, sir? Yes, in Gadungan, Kilala. Uh, no, sir. We turn over only if by completed units. Ah, by completed. Uh -huh. oh. we, compl we, we directly award it to the beneficiaries the Don't moment have, we are given names. Don't you have problems of uh, illegal settlers? Yes, we are encountering problems, sir, but we are regularly uh, monitoring and regularly talking to them that these projects are not for them. That's why we are going to generate uh, 150 housing units for our sellers and renters. So have you communicated this with the city government? Yes, sir. 
may mga ano ba diyan may mga at least uh, security ano yes yeah, sir yung task, task force marawi is assisting us in our endeavors sir uh what was the reason why lg marawi uh, ano kasi sabi mo it's they haven't completed their submission of ano no ano daw uh, medyo uh, may may sarili silang processor so there is a LIAC, uh, the local inter, inter agency committee as to the selection of beneficiaries and this is endorsed to the office of the city mayor and the city mayor is uh nag endorse din siya based on the list uh, uh, given by LIAC. so we are waiting for the list from the office of the mayor sir okay there's also a site uh, at Barangay Patani. So the issue here is the payment to the landowner of the site of the permanent shelter project completion of the land development. What's the what's the issue there? Uh, we are just waiting the for the appraisal landowner. report, sir, before we finally before we uh, effect payment of the property. Uh, in Intel and I mean appraisal report, sir, under procurement process ba. Yung ano, pero this is a private lot. Private lot, sir. So the, currently what you're doing is ano. Under lease or no, sir. We have not yet developed the area, sir. Ah, wala pa. Ah, wala pa, sir. So you haven't constructed a single unit. Yes, sir. But you have already identified the agency, limiting agency. Ah, ka kami ang okay, I mean, National housing na this time ang mag-implement. Have you already identified? Mm, not, not yet, sir. But, but NHA will be the one to ano. Yes, sir. To construct. Yes, sir. When do we expect this to ano? Ah, uh, we happen? expect this by third quarter, sir. This is based on still your on your master plan. Uh, no, not anymore, sir. This is this additional is a project. Yes, your, sir. Ano? This is in in response to the needs of the sharers and renters that we have talked to in uh, transitional shelters. Uh, usually, sir, sila karamihan sa kanila sila yung nag pumapasok sa ating permanent shelter. Hindi na sila makapaghintay because there is no project for units, them. How many units are we expecting for NHA to to construct? One hundred fifty, sir. One hundred in Patani, fifty in Papandayan. Okay, but that that would also be would that still be you know subject to the completion of submission of LG Marawi for the for the not anymore, sir. The legitimate, you know. Not anymore, sir. But we will be consulting uh, okay, with the City Housing Board of Marawi. So now longer the ano not not similar with Gadungan Kilala. Not, sim not similar, the... sir. Not similar. Okay, so kayo ang mag-identify ng ano ng beneficiary kung yes, sir. Kung... Based on the master list uh, of uh, occupants of transitional shelters, sila so yung priorities. Yes, sir. The, bit... the city, the, we will request from the city government, sir. They and have the, the record. We have here Mr. Sadik Muhammad. I believe he's also, uh, he's also representing Marawi. Can you submit, can we request LGU Marawi to submit the list of beneficiaries as mentioned by Engineer Al Quarizmi? Okay, pangalan mo. Indanan? Sir? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, actually, we can uh, yes. immediately we can uh, inform the mayor to submit. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, we'll uh, we will write the mayor, so uh, we would have also have the list of uh, the beneficiaries, no? Because permanent shelter city. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Thank you very much. So not not similar with ano ha gadungan na ang yes. kayo la may listahan kayo. Okay. May ano siya nabi mo may board kayo na ano? na para ma-identify yung mga eligible bin, eligible ay ah, i-endorse namin sa Marawi City Housing Board okay. sir para mapag-usapan ng maayos at mahimay yung listahan okay so the same ito temporary shelter naman in Buganga sa Gunsungan in Rurugagos there seems to be an expiration of the use of land in this area so Mara, the city government is negotiating with the land owners for the extension of the use of land what does uh, NHA ano, uh, do in terms of, you know, the expiration of the LGU? Private ito, no? So there's an ex there's an expiration of the term of ano? Uh, the usually, of the sir, land. it's the city government and the provincial government which are uh, negotiating and talking with the landowners. Uh, so ang NHA po yung facilities lang and we have already turned that over to the city government, city government. yung transitional shelter facilities sir okay so ano yung pinag-aanuhan dito so you, you, you are not in you not not authority privy. to speak about this yes sir uh, we are not privy to the negotiation with the landowners how many but you know how many tenants here uh, 3,902 tenants okay. sir 3,902 as far as NHA is concerned sir ang dami yes sir 
So, ibig sabihin, displaced sila tapos may possible displacement na naman sila. Uh, kung hindi sila makabalik sa MAA, sir, uh, I know, but they can used, go to PRRD. Ay, the, most yeah. of them are waiting for the compensation, sir, from the MCB. No, but, you know, we should not rely on compensation because that would still be subject uh, based on whatever is Congress and the Senate. Yeah, well, if fund, on, if fund can be made available, sir, uh, we can provide additional permanent shelter projects outside of the uh, uh, mas TFM concerns. Mas-pasan itong mga permanent shelters ninyo kasi ma-displace ulit sila. Yes, sir. Kaya nga, uh, apurahin namin yung initial 150, sir. And kung kulang pa, then we will again uh, generate more units. Okay, I want a report on this. Baba, Baba Sadik, uh, can you, what, what's the status of the negotiation? Uh, actually, what happened is uh, we keep on uh, negotiating with the owners to extend and then we will have ample time once the permanent shelters are completed. Then uh, once the negotiation with the private owners will expire, that's the time we, we can let them move on to uh, move to the uh, permanent, permanent shelter. But so we keep on negotiating. I hope that uh, uh, this will this will continue. Yeah. yeah. But NHA, prior to your uh, turn, prior to turning turning over this uh, no, facility to LGU. Uh, how long was the ano, how long was the agreement uh, before the expiration? How long can the can they can the land be used for temporary shelter? Uh, usually, sir, it's five years. So it started uh, when? Actually, nag expired na. Uh, it expired last 2023. And uh, in fairness to the landowners, they are also uh, extending the use. Of the other properties. I want, uh, but, but I want a uh, complete report on this. Uh, possibly, uh, uh, so can you what what can you in, in give us more information regarding this? Ano yung status na po nito? Di ba uh, sila wala na ba silang negotiation or may napaalis na ba? Uh, wala naman siya napaalis. It's on a yearly basis. Katulad last year, uh, yung sa Roro Gagos, uh, lumabas yung issue na pinapaalis na. But the LGU was able to uh, negotiate for the extension one year. So we anticipate na somewhere in the th third quarter, uh, kailangan uling negotiate with the uh, landowners. Ang nag negotiate naman is the LGU. Kung, so, kung I believe kung nag expire yung land use, big sabihin, pwede nang mag, ano, mag request ng renta yung may ari, di ba? Yun ang ibang, uh, meron yatang uh, landowner na nag resort to rent getting rent from the uh, uh, from each unit occupants. Of, 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 uh, yung ibang occupants naman, dahil malit lang naman yung rent, pumayag na sila. Okay. But those who can, let's say, assuming that there are families there uh, who, for whatever reason, cannot pay for the rent, who would so shoulder this? LGU or since it has been turned over to the LGU? Yes, sir. actually, the, the primary uh, uh, agency na nag-aasikaso na ito is the LGU. LGU. Uh, kasi na, sila na yung nagiging administrator ng mga uh, transitory sites. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Asik. So we expect how many per percent po yung hindi natapos nyo po sa NHA? Yung completion nyo po? How many? Can you sub submit na lang po yung, re yung ano nyo? Ha? Yes, sir. We will submit the report. Congressman Bambi, you have follow-up questions? Okay. Ay, sana. Okay. Sige. Thank you. So, Oh, yes, Mr. Chair, we'd like to uh, uh, acknowledge Chapsi for their presentation. Engineer Felman Gilbang. Yes, sir. Isang mapagpalang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, may respect to the chair and to the member of this uh, committee. Ang uh, bibigyan ko lang ng background, konti. Bakit nagkaroon ng uh, Social Housing Finance Corporation papil dito sa Marawi Rehabilitation? May joint uh, agreement ho kami ng UN Habitat. Sila ang gagawa ng bahay at ang Social Housing Finance Corporation po, we were responsible on the purchase of land and development of the site. So, yun po ang uh, naging uh, kasunduan namin. Ang Social Housing po ay... Uh, next slide please. The outline of my presentation, Mr. Chair and member and honorable member of this committee is like this. Uh, sa lahat acquisition po, uh, bumili ho ang uh, Social Housing Finance Corporation ng pagtatayuan natin ng uh, housing, permanent housing sa 
Marawi tinawag ho namin na phase 1 yung nasa Dulay at phase 2 po yung nasa Dulay West at phase 3 po yung nasa Patani. Pina tinawag din ho ng community association uh, yung phase 1 uh, sa Hadiya, yung phase 2 po ay Darussalam at yung phase 3 po ay Norsalam Village. Then uh, number 2 po sa presentation is the status of the road right to way kasi po uh, Nung binili ho namin na uh, nung binili natin yung lupa sa phase 1 hadiya phase 2 Darussalam ay uh, wala pong uh, tinatawag natin na nung nagsurvey kami wala pa hong nag-claim -cla na yung right of way is available from the uh, access road pero nung ginawa na ho natin meron na hong nag-claim -cla na sa kanila raw yung lupa na dinadaanan so number 2 po yon uh, that I will be going to discuss the status number 3 your honorable uh, is the status of site development both for uh, Marawi 1, ay, for uh, phase 1, phase 2, and phase 3. At doon po sa phase 3, uh, Mr. Chair, an honorable member of this uh, committee, noon hong nakita namin na na-implement na namin yung construction ng uh, site development, that is the uh, construction of roads, drainage, at uh, yung installation na ho ng housing units, permanent shelter by UN Habitat, nakita ho namin kasi yung uh, uh, terrain of the uh, location of Patani is uh, medyo meron ho siyang mga cut and fill that to be done. So, nakita namin na dapat to maglagay tayo ng riprap to support, uh, prevent erosion, further erosion of the uh, uh, sides of the shelter, yun mga bahay. So, meron ho kami, kung mapapasin ninyo uh, the, the, the previous slide, please. Mapapansin po ninyo, meron ho kami doon sa dulo, sa dulo ng Marawi Shelter Pastry, meron ho kaming additional uh, works. Naka, noon ho sa Task Force Bangon Marawi, Mr. Chair, ay nakita namin noong uh, kailangan na necessity, necessity na lagyan natin ng riprap. So, humingi ho kami ng budget for the growth and riprap, Mr. Chair. And yun ho nga, uh, ilalagay natin tubig. Uh, it is a centralized deep well kailangan hong patakbuhin ng submersible pump. So, kailangan ho namin ng, according to Lasoreco, kailangan ho magpapatakbo ng 5 horsepower na submersible pump is 3-phase na kuryente. Uh, wala hong available na 3-phase line doon sa harap mismo na access road going to the Patani. So, we ask uh, Task Force Bangon Marawi to finance the installation of the 3-phase from Abra Road, Abra road going po sa Patani site. Yung po yung uh, number letter B doon sa ating additional works. Next slide please. Uh, ito po yung uh, so, issues single and concerns. Single phase pa. Single, single phase pa po yung uh, nandun sa available na sa, sa, sa mismong subdivision po ng Patani, Mr. Chair. Ito na po yung uh, issues and concern At uh, I want to thank, gusto ko po magpasalamat sa inyo, Mr. Chair. Dahil uh, noong previous nating meeting, uh, may problem may problem ho kami sa DBM na uh, yeah, uh, sa tulong po ninyo and uh, Asik Castro and Director uh, Raymond uh, ng Disyud ay uh, nagbigay na ho ng pahintulot ang DBM na gamitin na namin pambayad sa lupa yung 29 million na titira. At sabi ho nila, sa sulat nila sa amin, go, pwede pa ho yan. So, uh, Masaya rin ho kami na ipaalam sa inyo na we already processed the payment of the 20% na ang lupa doon sa patani, doon sa mga landowner. Kasi yun ho ang isang naging hadlang noon na pinatigil ng landowner yung uh, uh, paggawa ng construction ng site development because hindi sila nababayaran. So nabayaran na ho natin yung uh, 20% muli. Aside from the 30% that we have already paid to the landowner, the second payment, uh, the second billing or second payment for the land uh, amounting to 20% of the 29 million was already uh, uh, on process po yung payment niya, Mr. Chair, doon sa opisina natin. At hopefully this week makukuha na ho yung check -in for the payment. Okay, next slide please. Uh, ang status po ng lot acquisition natin, both po sa phase 1 and phase 2, yun hong phase 1, hadiya, uh, nabayaran na ho natin all, lahat po ng uh, transes as approved by the board kung paano natin babayaran. First trans, second trans, at yung final payment po nila, maibibigay po natin once the title was transferred to the name of Shopsy. 
sa kahon natin sila babayaran. But it's uh, still in the process, Mr. Chair and member of this board, of this committee, that uh, the transfer of title po ay medyo nagkakaroon lang ng mga konting uh, problema. Lalong-lalo na ho ngayon, yung uh, years na si uh, Laksama na ampuan, namatay po eh. Uh, namatay na siya. So, yung kanyang anak ang nag-take over para maayos yung mga transfer, uh, state tax, like uh, mga babayaran ho niya para matransfer na ho yung title in the name of the uh, Shopsy. Kaso, siyempre, mayroon hong mga kwan na Mr. Chair, eh, mayroon mga, yung mga kamag-anak, uh, inaayos pa ho nila. Ano yung patani? No, sir. Uh, yung hadiya, sir. Yung sa Dilay. Sa Dilay. Apo. Sino-sinong mayari, si? Ah... Uh, Ampuan, uh, um, nakalimutan ko siya first name, pero patay na ho yung tatay niya. Sabi mo, Laksama na? Apo. Siya, si Lax. dating administrator na Apo, si ng LGU. Si Uncle Lax. Apo, si Lax. Sila may arin ulo pa. Apo. Tapos, so, uh, Mr. Chair, yung, uh, yung Darussalam, that is uh, 13 hectares po ang original niyan. Pag-aari naman po yan ng mga Wahab Rudy. Now, nung nagkakanda ko kami ng sorbe dyan, wala pa hong claimant. Nung nagdi-develop na ho at naglalagay na kami ng mga muhon para sa 13 hectares, dumating na ho yung claimant. Adelaide? Apo. Make, eh, sure nag... you, make sure you have all the ano, ah, proper documents kasi that's, of, yes, sir. that's heavily titled. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, we, have tit we have title dyan, sir, na pag-aari ng Wahab Rudy. Eh, kaso namatay na ho yung Wahab Rudy. Ang kausap namin dito yung anak niya, si Paisal Rudy. Nung nagsosorbe na ho kami at mag start ng construction, may dumating na ho 5 claimant. Eh nakapag-down na ho kami ng 20% doon sa sa lupa. So, ang dinevelop na lang namin, sir. Is... Bakit kayo nagda-down ng amount na, na wala pa kayong ano? Hindi pa nila na na-prove yung kanilang ownership. Lahat, sir. Uh, tapos na po yan. Napaproban na ho namin sa board. We presented already the due diligence with regards to the title. Examination of the title with the re registry of deeds. Three title, three title back po ang kinandak ng Shopsy. At uh, nagkandak na rin ho kami ng survey. Lahat na po, tapos na po yung uh, dapat uh, makita namin sa authenticity na isang property. When we presented to the board po, kompleto po yung aming presentation. So na-approve po. And the board of directors for uh, social housing is approved also the transits of how to pay. Now, nung binayaran na ho namin ng 20%, Madam Chair, ay Mr. Chair, ay nag-start na ho kami ng uh, surveying para sa construction na ng uh, uh, site development. Dumating na po yung five claimants. Kanila raw ito, kanya. Eh, sabi namin, nakiusap na lang ho kami doon sa mga kwan na we will develop yung corresponding na bayad namin na 20% doon sa area na i-develop namin. So, ang na-develop namin dyan sa site na yan, sir, is around 2.2 hectares, which is corresponding po doon sa 20% na binayad namin. So bayad na ho tayo sa sa kuan sa phase 2 sa per se kung, uh, kung pagbabasihan natin yung area na dinevelop namin bayad na ho tayo ng full payment. Now the issue po is like uh, the same po nung uh, hadiya yung phase 1 na we are uh, in the process of transferring the title. Dito po sa delay sa phase 2 si segregate po natin sa mother title kasi malaki po yun ay eh, 13 hectares. So si segregate po natin na uh, Mr. Chair yung 2.2 then uh -huh. transfer to the So how many how many projects do you have? Tatlo. Tatlo lang po. So ito yung second phase. Yes sir. Yung Patani and then Delay and then what's the next one? Ah uh, Delay proper and Delay West. Delay West. Uh, yes sir. How many units? 109 on uh, phase 1 Hadia. Ah uh, 120 on phase 2 uh, Darussalam and 438 on Patani. Yung sa ano yung phase 3 nag napaka nakapayat na rin kayo. Yung po yung uh, sinabi namin sa inyo sir kanina na nagpapasalamat kami sa inyo okay. dahil uh, wala namang problema sa mga ano sa mga overlapping claims. Wala po, wala po sa patani. So phase 2 lang kayo nagka problema. Yes sir. How many units ang phase 2? 120. 120. Occupied na po at tapos na rin tayo. Tapos na. Ah, Turn over na kayo. Yes sir. Okay. So ang problema mo lang is patani. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Chair, yes, very short, just a clarificatory question. Mr. Chair, usually when we, the, the first 13 hectares that you paid 20% yes, down sir. payment, had tight, had a title, yes, sir. Yeah, description, yes, sir. and uh, 
uh, you published it before you purchased it? Uh, actually, sir, ganito. Meron ho kaming project steering committee headed by the LGU mayor. Now, uh, with UN Habitat members, doon ho namin pre-present sa kanila yung aming uh, uh, due diligence na conducted. Then, uh, if uh, the uh, project steering committee uh, approved at uh, nakita na ho nila yung aming presentation or publication, whatever, sir, na nagpupunta kami ron, saka pa lang ho namin na, saka na pa lang nila authorize po to presentation sa board ng South okay. So, tapos sinabi mo, nung magbayad kayo, tapos may lumabas na limang claimant. Nung uh, nagsisimula na kami. Uh, nung mag yes, yes, sir. So, nung yung claimant naman, anong daladala nila? <laughs> Di ba parang, yeah, if I want to claim my property, I must have a document also. And challenge your document. Yes, correct, sir. So, anong hawak ng lima? That's supposed to be, sir. Uh, but uh, it's a different, sir. Yung uh, punta yung taga DNR doon para mag-andak ng MGB, hinabol ho kami ng, ng uh, itak at saka martilyo. But I, I thought that the local government unit is working with you. If the local government is we, we working with you, then supposedly the local government will also support and defend Yes, sir. Those national agencies that are implementing projects. Correct, sir. So I, we have here Mr. Muhammad from Marawi City LGU. Uh, yes. Sir, apparently, uh, Shapsi, who actually is trying to help the residents of Marawi, purchased a lot. And the challenge was the lot that they purchased, they even paid 20%. There were five claimants. And when they tried to develop it, I think... Welcome, Bebulo. And, and uh, they, they were challenged by uh, the five claimants, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Again, uh, actually, what we do is, although we support uh, so much, uh, itong Shapsi, but uh, when it comes to uh, land conflict, immediately we ref once we have it validated by our assessor's office, and uh, it is beyond our uh, limit. We have to refer it. We advise them to go to the court. It should be a court decision so that uh, this dispute will be uh, resolved by the yeah. court. court. Court, sir, if the five claimants have documents, then they can go to court. But apparently, they were not shown documents. Apparently, they were threatened. It, it's not about documents, sir. So it's actually the support of uh, the Philippine National Police and the LGU. From what I understood from the report of Mr. Hilbang. Actually, sir, we uh, normally we advise because we experience this, yung conflict, yung mga conflict ng uh, claimants. And uh, there are situations uh, in where it is beyond the, uh, the power of the uh, city government. To resolve this conflict. Yes, sir. I understand because oh, I was uh, I was a local chief executive. Yeah. I was mayor also for nine years. Yes, yes, I was yes. governor for nine years. I can only allow when I was mayor. I can only allow challenges and claims if they have documents. Even 1940, 1930 document there they can challenge. But if they challenge and threaten. I think it's the local government and the Philippine National Police job to protect so that they will be able to finish their project. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Actually, we are supporting the uh, uh, the implementing agency. Yeah, apparently, sir, of the 13 actors, they'll only be able to develop two. Sure. Yes, uh, <coughs> Secretary Felix. So the question uh, now is, uh, yes. pero before you answer, no? Pero yung ano nyo po, yung, pag, yung engineer Kilban, yung mismong binayaran ninyo, yun yung na-approve sa board ninyo, meron na siyang titulo. May titulo na. Yes, sir. So let's assume that, ano? Wait, may title po yung title. Title na siya, tapos na, no? So, nung nag-start, tsaka dumating yung ano? Opo. Okay. Actually, Mr. Chair... Para may... Maintindihan namin, apa, no? we're right... Actually, there. Mr. Chair, uh, bago po yung... Uh, kwa na yun, nung may claimant na nag... Uh, pumunta na huron, sumugod sa site, uh, lumapit ho kami sa barangay, barangay chairman. And the barangay chairman advised us that uh, uh, the claimant is... Uh, this is allegation uh, without proof. As uh, Congressman uh, Imano told us, uh, told us that... It should be proof uh, with uh, it should be with evidence of title, the ownership. Uh, apparently, uh, this is uh, just a uh, 
uh, the Kapai, Kapai LGU, and other uh, mayors uh, surrounding that area are uh, some of the relatives are the claimants. So we have a hard time na communicating or uh, uh, asking for a uh, court. Kasi parang iba ho dun sa lugar na yun. Siyempre, from Luzon ho ako. Uh, I was assigned lang doon. Parang iba, sir. Okay, okay. Turning, uh, so ito bang as a uh, kaso, dagdag ko lang sa question ni Congressman Bambi. Kasi ang delay, well, medyo mal mahaba yan eh. Saan area yan na part? Sa may Kapay o sa Pamarawi na? Marawi, sir. Uh, dalawa yun. Dulay, Dulay West and Dulay Proper. So what, what happened was, usually, may mga po lumalapit na may claimants, uh, different types of documents ang hawak nila. Yung iba may, may titulo pa nga. No? But ang nagiging ano namin kasi, uh, if we will challenge them or uh, uh, hindi namin sila papansinin, uh, magkakaproblema in the future. So ang nangyayari sa amin, uh, to, kasi kailangan namin i-implement, uh, meron kami timeline, so we would rather look for another land rather than uh, pursue that chosen land at magkakaroon kami ng problema later on. Kasi yung iba, definitely may, may mga papeles naman yung iba. Not all na lumalapit walang papeles. Yung iba may papeles. Kaya lang different types. Merong land title, meron yung unang-unang papeles pa na awak. So yung nagiging option was, katulad yung sa ano, lumiit yung uh, lupa doon, naghanap ng ibang lupa na lang. Kasi ayaw namin mas stuck up doon sa uh, negotiation doon sa ano, plus may konting security problem pa. So, uh, ang naging uh, kaudsunduan sa steering committee to, to look for another land and settle with a smaller land na napag-usapan. So, nabawi naman yung initial deposit. Uh, kaya lang, mas maliit yung lupa. Tapos, nagkuha kami ng iba sa patanig. Hindi naman nalugi yung gobyerno doon because yung binayad natin, may corresponding lupa naman na nakuha. Hindi lang ganun kalaki. Sana gusto namin mag malaki para kukonti lang yung site. But since nagkaroon ng problema, and usually the case is, pag nagsimula ka na, doon lalabas yung other claimants. Uh, tactic ito nakita ko eh, kasi para mapipilitan ka ng makipag-negotiate sa kanila dahil you have already invested time, may konting money na rin. So pag lumapit sila, mapilitan ka talagang kausapin sila kasi uh, meron ka ng perang na i-down. Fortunately, yung na-i-down na pera, may, naging kar may saktong lupa na nakuha. So, hindi naman tayo nalubi doon. But we had to look for another place for the rest of the housing units. That we... But uh, despite that, uh, Asik, uh, Pe uh, Asik Felix, even if sabi natin na hindi nalubi yung gobyerno, pero it causes delay. At the end of the day, it would still be uh, an additional expense on the part of the government dahil ang materials ngayon, tumataas din ang presyo. So, habang nagdi-delay, nagko-cost din yan ng additional ano. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, ako tingin ko lugi gobyerno. Eh. Kasi kahit na 2 hectares out of the 13, but the road network you will build. The infra going there, you will build. The water system, the power. So lugi pa rin gobyerno dun, sir. Oh, kasi di ba, uh, Alimbawa, papasok doon isang hektare, ay isang kilometro. So you paid that. Pagda kasi, you will be you will uh, be delivering services to 13 hectares uh, of beneficiaries. Tapos pagdating doon, isang kilometro para dalawang hektare, dalawang hektare yan na beneficiaries lang. Lugi pa rin. I yes, want sir. to ano, I want to do we have the ALG here? The ALG? The ALG. The ALG. May, uh, may anecdote sila? So, Mr. Chair, uh, aside from DILG, if I may suggest, because, you know, for, for different departments, Mr. Chair, tapos different uh, forms of uh, report. So, di ba ang hirap, halimbawa, uh, for, for, I think this is um, for uh, NHA, or uh, shop si ba to, NHA. Tapos nakalagay dito, Mr. Chair, halimbawa, uh, ito, ito. Uh, no, uh, item 001, construction of uh, one unit classroom, cost, contractor, tapos 53%. Ang wala nga nilagay dito, date, wa, kailan sinimulan to? Kailan sinimulan to? Uh, it, 
ano sir uh, December 2022 December 2022 Yes sir Nung status one, one unit three story 15 classroom December 2022 22 23 24 yeah, yung, yung other community facilities sir uh, yung No no sabay, sabay, I'm, I'm, talking sabay, of, I'm talking of item number one. Kailan sinimulan to? Yes sir, sabay-sabay yan lahat sir. Uh, it was bid October, it was awarded. Ah uh, mga March na pala 2023 March of 22. sir. 2023. 24 ngayon. Yes sir. Dalawang 20... taon na higit. Ano sir March 2023 ang notice to proceed. Na bid out siya December 2022. March 2023. Yes sir. 23 March, 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 April. Ilan buwan na? Uh, mag one year said uh, ngayong March sir. So uh, ano anong duration ng kontrata nito? Uh, 360 days sir. 361 year? Yes sir. So dapat patapos na to tapos 50% ano, na lang. siya ng suspension sir due to uh, na store rin kami dyan ng isang land owner sir. So we had to stop the negotiate uh, eh, and eh, na dito, sir. But ang galing sa remark no 52% bakit hindi mo sinabi na na store mo kayo ah. Uh -huh. Oo. Diba? Parang You, you know, asset. Are you leading them? Are, are you leading all of these departments? Um, the under I'm part of. Them. Yeah, can we have one format for all the projects that all the departments are implementing? Example, item or project name. Tapos project cost. Ait contractor. Tapos remarks. Tapos kait date started. Then dapat kau kela kau matapos and remarks naman. Parang ganun ka simple lang. So that every time, Mr. Chairman, so that every time that we will meet, we will only look at one document. Because eh, the last time that I was able to join the meeting, they, 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 they gave us another kind of report. So at least by parang gun chart tayo na ito, ito ngayon. So we will, be, we will know if the department are moving or not. I think it's easier for us to comprehend also. Because yeah. if, this is the only, if this is the only department or committee that we will be working on Mr. Chairman, I think we'll be able to read all the documents, but it would be easier asset to understand if there's only one format that you can tell all these departments here that we just submit only one format. So it would be easy for us to understand. And at least my date on last meeting, 52%, uh, 53%. So, alimbawa, papatawag tayo mga before uh, mga May, May or May, June, uh, Jul June, July. O tapos, pag nakita nyo na July, Malalaman natin kung sino natatrabaho rito sa mga department po rin. Kaya ginawa itong uh, committee na to kasi parang oversight eh. We, we, we look at the, uh, on how you're, how you're doing and the challenges. Halimbawa ngayon, I think when uh, hopefully when uh, next time we can invite the mayor that uh, uh, hey, ano, in-invite natin sila si, pati si governor but unfortunately meron silang mga ano doon so they sent their ano Oh. Uh, representative, but they also really, really, uh, so, so we we will know because you know if uh, mayor uh etong nabayaran ng 20% tapos dapat 13 hectares o matulungan niyo kami o hindi pag hindi tsaka tayo lipat pero baka si mayor sabi niya okay kaya ko ako usap na pero ayan for this meeting so at so, so hopefully by the following uh, committee meeting ayan so we we move uh, na we, we will know kasi sigurado para ako siyang, para siyang by, 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 by the next by next meeting wala na to ASEC eh diba? ang daming dokumento na tanggap namin dito to hanapin pa namin pero kung isang dokumento na lang ayan makita namin kung how are we we're, we're proceeding at what pace so maybe uh, parang ano parang Yeah, so, yun. Para siyang accomplishment tracker ba? Parang at yeah, least kami, yung, every ano, step of the way. Last, uh, ano, ipon first, yeah. Yan. Yeah. Yan. Yan. Oo. Kahit malapat pa siya. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chair, I noticed the ILG is here. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the reason why I asked the ILG is that there's a problem with security. I, this DILG is from... National. Can, can, you, can you identify himself, Mr. Chair? Attorney Mike. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the uh, committee. I'm Attorney Fabio from the uh, uh, Department of Interior Local Government, sir. And uh, uh, actually, sir, regarding the matter, I'm not uh, 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 privy regarding the, the subject matter. Uh, I was only sent uh, by the Secretary Abalos and uh, Alfredo Bayan, Undersecretary for Mindanao Affairs and Special Concerns. Why can't he come here? Uh, 
uh, he is currently attending a uh, equally important uh, uh, meeting, sir, in the... Mr. Chair, I think, the, the, the I, yeah, I, I think this is an insult to the committee and to the chairman. Yes, sir. You, you know, you, you were sent here, so you'll be able to answer questions. You oh. came... Yes, physically but you don't know anything and you cannot answer questions uh, ano pa kinabang namin sa iyo but pumunta ka pa rito uh, apologize sir uh, uh, your honor sir i i was only given the uh, the uh, information this uh, morning like uh, two hours before the committee committee hearing sir so i was just given the instruction sir to yeah pero an ano ano anong sinabi sa iyo pumunta ka doon upo upo ka doon uh, tapos ano sabi sa iyo uh, I was sent, sir, sir, so so that I could brief also the uh, the. Do you have a document uh, that says uh, that you will be sent here today? Uh, Do you have a written document? Yes, sir. Uh, there was a, a letter, memo. A memo, sir, to the secretary, uh, Abala, sir. A memo of, from the from the secretary asking Attorney Mike Mikael Fabio to come to the to 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 today's hearing. Uh, uh no, sir. Uh, there there was a a a a, a memo sent to the. Uh, uh, Secretary Abalos and then uh, Secretary also, Abalos sent a memo to uh it, it was forwarded to the uh, uh, office of the undersecretary for Mindanao Affairs, sir. Under it, just, and that is who? Uh Undersecretary Alfredo Bayan, sir. Alfredo Bayan po. So Al uh, Undersecretary Alfredo Bayan told you to come. I was instructed, sir, to attend instructed the, the verbally. Kung, to, to attend the committee hearing, sir. Kung, kung, kung Bambi, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Yusek, uh, ano yung pangalan mo? Bayan. Bayan uh, actually con confirmed his attendance in today's committee meeting. But instead, uh, he sent attorney Fabio. Uh, because, Asek, what's the participation of the ILG in all of this, in the universe of rehabilitation? Uh, they're part of the uh, subcommittee on uh, in order. peace, uh, exactly. what security, is... peace, and order. Yes, that's why this is connected with the concern of ano. Yes, sir. So, do you know anything? Wala uh, ka, I, I apologize, Sean. I don't have any uh, information regarding the the matter. Uh, how long you, how long have you been in the ILG, sir? With all due respect, sir. Uh, sorry. Okay. Last year. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Pero hirap naman siguro no na pupunta ka sa isang meeting tapos wala hindi na sinabing ito dalhin mo, ito yung pag-uusapan niyo. After sir, don't na receive po namin. Can you please uh, convey this message to you, Isaac? To please next time come. Otherwise, he is confirmed his attendance and yet he does not show. Yes, sir. Otherwise, I repeat. We will, uh, no, we will issue a show cause order. Kasi this is very important. This, ano, uh, and nakinarinig mo naman yung problema, may, may problema sa, ano, uh, vision order. And, you know, he's, yung mga, he's, being at, he's attending an equally important meeting. That's a convenient excuse. We've been hearing that ever since the time in which they visit. Lata lang ganon. But tell, uh, can you, ka, ano, tell uh, Just for the information of the committee, sir, eh? Uh, Under Secretary uh, Alfredo Abain, sir, is attending the ICCM and meeting, sir, sa PICC. As yeah, but moment. he should have sent somebody who is more knowledgeable. Yes, sir. See, with, it, kawawa ka naman. Yes, You're sir. being thrown to the lion's den na wala kang alam. Yes, sir. Okay. Understood, sir. But yes, sir. please take note of the concern, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Congressman Fortes, you want to say something? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I've been listening to uh, the various concerns. This is the first meeting I attended uh, as a member of this committee. I am from Luzon. I'm not even from Mindanao. Uh, but I have heard and read the uh, various ordeal uh, that the residents of Marawi went through because of that conflict. <clears throat> Eventually, the government came in with a promise of assistance and rehabilitation. And that was six, seven years ago. Currently, we are still faced with the challenge of rehabilitation. Mostly displaced residents are still crying out as displaced. Medyo nakakaawa naman po sila. We are lucky here in Luzon, wala kaming conflict na ganon. Sila naipit, these are civilians. And uh, my 
concern only here that we exert extra effort bilang mga kawanin ng gobyerno para naman matulungan sila. There is so much injustice. Uh, terminated na, functus officius na yung EO13. We now have EO14. And apparently there are only five national government agencies involved. Yung NHA, may I ask, wala na sa EO14 or na-absorb na, na ng BISUD? BISUD na po ang magiging ano, implementing agencies. Na-absorb na sila. Yes, sir. Okay. They are at the key shelter agency of BISUD, sir. Yung uh, Social Housing Finance Corporation, that is also under BISUD. Yes, sir. But, uh, you, you are a government-owned and controlled corporation under yes, BISUD also. Yes, sir. So, do, uh, Kasi uh, most of the rehabilitation processes on the housing displaced uh, residents, I think. Uh, the, the, the housing program is supposed to be a whole package like with uh, road lot, mm -hmm. electricity.
in the 2nd District of South Cotabato from Provincial Roads into National Roads by Representative Miguel. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 10155 declaring La Trinidad Benguet as the strawberry capital of the Philippines by Representative Yap Eric. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 10156 establishing the e-books for the Barangay Program by Representative Duterte. The Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 10157, expanding the coverage of the Senior Citizens Act by Representatives Mercado de Villa, Revilla Bryan, and Revilla Ramon Jolo. To the Committee on Senior Citizens. House Bill 10159, providing for the Magna Carta of Children by Representatives Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Yeda Marie, Marcos, Asidre, and Co. Angelica Natasha. To the Committee on Welfare of Children. Resolutions. House Resolution 1648, directing the Committee of Natural Resources to conduct an investigation on the construction of a resort near the Chocolate Hills in Bohol, a declared Global Geological Park by UNESCO and National Protected Landscape, by Representatives Brosas, Castro Franz, and Manuel. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1649, organizing the Philippines Argentina Parliamentarians Friendship Group by Representative Rodriguez Rufus. To the Committee on Interparliamentary Relations and Diplomacy. House Resolution 1651, calling for measures to protect seafarers from the ongoing attacks on commercial shipping in the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea, by Representative Salo, Plato, Olaso, Espares, De Jesus, and Colada. To the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. Communications, letter dated February 21, 2024 of the Bureau of Immigration Commissioner furnishing the House of Representatives with a copy of their 2023 Accomplishment Report. To the Committee on Justice. Letter dated February 23, 2024 of the Bureau of Corrections Director General submitting to the House a copy of their 2023 Accomplishment Report. To the Committee on Justice. Letters dated March 6 and 8, 2024 of the Acting Bank Officer 6, BSP Office of the General Counsel and Legal Services, transmitting to the House duly certified copies of certain BSP issuances. The Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries. Letter of the PIDEA Director General, submitting to the House a copy of their Operational Accomplishment and Assessment Report for January 2024. To the Committee on Dan Dangerous Drugs. Various communications submitted to the House by local chief executives and local government units relative to their posting and reporting requirements of the fund utilization and status of program project implementation of the local government support fund. To the Committee on Appropriations. Committee Reports. Committee Reports 1031, submitted by the Committees on Aquaculture and Fisheries Resources and Appropriations on House Bill 10158. Committee Report Numbers 1032 and 1033, submitted by the Committee on Housing and Urban Development on House Bill Numbers 10172 and 10173, respectively. Committee Report 1034, submitted by the Committees on Health, Appropriations, and Ways and Means on House Bill 10174. Committee Report 1035, submitted by the Committees on Women and Gender Equality and Appropriations on House Bill 10176. The Affirmation Committee Reports are all referred to the Committee on Rules. You are the leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration and third reading of House Bill Number 9936, copies of which were distributed to the members pursuant to the rules of the House. For this purpose, may I request the Secretary General to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there any objection? Chair is none. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill Number 9936, an act allowing the Department of Education the flexibility to determine the pedagogical approaches to be implemented in the basic education curriculum, amending for the purpose Section 5 of Republic Act Number 10533, otherwise known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Roll call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill Number 9936. Abalos, Abante, Abunda, Acharon, Asidre, 
Aco, Adion, Advincola, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arogancia, Asistio, Ataide, Omentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Bascub, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Biliones, Biron, Bolivia, Bondo, Bongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulutbegtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayunuy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro France, Castro Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalao, Co Angelica Natasha, Co Elizaldi, Co Pilar, Co Juanco Jaime Eduardo Mart, Co Juanco Mart, Colada, Coliantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cua, Quaresma, Dagoo, Dalipe, Dalog, Dayanghirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo Muhammad Kadid, Dimaporo City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Dohali, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Fariñas, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrel Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Fuentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garin, Gazataya, Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Aurelio, Gonzalez Neptali, Gonzalez Sandro, Coriseta, Gico, Gintu, Gulias, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Co Olga, Co Ricardo, Co Wilton, Konghun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sunny, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Ligarda, Libanan, Limkay Chong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagala Royo, Maseda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Manikis, Manuel, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Rivilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Nograles Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles Margarita, Nolasco, Huaminal, Olaso, Olivares, Ongchuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Oano Dizon, Padiernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Primicia Sagabas, Pumaren, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Rehensha, Remulia, Revilla Brian, Revilla Ramon Jolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez Yolojo, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Sieda Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Santos, Saulug, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Swansing Horacio, Swansing Mikael Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tariela, Teodoro, Teves, Tianco, Tieng, Tolentino, Tulfo Irwin, Tulfo Jocelyn, Tulfo Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yamsuan, 
Yep, Christian Tell. Yep, Christopherson. Yep, Edvic. Yep, Eric. You, Divina Grace. You, Jaisal Victoria. Yulo. Zamora Amparo Maria. Zamora Maria Carmen. Zamora Isabel Maria. Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill Number 9936. Abante, Abunda, Akop, Advincula, Alba, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amatong, Aquino, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Dayang Hirang, De Los Santos, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Fariñas, Fernandez, Frasco, Garin, Coed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horibata, Co Olga, Co Wilton, Dibanan, Limkay Chong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Mendoza, Nograles Juan Fidel Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Swansing Horacio, Tamayo, Tansamir, Tantambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. With 255 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstention, House Bill number 9936 is approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration third reading of House Bill number 9978. And may I request the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there an objection? Chair Hishnan. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill 9978 and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill 9978, an act providing for a moratorium on student loan payments during calamities, disasters, crisis situations, and other emergencies. Roll call of members in consideration of third reading of House Bill number 9978. Abalos, Abante, Abunda, Acharon. Asidre, Ako, Adjong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Batalion, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magisaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arogancia, Asistio, Ataide, Comentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Bascug, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billones, Biron, Bolilla, Bondoc, Bongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulutwigtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayan Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro France, Castro Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalaw, Ho Angelica Natasha, Ho Elizaldi, Ho Pilar, Ho Wanko Jaime Eduardo Mark, Ho Wanko Mark, Ho Lada, Ho Leantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cuba, Huaresma, Dago, Dalipe, Dalog, Dayanghirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo Muhammad Kali, Dimaporo City Amina, Junisho, Domingo, Duavit, Duhali, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Videla, Fariñas, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Fentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Orturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo Jan, Garcia Vincent, Garjola, Garin, Casataya, Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Aurelio, 
Gonzales Neptali, Gonzales Sandro, Goriseta, Gico, Ginto, Gullas, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, O Olga, O Ricardo, O Wilton, Honghun, Labadlaban, Lacson, Lacsonuel, Lagman, Lagun Daphne, Lagun Sani, Lara, Lasatin, Lee, Ligarda, Libanan, Limkechong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Manikis, Manuel, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Rivilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Magrales Juan Fidel Felipe, Magrales Margarita, Nolasco, Huaminal, Olaso, Olivares, Ong Chuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Juan Udizon, Padiernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Permisa Sagabas, Pumarin, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Regencia, Rimulia, Rivilla Brian, Rivilla Ramon Jolo, Reyes, Rillo, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez Yulogio, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Sieda Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Santos, Saulog, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Son Sing Horacio, Son Sing Micaela Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tariela, Chedoro, Tevez, Chanco, Cheng, Tolentino, Tulfo Erwin, Tulfo Jocelyn, Tulfo Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Totor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, tu, Veloso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafete Luis Raymond, Villafete Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villarasa Suarez, Villarica, Villago, Yam Suwan, Yap Richantel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edwig, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jason Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration, third reading of House Bill Number 9978. Abante, Abunda, Akop, Advincula, Alba, Alvarez Pantalion, Amatong, Aquino, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Dayanghirang, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Parinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Garin, Go Ed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horibata, Ko Olga, Ko Wilton, Dibanan, Lim Kachong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Mendoza, Magrales Juan Fidel Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Swansing Horacio, Tamayo, Tansamir, Tam Tambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Vilofete Luis Raymond, Vilofete Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. The 255 members voting in the affirmative, zero ending negative, and zero abstention. House Bill number 9978 is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration and third reading of House Bill number 9979, and may I request the Secretary General to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there an objection? Chair, here's none. 
Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill number 9979 and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill number 9979, an act further amending Republic Act number 7836, otherwise known as the Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994, as amended by Republic Act number 9293. Roll call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill number 9979. Abalos, Abante, Abunda, Acharon, Asidre, Ako, Padyong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino, Magsaysay, Arbison, Arena, Sarugansha, Asistio, Atay de Omentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Baskog, Bautista, Bautista, Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billiones, Biron, Bolivia, Bondoc, Bongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulut, Begtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayon, Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagan, Cardema, Cari, Castro, France, Castro, Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalao, Co Angelica, Natasha, Co Elizaldi, Co Pilar, Co Juanco, Jaime, Eduardo, Mar, Co Juanco, Mar, Colada, Colientes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cuba, Quaresma, Dagoc, Delipe, Dalog, De Anghirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo, Muhammad Cali, Dimaporo, City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavid, Duhari, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Farines, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Pentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Osi Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Gardiola, Garinga, Sataya Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Aurelio, Gonzalez Neptali, Gonzalez Sandro, Coriseta, Gico, Guinto, Gules, Gutierrez, Aresco, Ataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Oribata, Javier, Co Olga, Co Ricardo, Co Wilton, Kong Hoon, Labadabad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sunny, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Ligarda, Libani, Likay Chong, Loyola, Luis, Lumayag, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Maniges, Manuel, Maranyon, Marcoreta, Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino Marquez, Martinez, Mastoro, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado, Revilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles, Margarita, Nolasco, Amanal, Olaso, Olivares, Ong Chuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Juan Odizon, Padianos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Leito, Primisia, Sagabas, Pumarin, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Rehensha, Rimulia, Revilla, Brian, Revilla, Ramon, Jolo, Reyes, Rilo, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez, Yolohio, Rodriguez, Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Ferdinand, Martin, Romualdez, Sieda, Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sagdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Salis, Salimbangon, Salo, Santos, Saulug, Silverio, Singson, Richel, Singson, Ronald, Singson, Nihan, Solon, Suan, Suan Sing Horacio, Suan Sing Michael Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tamunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith, Micah, Tan Reynolds, Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Shai, Tan Walco, Tariello, Todoro, Tevez, Tianco, Tiang, Tolentino, Tufo, Irwin, Tufo, Jocelyn, Tufo, Ralph, Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ongab, Uy, Valeriano, Mayor, Vargas, Vargas, Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso, Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte, Luis Raymond, Villafuerte, Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villal, Villarasa Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yamsuan, Yap Christiantel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edvic, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jaisal Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill number 9979. Abante Abunda Ako, Padvincula, Alba, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amatong Aquino, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Dayang Hirang, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Farinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Garin, Go Ed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horibata, Co Olga, Co Wilton, Libanan, Lim Kaichong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Masura, Matibag, Mendoza, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Leito, Romero, Zagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Swansing, Horacio, Tamayo, Tansamir, Tantambut, Unga, Balmayor, Velasco, Villaferte Luis Raymond, Villaferte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. With 255 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstention, House Bill numbers 9979 is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader.
Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration and third reading of House Bill Number 9982, and may I request the Secretary General to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there any objection? Chair Hirsnan, the Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill Number 9982 and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill 9982, an act strengthening the establishment and operation of all public and private higher education institutions. Protocol of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill Number 9982. Abalo Sabante Abunda at Sharon Asidre, Ako Padjong at Vincula, Agaro Alba, Albano, Almario Alonte, Almonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantalion, Amante Amatong Ang Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsisay, Arbison Arenas, Organcia, Asiso at Taide, Amuntado, Barindong, Barbar, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Baskog, Bautista, Bautista Dim, Benitez, Bernos, Billones, Biron, Bodilla, Bondo, Bungalon, Portado, Busita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulut, Pagtang, Ustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahain, Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Harry Castro, Franz Castro, Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chunga, Lauco, Angelica, Natasha, Cole, Izzaldi, Copilar, Juan Cojaime, Eduardo, Marco, Juan Cumar, Calada, Colada, Colantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cuba, Corespa, Dagoc, Dalipe, Dalog, Dayang Hiram, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor del Mar, Del Santos, De Paporo, Mohamed, Cali, De Poro, Titi Amina, Genicio, Domingo, Dua, Vito, Dujari, Duterte, Di Faustino, Ino, Di Faustino, Michael Carlos, Di Ian, Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Udela, Farinas, Fernandez, Ferrer, Antonio, Ferrer, Gilt, Madi, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnetti, Fuente Bella, Galeos, Garcia, Albert, Garcia, Dante, Garcia, Jose, Arturo, Garcia, Maria, Angela, Garcia, Pablo, John, Garcia, Vincent, Gorjola, Garin, Gasataya, Gayo, Gato, Go, and Christopher, Go, Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez, Aurelio, Gonzalez, Neptali, Gonzalez, Sandro, Gorseta, Gico, Ginto, Gullas, Gutierrez, Resco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Ko, Olga, Ko, Ricardo, Ko, Wilton, Kung Hunta, Badla, Badla, Son, Lakson, Noel, Lagman, Lagun, Daphne, Lagun, Sani, Lara, Lasatin, Di, Ligada, Liban, Lincoln, Choy, Loyola, Luis, Tor, Lumayag, Makapagal, Arroyo, Maseda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan. Mga Wang, Manikis, Manuel. Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Manuel. My vote for the House Bill is no, and I would like to explain later why uh, I have such that vote. Noted. Thank you. Please proceed. Maranion, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano, Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado, Revilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Avanisa, Inograras, Juan Fidel, Felipe, Inograras, Margarita, Nolasco, Ominal, Olaso, Olivares, Onchuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Juan, Odizon, Padernas, Maduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Pimisa, Gabas, Pumarin, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Regencia, Rimula, Revilla, Brian, Revilla, Ramon, Jo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez, Ilojo, Rodriguez, Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Ferdinand, Martin, Romualdez, Yeda, Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdaran, Sagarbarilla, Sakaluran, Salceda, Salis, Salimbao, Gonzalo, Santos, Saulog, Sil Silverio, Simpson, Richel, Simpson, Ronald, Simpson, Milhan, Solon, Suan, Suan Singh, Horacio, Suan Singh, Micaela, Angela, Suarez, Tallado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith, Michael, Tan Reynolds, Michael, Tan Semir, Tan Stephen, James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chay, Tan Huatko, Tariera, Chadoro, Tevez, Chango, Cheng, Torrentino, Turfo, Erwin, Turfo, Jocelyn, Turfo, Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Torti, Umali, Unabio, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas, Alfonso, Velasco, Vilosa, Tuazo, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Vilifeto, Luis Raymond, Vilifeto, Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villarasa, Suarez, Villarica, Villalago, Yap Suan, Yap Presentel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edwick, Yap Eric, Yudi, Vinicris, Yudi, San Victoria, Yulo, Zamora, Amparo, Maria, Zamora, Maria, Carmen, Zamora, Isabel, Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration, third reading of House Bill Number 9982. Abante, Abunda, Ako, Advincula, Alba, Alvarez Pantalion, Amatong, Aquino, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Dayang Hirang, Duterte, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Parinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Garin, Go Ed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horibata, Ho Olga, O. Wilton, Dibanan, Lim Kai Chong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Mendoza, 
Nag-aralas Juan Fidel Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Juan Singh Horacio, Tamayo, Tansamir, Tansambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. With 253 members voting in the affirmative, 3 in the negative, 0 abstention, House Bill number 9982 is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Raul Daniel Manuel of the Kapadaan Perth Police to explain his vote. Honorable uh, Raul Manuel is recognized. You have three minutes. Salamat, Mr. Speaker. Ang boto ng kabataan sa House Bill 9982, I know, despite the good intentions and assurances of its authors, the current landscape and practices in higher education indicate the need for greater supervision, not less, on educational institutions. Nais ng panukalang batas na gawing mas deregulated ang higher education institutions, kahit na sa ngayon ay deregulated na ang sistema ng edukasyon sa bansa. Di na lang private higher education institutions ang pwedeng mabigyan ng autonomous o dereg deregulated status kapag naging batas na ito. Pero pati ang state universities and colleges at ang local universities and colleges. Dagdag pa, Mr. Speaker, limitado ang saklaw ng academic freedom sa panukalang batas. Nakakiling ito sa interes lamang ng mga namamahala ng mga universidad. The bill will give HEIs wider discretion and de facto control to institute policies covering admission, retention, and examination. In practice, these have been used to violate students' rights. Naginagawa na ngayon through repressive student handbooks, mandated waivers of rights, and other forms. Papahinain nito ang papel ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno para panagutin ang mga abusadong administrador. Supposedly, to ensure quality education, papayagan din ang degree program closures habang may mga estudyante pa na naka-enroll sa ganong mga degree program. Sa halip, napatapusin muna sila sa degree program na pinasokan nila bago ipatigil ang ganong mga kurso. Mr. Speaker, without corresponding or complementary measures to protect stakeholders, and a comprehensive review by CHED and DepEd of student handbooks, student codes, and other existing documents considered internal to educational institutions, this bill can empower the already empowered, not the disempowered. Dahil po dyan, no ang ating boto. Salamat, Mr. Speaker. George, the leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration of House Bill Number 100. And uh, may I request the Secretary General to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there any objection? Chair Hirsnan, Secretary General, is directed to read the title of House Bill number 10003 and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. 
House Bill Number 10003, an act establishing the Barangay Integrated Development Approach for Nutrition Improvement of the Rural Poor as a linkage program of participating state universities and colleges and local universities and colleges and appropriating funds, therefore. Roll call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill Number 10003. Abalo, Sabante, Abunda, Charon, Asidre, Akop, Adyong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arogancia, Asistio, Ataide, Aumentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Basco, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billiones, Viron, Bolilia, Bondoc, Bongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Bohain, Bulut Big Town, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayun Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro Franz, Castro Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalao, Co Angelica Natasha, Co Elizaldi, Co Pilar, Co Juanco Jaime Eduardo Mar, Co Juanco Mar, Colada, Coliantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cua, Quaresma, Dagoc, Delipe, Dalog, Dayang Hirang, Daza de Jesus, de Venecia Defensor del Mar de los Santos, Dimaporo Mohamed Khalid, Dimaporo Siti Amina, Dionisio Domingo Duavid Duhali Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo Emano Enverga Escudero Espares, Espina Estrella, Yudela Farinas Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores Fortes, Frasco Fresnetti Fuentebella Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garinga, Sataya, Gato, Go, Ed, Christopher, Go, Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzales, Aurelio, Gonzales, Neptali, Gonzales, Sandro, Goriseta, Gico, Ginto, Gullies, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Ataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Co, Olga, Co, Ricardo, Co, Wilton, Kong Hoon, Labad, Labad, Lakson, Lakson, Noel, Lagman, Lagon, Daphne, Lagon, Sunny, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Ligarda, Libanan, Kay Chong, Riola, Luis, or Lumayag, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang Maniques, Manuel Maranyon, Marcoleta Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Revilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles, Margarita, Nolasco, Waminal, Olaso, Olivares, Ongchuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Owano Dizon, Padiernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Primicia Sagabas, Pumarin, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Rehensha, Rimulia, Revilla Bryan, Revilla Ramon Jolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez Yolojo, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Sieda Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Sando, Saulug, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Swansing Horacio, Swansing Michaela Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tariela, Teodoro, Tevez, Tianco, Tieng, Tolentino, Tulfo Irwin, Tulfo Jocelyn, Tulfo Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villarasa Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yam Suan, Yap Christentel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edvic, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jaisal Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration and third reading of House Bill Number 10003. Abante, Abunda, Ako, Padvincula, Alba, Alvarez, Pantaleon, Amatong, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Dayang Hirang, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Farinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Go Ed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horibata, Co Olga, Co Wilton, Libanan, Lim Kaichong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Masturo, Matibag, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Swansing Horacio, Tamayo, Tan Samir, Tan Tambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Villafuerte, Luis Raymond, Villafuerte, Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar.
with 259 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, zero abstention. House Bill number 10003 is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration and third reading of House Bill number 10049 and request the Secretary General to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there any objection? Chair Yusnan, the Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill number 10049 and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill 10049, an act further promoting entrepreneurship by strengthening, empowering, and enhancing the fi financing and other support programs for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Amending for the purpose Republic Act number 6977 as amended, otherwise known as the Magna Carta for Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises, MSMEs. Roll call of members in consideration third reading of House Bill number 10049. Abala Sabandi Abunda, Charon, Asidra, Akop, Adjong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Aldonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Matong, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arugansya, Asiso, Atayde, Aumentado, Badindong, Barbar, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Baskug, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billones, Biron, Bolilla, Bondok, Mungalon, Bordado, Busita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bunut, Bugtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayin, Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro, Franz, Castro, Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalaw, Ko Angelica, Natasha, Ko Elizalde, Ko Pilar, Ko Juan, Ko Jaime, Eduardo, Eduardo Mark, Ko Juan, Ko Mark, Colada, Colantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cuba, Corazma, Dago, Dalipe, Dialog, Dayang Hiram, Daza, De Jesus, Defensa, Defensor del Mar de, de, los, de los Santos, Dimoporo, Mohamed Kalin, Dimoporo City, Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Duhali, Duterte, Difo, Ostino, Ino, Difo, Ostino, Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Farinas, Fernandez, Ferrer, Antonio, Ferrer, Juliet, Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Fentebella, Galeos, Garcia, Albert, Garcia, Dante, Garcia, Jose, Arturo, Garcia, Maria, Angela, Garcia, Pablo, John, Garcia, Vincent, Carjola, Garin, Casataya, Gato, Go, Ed, Christopher, Go, Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez, Aurelio, Gonzalez, Neptali, Gonzalez, Sandro, Coriseta, Guico, Ginto, Gullas, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Oribata, Javier, Go, Olga, Go, Ricardo, Go, Wilton, Conghun, Labad, Labad, Lacson, Lacson, Noel, Lagman, Lagun, Daphne, Lagun, Sani, Lara Lasatindi, Ligada, Liban, Limkay, Chong Loyola, Luis Sol Lumayag, Makapagala, Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, Maniquis, Manuel, Maranyon, Margoleta, Marcos, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Rivilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Navanisay, Nograras Juan, Fidel Felipe, Nograras Margarita, Nolasco, Ominal, Olaso, Olivares, Ong Juan, Ordanes, Ortega, Juan Odizan, Padiernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Pagmisa, Sagabas, Pumaran, Puno, Quimbo, Rama, Regencia, Rimulia, Rivilla, Brian, Rivilla, Ramon, Jolo, Reyes, Rillo, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez, Yuloyo, Rodriguez, Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Ferdinand, Martin, Romualdez, Sieda, Marie, Romualdo, Romero, Roque, Sagdaran, Sagarbaria, Sagaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbaon, Salo, Santos, Saulo, Silvero, Sinson, Richel, Sinson, Ronald, Sinson, Mijan, Tolon Suan, Suan Singh Horacio, Suan Singh Micaela Angela, Suarez Taliado, Tamayo Tamunting, Tan, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Michael, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambu, Tan Chay, Tan Watko, Tariela Chidoro, Tevez Chango, Cheng Torrentino, Turfo, Erwin Turfo, Jocelyn Turfo, Ralph Wendell, Tupas Chitorti, Uma, Umali, Unabio, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso Tuasan, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafete Luis Raymond, Villafete Miguel Luis, Villanueva Villar, Villarasa Suarez, Villarica, Villalago, Yam Siwan, Yap Presentel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Eric, Yap Edwick, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jason Victoria, Yulo Zamora, Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria, Zubidi. Second call of members in consideration, third reading of House Bill number 10049. Abande Abunda, Akop, Advincula, Alba, Alvarez, Pantaleon, Amatong, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Leang Hirang, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Farinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Go, Ed Christopher, Gonzaga, Ribata, Co, Olga, Co, Wilton, Dibanan, Lim Kay Chong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Nagaral, Suan, Fidel, Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Suan Singh, Horacio, Tamayo, Tan Samir, Tan Tambut, 
Unga Valmayor Velasco Vilafeta Luis Raymond Vilafeta Miguel Luis Villanueva Villar. Two hundred fifty eight members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, zero abstention. House Bill number one zero zero four nine is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, may we acknowledge and welcome to the House of Representatives the guests of Representative Milagros Aquino Magsaysay of the United Senior Citizens Party List. We have guests from the Dulong Bayan Senior Citizens Association. Harlin Balahadia, Amelia Ching, Eduardo Go, Thelma Ramos, Maria Lani Cresologo, Maria Florida Kawaling, Eugenia Diaz, Lucila Aquino, Narcita Talagtag, Teresa Bangkishu, Leticia Mania, Chepura Gonzalez, Eliseo Balahadia, Suzanne Buencamino, Rebecca Fulgencio, Arsenia Pagkanlungan, Hermeline Villafuerte. We also have guests from the Alianza ng Sama-Sama sa Pagbabago ng mga Senior Citizens ng Pasig City Association Incorporated. We have Edwin Magiba, Nonato de la Rosa, Marilyn Garcia, Elizabeth Ching, Virgilio Manalo, Mario Bangasa, Leonora Robles, Loreto Virey, Luz Hufansha, Severo Abuda, Maria Luisa Cabus, Aurora Heterosa, Anselmo Hasha, Herilita Villegas, Roger Rances, Belen Manilag, Lydia Camuyag, Yolanda Legaspi, Melinda Pamindim, Hil Bolos, Danilo Reyes, Zenaida Edles, Tita Pascua, Edelaida Barla Belarmino, Florida de la Rosa, Ernesto Concepcion, so, uh, we also have guests from the Southern Luzon Citizens, Senior Citizens Association of the Philippines of Quezon Province. We have Selvino Rajoma, Gerardo Carabido Sr., Felipe, Felipe Tambilot Sr., and Merle Sanchez. To the guests of Honorable Melagros, Aquino Magsaysay of the United Senior Citizens Party List, welcome to the House of Representatives. You are the leader. Mr. Speaker, may we also acknowledge and welcome to the House of Representatives the guests of Representative Arlene D. Brosas of the Gabriela Women's Party. We have Sarah Abelia. Avelina Anuran, Marilu Baltazario, Cecil Carmin Hueco Berdul, Annalisa David, Judy Ignacio, Judy Moore Hanoya, Susan Laurinaria, Annabel Lauzon, Maria Lucille, Esther Lili Leonin, Danilo Parino, Joselito Sunga, and Connie Balana. The guests, Honorable Arlene Rosas of the Gabriela Party List, welcome to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on third reading of the following House bills. Numbered 10110, uh, House Bill number 10111, House Bill Number 10112, House Bill Number 10113, House Bill Number 10114, House Bill Number 10115, House Bill Number 10116, House Bill Number 10117, House Bill Number 10118, and House Bill Number 10122. And House Bill Number 10123. House Bill Number 10124. And House Bill Number 10125. 
all local bills declaring ecotourism, tourism destinations, and development areas. And may I request the Secretary General to read the title of the bill and thereafter call the rule for nominal voting. Is there any objection? Chair Hishnan, the aforementioned the Secretary General is directed to read the titles of the aforementioned bills and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill Number 10110, an act declaring the municipality of Santa Fe, province of Romlon, a tourism destination. House Bill 10111, an act declaring the Malagap Underground River, located in Barangay Malagap, municipality of Banisilan, province of Cotabato, a tourism destination. House Bill 10112, an act declaring Corjanan Falls, located in Barangay Igsoro, municipality of Bugasong, province of Antique, an ecotourism site. House Bill 10113, an act declaring Mount Kituved, located in Barangay Bentangan, Municipality of Carmen, Province of Cotabato, a tourism destination. House Bill 10114, an act declaring Dalampiningan Island in the city of Isabela, Province of Basilan, an ecotourism zone. House Bill number 10115. An act declaring the Minocot Beach area located in Barangay Bunsoran, Municipality of Ferrol, Province of Romlon, an ecotourism destination. House Bill 10116. An act declaring the Municipality of San Fernando, Province of Romlon, a tourism development area. House Bill 10117. An act declaring the Island Municipality of Sarangani, Province of Davao Occidental, an ecotourism zone in appropriating funds therefore. House Bill 10118, an act declaring the Maramo section of the Angat River system in Barangay San Mateo, Municipality of North Zagaray, Province of Bulacan, an ecotourism destination to be known as the Maramo Nature Reserve. House Bill 10122, an act declaring Kankoka Falls located in Barangay Kambani, Municipality of Kandihay, Province of Bohol, an ecotourism destination. House Bill 10123, an act declaring Kun Untamad, Falls, located in Barangay Kadapdapan, Municipality of Kandihay, Province of Bohol, an ecotourism site. House Bill 10124, an act declaring Mount Kaniao, located in the Municipality of Bantay, Province of Ilocos Sur, an ecotourism zone. House Bill 10125, an act declaring the Tarangaban Falls, located in Barangay Tinaplakan, City of Kalbayog, Province of Samar, an ecotourism site. Roll call of members in consideration on third reading of the aforementioned bills. Abalos, Abante, Abunda, Acharon, Asidre, Acop, Adyong, Advincula, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arugancia, Asistio, Ataide, Aumentado, Malindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Baskog, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Billiones, Biron, Bolivia, Bondoc, Mongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Bulutbegtang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cahayon Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro Franz, Castro Jane, Celeste, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalao, Co Angelica Natasha, Co Elizaldi, Co Pilar, Co Juanco Jaime Eduardo Mar, Co Juanco Mar, Colada, Coliantes, Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Cua, Quaresma, Dagoc, Delipe, Dalog, De Yanghirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo, Muhammad Khalid, Dimaporo, City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Duhali, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Farinas, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnedi, Fuentebelia, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garin, Gasataya, Gato, Go Ed Christopher, Go Mark, Goles, Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzales Aurelio, Gonzales Neptali, Gonzales Sandro, Curiseta, Gico, Gintu, Gulias, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Co Olga, Co Ricardo, Co Wilton, Kong Hun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sunny, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Legarda, Libanan, Lim Kai Chong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagal Arroyo, Maseda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawang, 
Maniquis, Manuel, Marañón, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano Hernández, Mariño, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado Rivira, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisae, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles, Margarita, Nolasco, Huaminal, Olaso, Olivares, Ongchuan, Ordanes, Ortega, Oano Dizon, Padiernos, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancho, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Pleito, Primicia, Sagabas, Pumaren, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Rehensha, Rimulia, Rivilla, Brian, Rivilla, Ramon, Jolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez, Yulohio, Rodriguez, Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Ferdinand, Martin, Romualdez, Sieda, Marie, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbangon, Salo, Santos, Saulug, Silverio, Singson Richel, Singson Ronald, Singson Mihan, Solon, Suan, Swansing Horacio, Swansing Micaela Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Micah, Tan Reynolds Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambut, Tan Chai, Tan Watko, Tarielia, Tudoro, Teves, Tianco, Tieng, Tolentino, Tulfo Irwin, Tulfo Jocelyn, Tulfo Ralph Wendell, Tupas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Filoso Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yam Suan, Yap Christiantel, Yap Christopherson, Yap Edvic, Yap Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jaisal Victoria, Yulo, Zamora Amparo Maria, Zamora Maria Carmen, Zamora Isabel Maria Zubiri. Second call of member in consideration and third reading of the aforementioned local bills. Abante, Abunda, Acop, Advincola, Alba, Alvarez, Pantaleon, Amatong, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Dayang Hirang, Duterte, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Farinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Goed Christopher, Gonzaga, Goribata, Co Olga, Co Wilton, Libanan, Lim Kaichong, Maranon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Pleito, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Swansing Horacio, Tamayo, Tan Samir, Tan Tambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Villafuerte Luis Raymond, Villafuerte Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. To 259 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, zero abstentions. House Bill numbers 10111, 10111112, 10113, 10114, 10115, 10116, 10117, 10118, 10112, 10123, 10124 and 10125 are hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the consideration on third reading House Bill number 9977 and request that the Secretary General read the title of the measure and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. Is there any objection? The Chair is done. The Secretary General is directed to read the Title of House Bill number 9977, and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill 9977, an act providing for the continuation of unpaid obligations on the power consumption of the Public Utilities Department, or Ongopa City, to the Power Sector Assets and Liabilities Management Corporation. Roll call of members in consideration of third reading of House Bill number 9977. Abalo sa bandi abunda charo na sire ako pa jong at vinkula agaraw alba albano alba almario almonte alonte alvarez jose alvarez mercedes alvarez pantalion amante amatong ang agara akino akino magsisay arbison arena sa organsya asiso atay de montalo barindong barbar barbers baronda barzaga baskug botista botista dimbinites bernos 
Pilones, Biron, Bolilla, Bondok, Bungalon, Bordado, Busita, Briones, Rosas, Buhain, Bulbuk, Tangbusos, Cabredo, Hagas, Cahayin, Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro, France, Castro, Jane, Ceresa, Chan, Chato, Chua, Chungalaw, Juan, Angelica, Natasha, Coel, Izaldi, Copilar, Juan, Jaime, Eduardo, Mark, Juan, Co, Mark, Colada, Colientes, Corvera, Cruz, Ambrosio, Cruz, Ricardo, Cua, Corazma, Dagoc, Dalipe, Dalog, Dayang, Hirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, De Vensor, Del Mar, Del Santos, Nyo Poro Muhammad Kari, Di Poro Siti Amina, Tunisio Domingo Duavi Tuhari Duterte, Di Faustino Ino, Di Faustino Michael Carlos, Di Ian Paul, Ecleo Emano Invergo Escudero Raspares, Espina Estrella Yudela Farines Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio Ferrer Judith Marie, Flores Fortes Frasco Festetti, Fentebella Galeos, Garcia Albert Garcia Dante, Garcia Jose Arturo, Garcia Marie Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Garjola Garin, Gasataya Gato Go H. Christopher, Go Mark Goles Gomez Gonzaga, Gonzales Aurelio Gonzales Neto de Gonzales Sandro, Goriseta Gigo Ginto Gulas Gutierrez Jaresco, Hataman Hernandez Herrera Horibata Javier, O Olga Co Ricardo Co Wilton Tunghunda Badla Badla Son Son Noel Lagman, Lagun Daphne Lagun Sani Lara Lasatin Li Ligar Dalibanan, Lim Kay Chong Loyola Luis Toro Lumayag Magpagal Oroyo Maceda Madrona, Bagsino Malapitan mga mga manikis Manuel Maranyon, Marcoleta Marcos Barriano Hernandez Marino Marquez Martinez Mastura, Matibag Matugas Mendoza, Mercado Mercado Revilla, Miguel Momo Morden, Navanisa, Nograles Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles Margarita Norasco, Uvaminal, Olaso Olivares, Onchuan, Ordanes Ortega, Juan Odizon, Padiernas Paduana, Paglas Palma, Patanigan Pancho, Panotes Pascual, Peña Pimentel Plaza, Plato, Panuis Agabas, Pumarin Puno, Kimbo Rama, Regencia Rimulla, Revilla Brian, Revilla Ramon Jolo, Reyes, Rillo, Rivera Robes, Rodriguez Ilohio, Rodriguez Rufus, Roman Romero, Romualdez Ferdinand Martin, Romualdez Fede Marie, Romualdo Romulo Roque, Sakdalan Sagar Maria, Sakaluran Salceda, Sari Salimbangon, Salo Santos Saulog, Silvero Sinson Richel, Sinson Ronald, Sinson Mijen, Solon Suwan, Sonsing Horacio, Sonsing Michaela Angela, Suarez Taliado, Tamayo Tambunting, Tan Joseph, Tan Keith Michael, Tan Reyes Michael, Tan Samir, Tan Stephen James, Tan Tambu, Tan Chay, Tan Watko, Tariela Chedoro, Davis Chango Cheng Turintino Tulfo Irving Tulfo Jocelyn Tulfo Ralph Wendell Tupa Sutorti Umari Unabi Ungab Uy Valeriano Valmayor Vargas Vargas Alfonso Velasco Veloso Tuazon Vergara Vesosa Villa Vilfeto Luis Raymond Vilfeto Miguel Luis Villanueva Villar Villaraza Suarez Villarica Villalago Yam Suwan Yap Presentel Yap Christopherson Yap Edwig Yap Eric U Divini Grace U J Sal Victoria Yulo Zamora Amparo Maria Zamora Maria Carmen Zamora Isabel Maria Zubiri. Second call consideration, third reading of House Bill Number Nine Nine Seven Seven. Abande Abunda Acharon. Abande Abunda Akop Advincula Alba Alvarez Pantalion. Amatong Aquino Barzaga Botista Botista Dim. Colada, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Varinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Co. Ed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horebata, Co. Olga, Co. Wilton, Dibanan, Lim Kay Chong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Mendoza, Nograles Juan, Fidel Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sagarbaria, Sali, Solon, Sonsing Horacio, Tamayo, Tansamir, Tantambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Villafeto Luis Raymond, Villafeto Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. With 262 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstention, House Bill number 9977 is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move for the approval of House Bill number 9985 and request that the Secretary General read the title of the measure and therefore after call the roll for nominal voting. Is there any objection? Chair is none. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill number 9985 and thereafter call the roll for nominal voting. House Bill number 9985, an act establishing a special economic zone in the municipality of Sarangani, province of Davao Occidental, 
creating for the purpose the municipality of Sarangani Special Economic Zone Authority and appropriating funds therefore. Roll call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill number 9985. Abala, Sabante, Abunda, Acharon, Asidri, Akop, Adyong, Advincola, Agarao, Alba, Albano, Almario, Almonte, Alonte, Alvarez Jose, Alvarez Mercedes, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amante, Amatong, Ang, Angara, Aquino, Aquino Magsaysay, Arbison, Arenas, Arugansha, Asistio, Ataide, Aumentado, Balindong, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, Barzaga, Bascog, Bautista, Bautista, Lim, Benitez, Bernos, Bilyones, Biron, Bolilia, Bondo, Mongalon, Bordado, Bosita, Briones, Brosas, Buhain, Mulutbeg, Tang, Bustos, Cabredo, Cagas, Cayun Uy, Calderon, Calixto, Campos, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castro Franz, Castro Jane, Celeste Chan, Chato Chua, Xongalao, Co Angelica Natasha, Co Elizaldi, Co Pilar, Co Juanco Jaime Eduardo Mart, Co Juanco Mart, Colado Coliantes Corvera, Cruz Ambrosio, Cruz Ricardo, Coa, Quaresma de Goc, Dalipe, Dalog, De Anghirang, Daza, De Jesus, De Venecia, Defensor, Del Mar, De Los Santos, Dimaporo Mohamed Cali, Dimaporo City Amina, Dionisio, Domingo, Duavit, Duhari, Duterte, D. Faustino Ino, D. Faustino Michael Carlos, D. Ian Paul, Ecleo, Emano, Enverga, Escudero, Espares, Espina, Estrella, Yudela, Farines, Fernandez, Ferrer Antonio, Ferrer Juliet Marie, Flores, Fortes, Frasco, Fresnede, Fuentebella, Galeos, Garcia Albert, Garcia Dante, Garcia Art Jose Arturo, Garcia Maria Angela, Garcia Pablo John, Garcia Vincent, Guardiola, Garin, Gazataya, Gato, Go with Christopher, Go Mark, Goles Gomez, Gonzaga, Gonzalez Aurelio, Gonzalez Neptali, Gonzalez Sandro, Curiseta, Gico, Guindo, Gullias, Gutierrez, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera, Horibata, Javier, Co Olga, Co Ricardo, Co Wilton, Kong Hun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon Daphne, Lagon Sani, Lara, Lazatin, Lee, Ligarda, Libana, Nikai Chong, Loyola, Luistro, Lumayag, Makapagal, Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Magsino, Malapitan, Mangawa, Maniquis, Manuel, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Marcos, Mariano, Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Matugas, Mendoza, Mercado, Mercado, Revilla, Miguel, Momo, Morden, Nava, Nisay, Nograles, Juan Fidel Felipe, Nograles, Margarita, Nolasco, Waminal, Olaso, Olivares, Song Chuan, Ordanis, Ortega, Juan Odizon, Padierno, Paduano, Paglas, Palma, Panaligan, Pancha, Panotes, Pascual, Peña, Pimentel, Plaza, Plato, Primicia, Sagabas, Pomarin, Puno, Kimbo, Rama, Regencia, Rimulia, Revilla, Brian, Revilla, Ramon, Jolo, Reyes, Rilio, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez, Yelohoyo, Rodriguez, Rufus, Roman, Romero, Romualdez, Ferdinand, Martin, Romualdez, Yeda, Marie, Romualdo, Rom Romulo, Roque, Sagdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Sali, Salimbang, Gonzalo Santos, Saulug, Silverio, Singson, Rochelle, Singson, Ronald, Singson, Mihan, Solon, Suan, Suan, Sing, Horacio, Suan, Sing, Michaela, Angela, Suarez, Taliado, Tamayo, Tambunting, Tan, Joseph, Tan, Keith, Micah, Tan, Reynolds, Michael, Tan, Samir, Tan, Stephen, James, Tan, Tambut, Tan, Chai, Tan, Wat, Cotariale, Todoro, Tevez, Tianco, Tieng, Tolentino, Tufo, Irwin, Tufo, Jocelyn, Tufo, Ralph, Wendell, Tufas, Tutor, T, Umali, Unabia, Ungab, Uy, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas, Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso, Tuazon, Vergara, Versosa, Villa, Villafuerte, Luis Raymond, Villafuerte, Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar, Villaraza, Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yamsuan, Yap, Christian Tell, Yap, Christopherson, Yap, Edvig, Yap, Eric, U Divina Grace, U Jaisal Victoria, Yulo, Zamora, Amparo Maria, Zamora, Maria Carmen, Zamora, Isabel Maria, Zubiri. Second call of members in consideration on third reading of House Bill Number 9985. Abante Abunda, Ako Padvincola, Alba, Alvarez Pantaleon, Amatong, Barzaga, Bautista, Bautista Lim, Colada, Duterte, Ecleo, Enverga, Espares, Farinas, Fernandez, Frasco, Coed Christopher, Gonzaga, Horibata, Co Olga, Co Wilton, Libanan, Lim Kaichong, Maranyon, Marcoleta, Martinez, Mastura, Matibag, Nograla, Swan Fidel Felipe, Plato, Romero, Sali, Solon, Swan Sing Horacio, Tamayo, Tansamir, Tantambut, Ungab, Valmayor, Velasco, Villafuerte, Luis Raymond, Villafuerte, Miguel Luis, Villanueva, Villar. With 258 members voting in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and three abstentions, House Bill number 9985 is hereby approved on third and final reading. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we 
I move that the Secretary General be directed to transmit to the Senate all the bills that we have approved on third reading. Is there any objection? Chair Island, the motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, under the uh, calendar of business for the day, I move that we consider House Bill Number 10145 under Committee Report Number 1026, submitted by the uh, Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation. And for this purpose, may I move that we uh, that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the said bill. Is there any objection? Chair is none. Motion approved. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill Number 10145. House Bill 10145, an act providing for a Philippine Medical Act, repeating for the Purpose Republic Act Number 2382, as amended, otherwise known as the Medical Act of 1959. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Siriaco Bigato of the Lone District of Batanes to deliver his sponsorship speech. The Honorable Siriaco Gato. Chairman of the Committee on Health is recognized to sponsor the measure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues, today I rise not only as a co-chairperson of the joint committees which tackle this important measure, but also as a medical doctor by profession to have the honor and privilege to sponsor and seek your support for the passage of House Bill Number 10145 under Committee Report Number 1026, which seeks to update and modernize Republic Act Number 2382, otherwise known as the Medical Act of 1959. This law was instrumental in shaping our medical landscape for over six decades. The medical field landscape for over the medical field, however, has undergone tremendous advancements since then. New technologies, specializations, and healthcare challenges have emerged. The current law struggles to address these developments effectively. The proposed measure will develop and nurture our physicians to be more competent in practice, ethically responsible and globally competitive to properly address the existing and evolving demands of the profession, which will definitely redound to the benefit of the general public that it serves. This committee report is in substitution to several measures on the proposed Medical Act, House Bills Number 0688, 1591, 6112, 6137, 7727, and 8057. The proposed House bill is a welcome development because it explicitly states what is currently needed in the practice of medicine in our country. One which is also aligned with Republic Act number 11223 or the Universal Health Care Act that aims to have a strong, efficient, and well-run health systems throughout the Philippines. To meet priority health needs, access to essential medicines, to cope with the continuous upgrading of various medical technologies, to accurate, accurately diagnose and effectively treat medical problems, to have a large core of high, highly trained and motivated health workers, and ultimately to provide quality services to the patient. The proposed measure also incorporates the current social realities that is not covered and included or plainly described in the existing law. This proposed piece of legislation underwent exhaustive consultations with different medical practitioners, associations, and health institutions, as well as partner government agencies. Further, it was deliberated extensively by the Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation and the Committee on Health, including the conduct of technical working group meetings. In fact, 
last Congress, this legislative measure was already passed by the House and transmitted to the Senate. With this, Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues, may I earnestly request your full support for the timely passage and approval of this message. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Gato. Uh, George Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we, that we suspend consideration of House Bill Number 10145. There is there objection? There is none. The motion is approved. Mr. Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended. Itong araw na ito ang pagtaton ng House of Representatives bilang mga representante ninyo sa Kongreso. Magpapasalamat kami lahat sa inyong servisyo at sakripisyo. You are actually the shining star. Not only in the Philippines, but you are now regarded globally as one of the few success stories in this endeavor. That is why we are here to acknowledge you, to salute you, and to thank you for your service. We have done something that most countries could not have achieved, and we are so proud of this. For we live under the peace and stability that we have created and we can only acknowledge and reward you with all the support that you deserve. Over the decades, Filconsa has stood witness to two constitutional changes and countless constitutional issues. Dutifully, you have proven yourselves to be a proactive witness and defender of our constitutions, past and present. It is once again being called upon for its role as a constitution's vanguard. Mabuhay ang ating saligang batas. Mabuhay ang iisa at nagkakaisang bagong Pilipinas.
Ito talaga ang mensahe ang ating mahal ng presidente, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. At sinasabi niya parati, sama-sama tayo babangon uli at walang iwanan. Pumasa po kayo na patuloy po kami na mag-iisip at magsasagawa ng iba pang karagdagang tulong na pwedeng ipaabot sa inyo upang matupad ng bawat Pilipino ang kanyang buong potensyal. Ito po ang bagong Pilipinas. Pamamahalang nagmamahal, hindi lang salita kundi sa gawa. Lumalapit para matugunan ang mga pangangailangan ng taong bayan tungo sa sama-sama nating paunlad. Yes, what is the pleasure of the lady of, from the Gabriela party list? Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to uh, make a speech on the 293rd. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to stand on a matter of personal and collective privilege. You have 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, today we pay tribute to the indomitable spirit of Gabriela Silang, the first female leader, La Generala, of the revolutionary movement against Spanish colonizers. On her 293rd birth anniversary, we commemorate her enduring legacy and unwavering dedication to our national sovereignty and the rights of the Filipino people. In light of the recent developments concerning proposed amendments to the Philippine Constitution aimed at allowing 100% foreign ownership in various sectors of the economy, we reiterate our commitment to upholding the principles of national sovereignty and territorial integrity. Today, as we honor the memory of Gabriela Silang, we are reminded of the importance of preserving our sovereignty and protecting the interests of our nation. We urge all Filipino women to stand united and continue the legacy of Gabriela Silang by defending the rights and interests of the Filipino people, rejecting the anti-people charter change, guarding against U.S. military intervention, as well as the military ag aggression and provocations of China in the West Philippine Sea. Taas noon nating ipinagmamalaki na buhay na buhay ang diwang makabayan at palaban ni Gabriela Silang sa lahat ng mga kababaihan na nagpapatuloy ng laban para sa kabuhayan, karapatan at kasarinlan. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Brosas. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Arlene Brosas to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the guests of, their hon of the Honorable Zia Rahman, Alonto Adjong, of the 1st District of Lanao, Del Sur. Let's recognize Carmen Lauzon Gatmatian, Yasmin Busran Lao, Diane Karna Bahijan, Nohaya Makusang, Siti Nur Daihana Mohammed, Charlene Medrid Diho, Janelle Estopacio, Beverly Serrano, Bensita Saliling, Raima Dima Pao, Nash Matula, Miriam Sawasito, Fatima Pier Alian, Anna Caspe, Jurma Tikmasan, Fariados Mawaro, Eileen Halde, 
SP Cupida, Nenita Alian, Karen Tanada, Elizabeth Yang, RJ Fajardo, Mary Ann Dino, Beverly Orozco, Angelita Padilla, Gami Dapeg, Torfia Guantican, Jennifer Arau, Jean Ira Okubo, Clavel Navas Becchio, Getty Sandoval, Trevor Latayan, Ka Kalil Basbasan, DK Fontamias, Melanie Ruiz, Richelle May Inoferio, Marlo Agbay, Liza Tumulak, Luz Bador, Melanie Vargas, Ana Luna Assis, Julius Jimenez, Evoy Villarreal, Joan Lopez, Church Dolatre, Therese Zabala, Bianca Reyes, and Irene Pua. Thank you, Majority Leader. Excuse the guest of uh, Zia Alonto Adjong. A moment, uh, Majority Leader. On behalf of, uh, on behalf of the House, Speaker Martin Romaldes, welcome to the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, Majority Leader. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, under the calendar of unfinished business, I move that we resume consideration on House Bill Number One, Number Nine Three Four Nine, under Committee Report Number Nine Six Two, submitted by uh, Population and Family Relations. And for this purpose, may I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill. Secretary General, please proceed. House Bill 9349, an act reinstituting absolute divorce as an alternative mode for the dissolution of marriage. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, under uh, the parliamentary status of the bill is that it is in the period of sponsorship and debate. I move that the author of the bill be recognized, the Honorable Edsel Lagman. The representative from the uh, province of Albay, Congressman Al or Representative Al uh, Lagman, is recognized, sir. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am only one of the authors of the many authors of the bill. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we recognize the Honorable Eduardo Villanueva from the Sibak Party List for his interpolation. Please proceed. Isa pong mapagpala at magandang araw sa lahat. Mr. Speaker and Honorable uh, Sponsor of this uh, bill, Legalization of uh, Absolute Divorce Bill, the highly esteemed living statesman in our country, uh, Honorable Congressman Edsel Legman, and to all our comrades here. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Sponsor argues the divorce bill is not unconstitutional. With due respect to all, why is that so, Mr. Speaker? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, the Honorable uh, Brother Eddie Villanueva of Sibak Party List. The absolute divorce law bill, once it becomes a law, is constitutional. In other words, it is not unconstitutional. Despite 
the declaration of the norms and prescriptions in the Constitution, providing that marriage is an inviolable institution, that the marriage is the foundation of the family, and that marriage and family should be protected by the state. The Constitution does not prohibit the enactment of an absolute divorce law. Nowhere in our Constitution, as well as in the previous Constitutions of 1935 and 1973, is there any provision prohibiting the, the, the legislature from enacting a divorce law. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, the members of the Constitutional Commission of 1986 unanimously agreed under the leadership of uh, the late Father uh, Joaquin Bernas that the Congress of the Philippines can enact a divorce law. Consequently, Mr. Speaker, we submit that the enactment of the divorce law is constitutional. As a matter of fact, there are many other countries which have the same uh, provisions in their constitution on the protection of marriage and the family, on the sanctity of marriage, but these countries have all le legalized divorce, including all Catholic countries, all Christian countries, except the Philippines and the tiny ecclesiastical state of the Vatican. We submit, therefore, Mr. Speaker, that this bill, once it becomes a law, is constitutional. It, does, it is not prohibited by the Constitution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Honorable uh, Sponsor. However, Mr. Speaker, how can you interpret the birth law vis-a-vis the clear, categorical, and expressed letters of Section 2, Article 15 of the Constitution, which says, marriage as an inviolable social institution is the foundation of the family and shall be protected by the state. Mr. Speaker, because my understanding is that whatever transpired in the proceedings of the constitutional framers, the fact is still remains that no one objected to the inviolability of marriage in the country. It was carried to the letters of the Constitution. It was the actual wordings of the Constitution, including marriage is inviolable, that the people ratified overwhelmingly, not the minutes of the transcript of the opinions of the framers, but emphasizing that marriage is inviolable. All dictionaries agree, especially the Oxford Dictionary, inviolable simply means, clearly means, incapable of being violated. Therefore, that this letter of the Constitution should never be violated unless there is a change of the Constitution. Now, going back to the, uh, to the uh, comment of the late Commissioner Gascon, by the way, yes, Mr. Speaker, I also want to state just for the record, Commissioner Gascon introduced Section 2, Article 15, Provisions. His intention was to discourage divorce in the Constitution. You can see the transcript on the screen. You can see the transcript on the screen. Just for the record, Mr. Speaker, what can you say about that, Mr. Speaker? Uh, Mr. Speaker, precisely the proceedings of the Constitutional Commission, as cited 
by the distinguished uh, gentleman from Sibak Partilis would not be complete if we do not quote what subsequently transpired. No less than Commissioner Gascon said that these provisions on the inviolability of marriage does not prohibit Congress from enacting a divorce law. And that was the consensus without any objection from other members of the Constitutional Commission, including Father Bernas. Mr. Speaker, when we say inviolable, we set, we set up a standard, a norm or prescription. It is not cast in stone. Because despite this provision in the Constitution, the commissioners said that Congress can pass an absolute divorce law. And in fact, no less than the Constitution does not prohibit Congress from enacting an absolute divorce law. In other words, inviolability would be a prescription, a norm, a standard, uh, which is not cast in stone, as I have said, because many countries have similar or even identical provision, and they have the absolute divorce law, and in these countries, the law legalized divorce is not deemed unconstitutional. With your respect, Mr. Speaker, and honorable uh, sponsor, I maintain my absolute support to the very letters of the Constitution, that every letter of the Constitution must prevail over any remarks instantly made during the said uh, Constitutional Commission hearing. However, let me go further. Uh, in, uh, let me move to my next point, Mr. Speaker, Honorable uh, uh, Sponsor. Last time, the Honorable Rupus Rodriguez cited a barrage of empirical studies which laid down the evidence that divorce negatively impacts the well-being of the children. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, I would also like to show on the screen this study by the U.S. National Survey of Children's Health, which shows that children who live with both biological parents or two adoptive parents are less likely to have ever repeated a grade in school compared to those who live with their mother only or with one biological parent or a step-parent or in other family cons configurations such as with their father only or with foster parents. You can see that on the screen, Mr. Speaker. In addition, you can see here a, 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 a wide uh, uh, percentage of gap. Both biological parents or two adoptive parents, the result of this survey, 6.5%, while step parents, 21.8%, mother only, 19.9%, and others, 21.9%. My point is, speaking of the general welfare and greatest interest of the children, it is very, very clear that the boards will surely produce disastrous devastation and destruction in the future of the children. Now, Mr. Speaker, my question is in the light well, uh, I would like to add in this, uh, in this uh, interpolation, in addition, divorce negatively affects children's educational across time. A Dutch study using data from 18 national surveys, I repeat, 18 national surveys in the Netherlands show that the negative effects on the educational attainment of children of divorced or separated parents is still persist 
even when divorce becomes socially acceptable. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, uh, my question is, in light of overwhelming empirical evidence, is not the divorce bill in direct contradiction to Article 2, Section 13 of the Constitution, which says, and quote, the state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social being. Shall we allow the destruction of the future of the youths of the land and destroying the golden opportunities for our beloved country to be transformed as a great nation of God or the nation as a great nation in this earth? Yes, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Sponsor. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there are more recent and current empirical studies which show that children of divorced parents fare much better than children of parents in conflict who do not obtain any divorce. And I would like to underscore that it is not the divorce itself which uh, make children have deficiencies and anxieties. It is the situation before divorce when children are exposed to the constant conflict and the toxic environment in failed, shattered marriages. That is the empirical study. It is not divorce which uh, make these children having anxieties and deficiencies. It is prior to divorce. There are experience of conflict in the family. And this is now carried over in some cases to post-divorce. But in most cases, empirical studies worldwide, recent ones, more recent than the uh, authorities cited by the Honorable Rufus Rodriguez, that they fare better they are more resilient, they respect more authorities, and they respect the institution of marriage because they have learned from the experience of their parents. Scholars are now asserting that marital conflict, rather than divorce itself, is the single most critical determining factor in children's post-divorce adjustments. These inadequacies and anxieties are mitigated or even eliminated after the parents have divorced since the children are no longer exposed to conflict. The long-term consequence for most children of divorced parents is resiliency rather than dysfunction. Co-parenting, albeit separate, is enhanced after the divorce since co-parenting is decreed by the court and parents seriously seek for the care of and affection from their children. These are documented empirical studies. And uh, in the proposed bill, we have provided that the court will decree on co-parenting, custody, as well as support of children. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, with your respect,
to our beloved honorable sponsor, we will validate if the studies, quote unquote, being cited by the honorable sponsor are true empirical research of studies or studies carried out by scholars. Because my staff checked the work cited by the sponsor last time, like the works of psychologist Kathy Hardy Williams, and found that it is more of a blog rather than a full-fledged research or study. I say this because, Mr. Speaker, in the literature of the effects of divorce on the well-being of children, practically all findings, I repeat, practically all findings go to the direction that divorce negatively impacts children in varying degrees. It is just surprising and unusual to encounter a study that says otherwise. Going on further, Mr. Speaker, there are empirical studies that say divorce dramatically increases the risk of the children's future marriage to also get divorced. The well-established phenomenon is called, and I and quote, intergenerational transmission of divorce, unquote. Is the honorable sponsor aware of this well-documented phenomenon? This is not just uh, a passe uh, survey. For example, Mr. Speaker, you can see on the screen the following studies. Number one, the transmission of marital instability across generations. Relationship, skills, or commitment to marriage by Paul Amato and Daniel DeBoer, 2001, published in Journal of Marriage and Family. Second, the unexpected legacy of divorce. Report of a 25-year study. I repeat, report of a 25-year study by Judith Wallerstein, 2004, published in Psychoanalytic Analytic uh, psychology, psychology Journal. Third, understanding the divorce cycle. The children of divorce in their own marriages, written by Nicholas Wolpinger, 2005. And fourth, last but not least, the intergenerational transmission of family dissolution. How it varies by social class origin and birth cohort by Alessandro Danaglio and Daniel O.S. 2023, published in European Journal Population. Mr. Spiegel, Mr. Speaker and beloved honorable sponsor, yes. all of this support the findings that divorce begets divorce. Divorce results in fewer marriages, poorer marriages, and more divorces. This means that the children of divorced parents are insignificant <clears throat> risk of having their own marriages end up in divorce. Simply put, parental divorce is one of the best documented risk factors for marriage dissolution of children. These are empirical studies, not mere speculations. Hence, very clear, this could lead to vicious cycle of horrible damages to society. In fact, the works of Amato and De Boer said that if a woman's parents divorce, her odds of divorce increase 69%. While if both a husband and wife's parents divorced, the risk of divorce increased by 189%. What can you say about this, uh, Mr. Speaker, and our highly esteemed honorable sponsor? Mr. Speaker, the distinguished gentleman cited Amato as an author of one of uh, the studies he mentioned. But let me cite Amato, his study in 2011, recent. He said, conflict between family members was more important than the occurrence of the divorce in determining the children's welfare. Another study. Newer research on the impact of divorce on children shows that when children have difficulties post-divorce, it is related to specific factors that are associated with divorce but are not a result 
of divorce itself. Rappaport, Deconstructing the Effects of Divorce on Children, 2003. Next, divorce actually provides children with the opportunity to develop in an environment with fewer stressors by removing children from high conflict household. Paul Amato et al. Reconsidering the Good Divorce, 2011. Recent researchers report that as the stressors decrease and children adjust to the changes in their lives, children's difficulties decrease. In fact, as children adjust to the divorce, they do better as compared to children of high conflict non-divorce families. Navis, Peter Tone, and Margaret Stanley Hagen. The adjustment of children with divorced parents, a risk and resiliency perspective. Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry. Another, children of parents who divorce do not have a much higher frequency of mental health problems than their non-divorce counterparts. Whiteside and Betsy Jane Becker, Parental Factors and the Young Children's Post-Divorce Adjustment, a meta-analysis with implications for parenting arrangement. 2010. Most children do well post-divorce and do not seem different from their peers who are from intact families. Ellen Mabis, Social Support and the Adjustment of Children and Divorce and Remarried Families, 2003. Then, another study. There is no causal relationship between parental divorce and attachment insecurity, depression, or low esteem. Bernstein, Rosemary et al., Parental Divorce and Romantic Attachment in Young Adulthood, 2012. These are empirical studies which show that children in the, in the post-divorce stage cope with difficulties, although these difficulties were there before the divorce, and they are mitigated or corrected after the divorce. Now, let me ask, Mr. Speaker, if it is true that divorce is inimical to children, why are countries not repealing their divorce decrees? Why are countries legitimizing divorce? All countries, except the Philippines and the Vatican. I would submit, Mr. Speaker, that there can be no unanimity in blunder in recognizing divorce in all of these countries. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable sponsor, I maintain the basic maxim that uh, the general rule must prevail over the exceptions. Be that as it may, Mr. Speaker, honorable sponsor, my question is that given the foregoing empirical studies mentioned, would you not agree that the divorce bill contradicts the following constitutional provisions? I believe the wordings, the letters of our constitution should not just be relegated to any perceptions or studies of some groups. 
without a thorough research of the scholars. Because empirical means gained through experience, scientific experiments, and observation give rise to empirical data rather than on theory or logic. Like for instance, very, very clear, the Article 15, Section 1 of our precious Constitution, the state recognizes the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation. Accordingly, it shall strengthen its solidarity and actively promote its total development. So glaring, in Article 2, Section 13, the state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social being. Mr. Uh, Speaker and Honorable Sponsor, after knowing these empirical studies mentioned by this representation, I can recall Honorable uh, uh, Ropus uh, uh, Rodriguez last time demonstrating the destructive effects of divorce on children, both in the short term and long term. Do you still propose divorce bill is constitutional? I am afraid that uh, we should not overlook the importance of the signs of the times. Because, not because many countries are now succumbing to the will of the enemy of God. That legalization of divorce is becoming a natural trend. We should not forget the famous statement of Dr. Billy Graham during the prime years of his ministry. He categorically stated, As we are nearing to the second coming of Jesus Christ, the world will become worse and worse. But the faithful, obedient people of God will become better and better. Now, the Bible also, I... Uh, I suddenly uh, remember this, not because many countries are now succumbing to the will, sorry to say, to the will of the enemy of God. As the Bible says in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, The thief, referring to Satan, cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to destroy. But I came to give life and have it more abundantly. Citing that majority of countries in these last days are succumbing to the so-called Satan's will, I just want to remind everybody, especially our honorable sponsor, in Matthew 7, 13, verse 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in it by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Just a simple reminder that majority does not necessarily mean right. Granting for the sake of argument that only the Vatican State and the Philippines and the remaining countries in the world who refuse to violate, who refuse, who refuse to, uh, to go to the trending of the world, that family should no longer be so sacred, as envisioned by the creator of heavens and the earth, the Almighty God, as well as supported by our constitution, that the youth of the nation shall be protected. The welfare of the youth in nation building must be all out protected, physically, morally, spiritually, intellectually, and their social being. Now, I think, uh, would it not be right, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and uh, honorable sponsor, this time we have to remind the parents in our country that there is a uh, agency for parents to sacrifice their selfishness, their personal convenience for the sake of the security and better future of their children and children's children or else. What can we hope for a nation when the youth of the land is destroyed? How can we fulfill our common quest that this nation someday will be great again when the deterioration of the youth of the land will be supported even by the state? So what I'm saying, uh, Mr. Speaker and uh, Honorable uh, Sponsor, uh, I believe 
passing a divorce bill, my simple question, another simple question, is it right to say we are more willing to have happy remarriages at the expense of children having healthy, cohesive families in the future? Could not this be myopic, selfish, selfish interest of the parents versus the brightest future of millions of children? Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you for reminding me of uh, the words of God. But most probably, I don't have to be reminded. I am a good Catholic. But, Mr. Speaker, divorce does not destroy a marriage. Divorce does not make a marriage viable. Because in a divorce proceedings, there is no more marriage to talk about. It has been shattered, broken, most probably beyond recognition. What is before the family court is not a vibrant, enduring, and loving marriage. What is before the family court is a cadaver of a marriage. So divorce definitely does not destroy a marriage. Divorce gives spouses under very serious conflict, particularly a wife who is abused, violated, abandoned, to have a second chance of having her liberty as well as her self respect. No less that the Supreme Court said in Te versus Te, and let me repeat that. The Supreme Court said the dissolution of a marriage is a merciful interment of a long dead marriage. It is a wrong notion that divorce destroys a marriage. Before a divorce proceeding starts, the marriage is already beyond salvation. And let me underscore that although we respect the dogma of the church, the Philippines is a secular state. Marriage is a secular institution, and it would be subject to the various legislation which would protect marriage as well as protect those couples who are in a broken and irreparably destroyed marriage. No less than the Catholic countries in the world, the Christian countries, have already legalized divorce. In other words, divorce is not against the word of God. Divorce is not against the tenets of the Catholic or Christian religion. Otherwise, these Catholic countries will not legalize divorce. And these are firstly Catholic countries like Ireland, like Spain, which brought to us our religious faith, like the Latin American countries. In fact, in the Latin American countries, they make divorce so easy because they have what is known as notarial divorce. But these are Catholic countries, Mr. Speaker. And 
what is the frequency of the birth worldwide? It is very low. In Colombia, it is 0 0.7% out of 1,000 marriages. And that is the score practically worldwide. Some countries are even lower in the ratio. In other words, the divorce does not open the floodgates to divorces and separation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with due respect, Mr. Speaker, with due respect to our highly esteemed honorable sponsor, I would like to remind everybody that making marriage like uh, in America, in Las Vegas, every day there are couples entering into marriage and then a few days after, they will just file divorces. Ang pag-aasawa sa ibang bansa na tinatawag na progressive Western countries ay parang pagpapalit ng damit. Nawala ng sacredness na tinuturo ng banal na kasulatan or the Bible. Wala na rin ang respeto sa pamilya. Kaya I stand firmly this article, this article uh, 15, section 1, the state recognizes the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation. Accordingly, it shall strengthen its solidarity and actively promote its total development. In Article 2, section 13, the state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building, again, I repeat, and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual well-being. Now, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, after knowing those empirical studies mentioned by this representation and Honorable Rodriguez last time, demonstrating the destructive effects of divorce on children, both in short term and long term, now we are we are uh, are we willing to have happy remarriages well marriages happy remarriages at the expense of children's healthy and cohesive families in the future again i respect the contention of mr speaker of our honorable sponsor but just a uh, reminder again mr speaker honorable sponsor if the family is the really is the real foundation of the nation, as the Constitution clearly says, and this bill will weaken it, don't you think, Your Honor, that we are ruining the future of our country by enacting this bill, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor? Um, Mr. Speaker, definitely no. We always say that the family is the foundation of the nation. That marriage is the foundation of the family. But a family in conflict, a family on fire, cannot be the foundation of the nation. We will have to rescue the parents and children from that family on fire, if we have to achieve the doctrinal exhortation in our constitution that the family is the foundation of the nation. How can you have a shattered family, a foundation of the nation? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I don't think it's God's will that divorce happen, but it's God's allowance, an act of grace for when his people had fallen short of his standard of marriage. Mr. Speaker, in the conversation of Jesus Christ with the Pharisees, when he said that, one, that what God has put together, no one must separate, 
he instantly made an exception for a valid divorce from an unchaste woman or an unchaste wife. St. Paul, in his Pauline principle, added that an unbeliever can be divorced by a believer and the latter can remain. In other words, all of these uh, prescriptions, all of these exhortations are not cast in stone because there is no rule without an exception. Divorce is an exception because divorce is not for everybody, not for every Filipino married man or woman, because in the Philippines, the overwhelming majority of married couples have enduring and loving relationship. Divorce is for the exception. Those who are in shattered marriages, which, that, which cannot be anymore repaired, that is also an obligation of the state. As it is said, marriages are solemnized in heaven. But some marriages irretrievably plummet into hell because of human frailty and mortal misgivings. Thank you, Madam Speaker. With due respect, uh, Mr. Speaker, to our honorable sponsor, I uh, respect his contention. I am believing he is so sincere in what he is uh, believing. But uh, sincerity is not enough to uh, nullify the absolute truth being taught by the Holy Bible. In Mark chapter 10, in Matthew chapter 19, and even in Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, as already quoted by Honorable Marcoleta in the previous uh, interpolation, he said, our creation, our creator said emphatically, he hates divorce. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. We as creations, why do we have to oppose our creator? Secondly, the, 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 the thing being mentioned by honorable sponsor is, uh, I would say, I have to correct the interpretation. During the time of Moses, the Bible clearly says, divorce was really uh, anathema at the time, but Moses allowed uh, some people to issue certificate of divorce because of the hardness of their heart. And this was quoted by Jesus during his public ministry. The perfect will of God is not to allow divorce. He hates divorce. However, because God has given every human being a free will, human being is allowed to exercise his free will, whether to please God or to please the world. Now, Mr. Speaker, I maintain that... Uh, uh, this uh, legalization of absolute divorce is absolutely unconstitutional. However, I have to move on, going to the next point. This is about, is it pro-woman? Mr. Speaker, honorable sponsor, it is said that this divorce bill is pro-woman. Am I correct in saying that, Mr. Speaker, honorable sponsor, why is that so? Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, this bill is definitely pro-women. And uh, Thank you. data indeedably show that the overwhelming majority of the aggrieved spouses in shattered marriages due to violence, abuse, marital infidelity, and abandonment 
are the wives. Traditionally, in a marriage relation, the husband is more ascendant than the wife. It is the woman who is actually and usually brutalized. And it is the man who philanders and gets away with it. Under this for foreboding and unequal circumstances, a wife needs absolute divorce more than the husband. Consequently, the absolute divorce is granted to liberate these women from a broken and toxic relation. Hence, absolute divorce is a pro-women legislation. Worldwide data also show that majority of the petitioners seeking divorce are women. Moreover, in a divorce proceedings, the wife as the innocent spouse needs a court decreed alimony and support for the child or children under her custody. And this is decreed by the family court. Finally, absolute divorce is not only a woman's issue. It is a poor woman's issue. Poor women cannot afford the exorbitant expense of legal separation or annulment of marriage or the nullification of marriage. This bill seeks to rectify this problem by ensuring that divorce proceedings are affordable and expeditious. And for those who qualify to be court-assisted petitioners, it is cost-free. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, it is based on empirical evidences. It is our observation that the bill does not sufficiently protect poor housewives and women who do not have the capacity to go to employment for their own source of income, possibly due to age, lack of work experience, and or for any other reasons. In this bill, the court can require the husband to give support to the wife up to three years only. And the requirement does not come with a strict penalty if not complied with. Because if the husband does not comply with the order of the court, the court would only cite the said husband in contempt of court. I understand that in the bill there are some specific penalties provided, but the disadvantaged wife who has no money in the first place because she is poor would need to go to court to have these penalties imposed. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, assuming there is a poor mother who does not remarry after a grant of divorce decree and is therefore burdened by solo parenting of small children, how would that single mother possibly be sustained of her daily needs if the defaulting spouse who fails to provide alimony would only get a slap in the wrist in the form of contempt of court? How do we address this issue, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor? What will be the fate of the poor woman after three years? Moreover, is it right to say that this situation will force poor divorced mothers deeper into poverty? Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, is it also right to say that this situation may also force them to contract? a second marriage in order for them to have a co-parent to sustain their needs and to support their children. What if they don't find a second husband to marry? Another question, Mr. Speaker, is that, that it would be a better choice for us to strengthen legal separation under our family code rather than pushing couples to resort to divorce, which leaves women more vulnerable. If according to the proponents, the divorce bill still hopes for the reconciliation of the spouse, this is another point. 
I'm giving way, of course, to honorable sponsor to make the remarks after my reply. Mr. Speaker, I hope the distinguished gentleman is not suggesting that poor unemployed women should just continue being enslaved in a toxic and broken marriage just because a divorce will not grant them sufficient alimony for a long time. Mr. Speaker, we are giving this divorce in order to afford women to, liber to be liberated from a hellish relationship. If the distinguished gentleman would like to extend further the duration of the alimony, then he can make the proper amendment at the proper time. We may consider accepting such a suggestion. But definitely, let us not, let us not force women to be in a toxic, violent marriage just because she is poor and could not afford to be separated from the abusive, philandering husband who might have even abandoned her already without any support at all. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable uh, Sponsor, again, I respect the contention of our Honorable Sponsor. But going to my next point, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, there are researches that show that men are actually the ones better off after a divorce. Examples, in Germany, a study by Thomas Leopold in 2014 found out that women were strongly disadvantaged in terms of losses in household income and associated increases in the risk of poverty after divorce. Moreover, women's dispro disproportionate losses in economic status were permanent. Taken together, the findings suggest that men's disproportionate strain of divorce is transient only, whereas women's is chronic. In United Kingdom, research from London School of Economics showed that women's household income fell by 20% after divorce, while men's household income rose by 30% after divorce. Are we really after justice? I am afraid that we might overlook the empirical evidences. Mr. Speaker, given these studies, how can you explain that divorce is still pro woman and not pro man? I have explained it already, Madam Speaker, why divorce is a pro woman legislation. If there are cases which would, where the divorce would benefit the men, then they are more the exception than the rule because definitely it is the woman who suffers in a toxic, violent, abandoned marriage. And no empirical study can dispute this. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, I'll try to abbreviate the uh, basis of my presentation of this interpolation. But still, I would like to remind everybody, if the evidence shows that divorce is anti-woman, is it then right to argue that divorce is also anti-children? Since reduced income for the family means less, lesser benefits for children. However, as our Honorable Speaker already said, he had already 
uh, Gibbons uh, uh, answers to those questions. And therefore, I thank you for all these questions, for answering my questions. But unfortunately, the evidence shows that the divorce bill is not absolutely and wholly a pro-woman, pro-children, and pro-family legislation because studies show that divorced women are more economically vulnerable and are worse off than men after the divorce. In addition, children are also placed in more adverse situations after the divorce. That's why I am opening our eyes that uh, we could probably improve the so-called uh, legal separation clause in our laws or the annulment, annulment of marriage or declaration of nullity rather than violate the command of God and invite and violate the Constitution. Now, going to my next point, uh, Mr. Speaker and uh, Honorable uh, uh, Sponsor, a survey by Okta Research Group last October 2023 found out that 51% of Filipinos oppose legalizing divorce while 41% approve it and 9% were undecided. Across socioeconomic classes, Filipinos are not in favor of legalizing divorce in the country. Mr. Speaker, what can honorable sponsor say about this? I, I answered the same question already propounded by the honorable Rupus Rodriguez. And I said that the quality and uh, integrity of a survey would depend basically on the question asked. And in the OCTA survey, the question was very general. It says whether you agree or disagree with uh, a divorce law. It does not place the respondent in a particular situation. The survey of uh, other firms would be a much better survey because it places the respondent in a particular situation. Because if your question is, do you agree or disagree with an absolute divorce law, then if you are happily married, then definitely you do not need a divorce law and your answer will be no. And the majority, the overwhelming majority of the Filipino, uh, of Filipino couples who are married are happy and have enduring relationship. The question could have been better if it places the respondent in a particular situation. Like for example, do you agree that a couple who have been separated de facto for five years should be allowed to be divorced, then that is very specific and you will get a truthful, honest answer to the question. That was not the case of Okta Sorbet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, with due respect, I just want to remind everybody that Okta Research Group is a foundation, non-profit, non-stock compared to other survey companies. Now, in Philosophy 101, I learned this from some professors, and I highly esteem our uh, honorable sponsor being a, I would say, a legal luminary in our country. Every person who knows reasonable, who have reasonable uh, anyone who has reasonable knowledge on the ropes of public surveying, there is a palacious practice. Why? 
Because if we want the results of the survey to favor our cause, it depends on the nature and kind of questioning. Every person with reasonable knowledge on public survey, this is a fact. Oh, Honorable Dr. Research Reva, Group. if you can wrap up your last question, please. Okta Research Group uh, presented this survey independently of any profit motive whatsoever. Now, Mr. Speaker, Honorable uh, Sponsor, I'll try to abbreviate because I have six major points to present. First of all, lest I may forget, I have with me copies of the position paper of the CBCP or Catholic uh, CBCP, the arm of the Catholic Church, as well as the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, as well as the official uh, position paper of the uh, Philippines for Jesus Movement, uh, membering coalition of churches all over Luzon, Business and Mindanao. And in the said, I, I was informed that uh, this uh, bill was approved just in one hearing of the committee. And they were denied of presenting the voices of the vast majority of paid community in this country. That's why I prepared more or less six major pointers to be given a chance. That's why I, I'm begging for uh, reasonable time as uh, given to Honorable uh, Rufus Rodriguez one time. I'm not uh, necessarily asking for a second round, but just to finish this uh, presentation. If the Honorable Sponsor would agree, I will just read continuously. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Honorable Sponsor. Now regarding... Uh, uh, yes, uh, Honorable Speaker, subject to the ruling of the chair. Okay. Mr. Speaker, is it correct that only... I'll just read continuously until I concluded. Is it correct, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sponsor, that it took only one hearing for the resource persons to deliver and echo their position on the bill during the first uh, one and only hearing of the Second Committee on Population and Family Relations? I also inquire if a divorce bill was passed on third reading in the immediately preceding Congress, which is 18th Congress, and I discovered it was not in 18th Congress, but in the so-called 17th Congress it was passed and uh, my, 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 one of the questions of the uh, multi-sectoral groups that uh, presented to me, may we know how many were the members of the Committee on Population and Family Relations back in the 17th Congress who are also members of the same committee now in the 19th Congress because this was passed track, in effect railroaded by the first hearing, by one and only first hearing without giving chances to major uh, uh, com uh, paid community in the country because of the reason that it was already approved in 17th Congress. Our simple question is, who are the members of the 19th Congress committee are the same members of the 17th Congress? Now, I'll go to, uh, uh, to one uh, glaring uh, conclusion, Mr. Speaker that the answers to my questions, of course, I have to thank our honorable sponsor. But there are lingering questions on the appropriateness of passing a divorce law because there is popular opposition to the bill. The bill under deliberation for this representation was not extensively, deb extensively, extensively debated upon the committee level, therefore depriving current committee members from thoroughly scrutinizing the bill. Mr. Speaker, I would like to reiterate my position that we could have held more extensive committee hearings so that more points of view could have been taken into consideration. Just for the record, Mr. Speaker, considering that legalization of absolute divorce could wreak havoc or irreparable destruction and disasters to the entire Philippine society, I just appeal that the vast majority 
or the so-called the bust community or, or paid community should be given a chance uh, to air their, uh, their voices. Regards the divorce and annulment, this is what our uh, stand, Mr. Speaker and Honorable uh, Sponsor, Declaration of Policy keeps on mentioning irremediably failed marriages and irreparably broken or dysfunctional marriages. Mr. Speaker, may I ask what is the Honorable Sponsor contemplating when the bill employs these words or praises? Can the Honorable Sponsor give this representation actual or concrete examples of marriages that are irremediable or irreparably broken? Let's me continue, Mr. Speaker and Honorable uh, Sponsor, I ask this speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mrs. Speaker, I'm sorry, <laughs> because I have been seen a lot of seemingly hopeless marriages yet restored and revived through the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, with the aid of the necessary in intervention, would the honorable sponsor concede that these experiences can be valid, that some seemingly hopeless marriages have experienced revival restoration? Again, this is the reason why I view divorce as uncalled or a premature death sentence to still breathing marriages and not a decent interment of a long dead marriage, as the honorable sponsor is always saying. For this representation, there is no such thing as irretrievable marriage in the sense that it is beyond hope. A marriage restoration is up to the willingness of the spouses to pursue the marriages, marriage, how difficult it might be. And for me, it is at the, on this juncture that the state should intervene to save marriages. Moreover, I remember if the uh, sponsor of this uh, legalization of, of uh, absolute divorce bill uh, has been emphasizing the important assistance and aids of the government or the state to the applicant for the divorce or the aggrieved party, don't we realize that if the said assistance and aid of the state to the aggrieved party in the divorce case would also be extended to those who are applying for nullification of marriage or annulment of marriage or legal separation? Could it not be very clear that this uh, annulment of marriage or uh, declaration of nullity could still also be cheaper as the uh, divorce uh, bill? Again, I have to... Uh, to abbreviate my questioning just to satisfy uh, the shortening of, the, uh, of this uh, discussion. Mr. Speaker, for the sake of discussion, if the, will, if the bill will not grant or will not provide this mechanism that make divorce cases affordable and expeditious, can the honorable sponsor give an ultimate estimate or idea how much will divorce cases cost and how long will it take to get a decision? Before he, he, you answer, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, let me continue my, uh, my briefs. Mr. Speaker, if the provision in the bill that make divorce cheap and pass, namely assistance for court-assisted petitioners, mandatory decision within one year, availability of psychologists, psychiatrists, lawyers to help the petitioners would also be made available to improve the annulment process. Don't you think annulment in the country would also be affordable, accessible, expenditures? Moreover, another one, I raised this, Mr. Speaker, because the Supreme Court, in a landmark uh, case of Andal versus Andal Tan, dated 11 May 2021, decided that psychological incapacity is a legal concept and no longer a medical concept. Therefore, annulment cases on the ground of psychological incapacity does not necessarily require a psycholog psychologist or a psychiatrist evaluation report or certification to serve as an expert witness. Okay, because of the... Uh, uh, I, I am uh, being requested to go to my conclusion. Uh, one, one, other, uh, 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 one additional question. Uh, did uh, how I wish the Sarbe companies of Okta as well as FW, SWS as well as the uh, Solicitor General of the Philippines be invited to shed light on this matter. However, uh, I would like to emphasize that the Philippines is not right not to have a divorce. Now I will uh, abbreviate this. Uh, I have still many pages to read, but uh, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, 
that ends my interpolation. But before I conclude, this representation would like to emphasize its firm and unwavering commitment for the sake of history, for the sake of the eyes of eternity. This representation would like to emphasize its firm and unwavering commitment to stand on the solid ground of 100% support to the Philippine Constitution, being the soul of the nation, while also committing to full obedience and respect to the commands and teachings of the Almighty God, whom the Filipino people revere as the creator of life, family, and institution of marriage itself. Thus, I conclude, this representation reiterates my opposition to the divorce bill based on the following. Number one, an absolute divorce law is unconstitutional. For this representation, the constitutional question is not only in reference to Article 15, Section 2, which states the inviolability of marriages, but also view of Article 15, Section 1, which mandates the protection of the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation. It also raises constitutional question with respect to Article 2, Section 13, which mandates that the state should promote and protect the physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social being of the youth. Empirical studies show that divorce neg negatively affects the family, especially children, in all aspects, thus weakening the foundation of our beloved nation. Point number two, contrary to what proponents are saying, divorce is not automatically and wholly pro-woman and pro-children legislation because studies show that divorced women are not in a better position than men after the divorce. In fact, divorce is anti-poor woman. In addition, children are placed in adverse situation after the divorce. Number three, the appropriateness of passing a divorce law is questionable there because there is popular opposition to the bill. And the bill under deliberation for this representation was not extensively debated upon all the committee level, therefore depriving current committee members from thoroughly scrutinizing it, especially the vast paid community, where there are at least 13.5 million members of the body of Christ who have denied to hear and to listen to the uh, in voicing their sentiments. Number four, we believe that between divorce and annulment, annulment is more akin to the constitutional mandate of protecting the institution of marriage and is more aligned to Filipino culture. If the services and government assistance that will be mandated by this bill for divorce cases would also be applied to annulment cases, we argue that the annulment process would also become a cheaper, accessible, and more expeditious remedy to problem messages. Number five, a divorce law is not appropriate in our context as a developing country where most families are poor and financially challenged. With the current economic situation of the Philippines, many married couples are having a hard time raising a family. Often the cause of a couple's misunderstanding center on financial matters and their economic status uh, <coughs> center on their financial matters and their economic status. Couple might wrongly and hastily construe a situation as needing divorce where, in fact, they might just need to resolve financial issues within the family. Lastly, number six, for me, the most important, Mr. Speaker, honorable sponsor whom I highly esteem, divorce is out of the will, design, and purpose of God. God himself is the architect of the institution of marriage, explicitly says in Malachi 2.16, I hate divorce, quote, unquote. For sure, God is infinitely informed of the pros and cons of dissolving a problematic marriage by a divorce. When God says, quote, I hate divorce, unquote, he is not unmindful of the possibility that human failure might lead to broken marriages, nor is he obvious of the reality of his struggling marriages. Yet, in all of the omniscient knowledge and sovereign judgment, which seeks nothing but the best for our welfare, he still decrees, I hate divorce, quote, unquote. Of course, I will never be it will, I will never be the case that we are more intelligent than our Creator. God hates divorce and therefore we should hate it too. Wala pong talo kung tayo susunod sa kalaoban ng Diyos. Ito mo ang check na paraan upang ang pamilyang Pilipino ay pagpalain ng Diyos. Otherwise, we would be judged in eternity as committing direct rebellion against the perfect will of God and might suffer eternal damnation in the lake of fire of hell. For as the Bible says, obedience brings overflowing blessings while disobedience rains, rains down horrible curses. Allow me to quote these worthy reminders of the Holy Scripture. In Deuteronomy 28, verses 1, NIV version, God said, 
if you fully obey, not just obey, but, care, but fully obey and carefully follow, not just follow, but carefully follow, all commandments of God and teachings of God, God said, I will exalt your nation above all nations of the earth. I will command the coming of the blessings to you. Blessings will overtake you, not disasters, not calamities. You will no longer borrow. You will no longer lend. You will no longer borrow nor beg, but you will lend. You will no longer be the tail, but you will be the head. Your enemy will come to you one way, but seven ways they will run away from you in great fear and trembling. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14, very clear. Blessings through obedience. The counterpart of this is curses through disobedience. In Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 up to verse 68, the several curses will happen to a nation because of disobedience. Now, sometimes, sometimes following God's will is not pleasant or easy. But the Word of God says that we will open the world or open God. If I would rather have God, there is a challenge to all of us before I close. The Word of God says we will open the Word or open God. I would rather have God on my side any day of my life. I hope that we, that we'll take, that we will take heed of God's Word as we scrutinize and decide on this bill. Before I finally wrap up, let me, let me read the precious preamble of the Philippine Constitution acknowledging the existence of God. Because there are some people who refuse to believe God like me when I was still an atheist and radical activist. But the very preamble of the Philippine Constitution acknowledges the existence of God and I quote, we the sovereign Filipino people imploring the aid of Almighty God in order to build a just and humane society and establish a government that shall embody our ideals and aspirations, promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of independence and democracy under the rule of law, and a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace, to ordain and promulgate this constitution, unquote. Now, as I end, a reminder to everyone, especially to my beloved honorable sponsor. I still salute him for being a living statesman in our country. I believe he's so sincere in what he's fighting for. But as I've said, when I was a radical atheist, I was very also sincere, but sincerely wrong when I rebelled against God. And now there is, in Matthew 7, verse 13 to verse 14, reminder to all, especially to our countrymen, there are two roads, there are two roads in our early existence. One big road, wide road. So many people are going to that road, but the end is eternal destruction in eternal damnation in hell. There is a narrow gate, a narrow road. Very few are, are taking that road. But the end of that road is the pearly gates of heaven in eternity. This is just my appeal because I love you all, whether you believe it or not. I have no any personal grudge to anyone. I'm just standing here to fulfill my duty for my countrymen before the eyes of history and before the eyes of eternity. And uh, again, I, 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 I thank our honorable sponsor, Mr. Speaker for believing what Voltaire said, the famous philosopher Voltaire. He said, I may disagree with what you are saying, but I will depend till my death, my right to say it. My, my, your right to say it. Meaning, I may disagree with what you are believing, I may disagree with what you are fighting for, but I am willing to depend your right to say it till my death, unquote. And also a reminder, a reminder from Edmund Burke's famous statement, for what is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. This is a famous statement emanated from James chapter 4, verse 17. From this statement, political statement, more than 100 years in United Kingdom, for what is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. 
And this is emanated in, Judge, in James 4.17. And I quote, If you know the good things to do, and you don't do, you sin, unquote. I do hope that you can understand why I stood up before this, uh, uh, I would say, August Chamber of the House of Representatives of the Congress of the Philippines, especially in this controversial issue, legalizing the absolute divorce bill. Again. Thank you, Honorable Villanueva. Thank you, Honorable Lagman. Uh, Any Honorable closing Speaker. statement, Honorable Lagman? I yes. just want, I just want to, to finish my last sentence. I hope that we will take heed of God's word as we scrutinize and decide on the bill. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Honorable Sponsor. Thank you, distinguished colleagues, for your patience. God bless you more, and God bless the Philippines. Thank you. Madam Honorable Speaker. Lachman, yes. Please proceed. I would like to thank the Honorable Representative uh, Villanueva for his godly intervention. But just short response. One, the absolute bill has been filed every Congress since the eighth Congress. And during the 17th and 18th Congresses, uh, this bill was extensively discussed and debated in the proper committee. Considering its passage on third and final reading previously, under a rule, it was given a fast lane, but still the committee conducted a hearing and everybody was invited to attend. Even the Honorable Villanueva was notified of the meeting, uh, unfortunately, I don't recall that he was present. Although he was present to Zoom during the 18th Congress, but I don't think he really participated. Number two, uh, divorce is only an option. We have not repealed the provisions on nullification of, of, of uh, dissolution or nullification of marriage, the legal separation provision, as well as the annulment provisions. Agreed spouses have four options, and they can avail of the divorce bill which is more uh, comprehensive and uh, expeditious and affordable, or they can avail of annulment, legal separation, or dissolution of marriage. Incidentally, dissolution of marriage is the canonical divorce recognized by the Catholic hierarchy. In fact, it is in the family code because of the uh, persistence of the Catholic hierarchy to include it there. In other words, even the church has its own divorce. Now, uh, let me just uh, state as a final assertion. Well, we admit that in the scripture, God hates divorce. But God himself gave men free will. And in, ex in exercise of that free will, men have decided to legitimize divorce under, under valid circumstances. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you again. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, Mrs. Speaker, Madam Speaker, may we now just one minute. 
uh, Madam Speaker, if uh, Congressman Rupus was given sufficient time, I just want to have one minute because uh, the, uh, the last sentence of our beloved uh, honorable sponsor is so very important for, for everybody to hear. I discovered and the Christian leaders comprising 13.5 million of the body of Christ in the Philippines confessed to me. No one among them, like Bishop Noel Pantoja, the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, Bishop uh, uh, Leo Alconga, the national president of the Philippine Council of, Evangel uh, of the uh, Philippines Evangelist Movement, and uh, Reverend Domingo Rivera, the pres national president of MAP, Ministerial uh, Association of the Philippines, they were never invited in the first one and only hearing conducted by the Committee on Population and Family Relations. It is on record. That's why we are just appealing for more time to be given a chance to voice out. Moreover, moreover, I just want to uh, emphasize that by, by uh, making uh, the annulment uh, proceeding pro poor, pro poor, or nullification of marriage pro poor, we will be avoiding to be cursed, to be directly assaulting and rebellious against God himself, and we will be avoiding to, to violate the Constitution of the Philippines. Why not just make the annulment marriage a law or the nullification of marriage uh, be pro poor so that we can enjoy life here on earth without sort of democracy that we might be condemned in eternity? That's all, Madam Speaker and Honorable Sponsor. Thank you for your patience. God bless you more. Uh, Madam Speaker, during the hearing, Bishop Aldrin Pinyamora manifested that he was going to represent all of the other uh, uh, kindred uh, associations. Now, uh, let me just also emphasize that in annulment of marriage, the causes are contemporaneous with the marriage. They do not cover subsequent causes after the marriage and during commutation, and this is covered by the divorce law. Thank you. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, before we proceed with uh, the next interpreter, may we uh, acknowledge and uh, recognize the guests of uh, party list representative, Brother Eddie uh, Villanueva, we have the Jesus is Lord Church pastors with us, Madam Speaker. Yes, to the guests of the part, our party list representative, Brother Eddie Villanueva, welcome to the Jesus is Lord Church pastors. Welcome to the House of Representatives. <laughs> Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, may we also acknowledge and welcome to the, uh, to the House of Representatives. The guests of Representative Elizal Dico and Representative Raul Angelo Jill Bongalon of a co Bicol party list and Representative Joey Sarte Salceda of the 2nd District of Albay. We have Isham Ismail, the Provincial President of Legazpi City Albay, Eric Castillo, Provincial President Aro Aroroy Masbate, Christopher Jacinto, Provincial President of Lupi Camirinasur, the I. William Moore of Panganiban, Catanduan is Provincial President. Corazon Peñaflor, Provincial President, Naga City. Rebecca Padilla, uh, Provincial President of Daet, Camarines Norte. J.P. Lee, City Councilor of Legazpi City, Albay. Arlene Bernacer and Andrew Gonzalez. To the guests of Representative Elizaldico and Representative Raul Angelo Il Bongalon, of ACO Bicol Party List and Representative Joey Sartes Salceda of the 2nd District of Albay. To their guests from the Liga ng mga Barangay from Bicol Region, welcome to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, may we recognize the next interpolator, the Honorable Paul Daza from the 1st District of Northern Samar. The Honorable Paul Daza is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the sponsor yield to a few questions? Willingly, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you. 
Um, first of all, I know that uh, previous interpolators have focused on the constitutional aspects, but um, I I'd like to put it on the record for myself also because what was cited earlier on Article 15, which, which my recollection is the section of our Constitution that deals with family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And, Madam Speaker, the Section 2 that was already cited uh, earlier and in previous uh, questioning, it said that marriage is an inviolable social institution. Now, just to make sure that I really understood that word, I looked it up, and what showed up when I asked my staff to really get the meaning of inviolable is it means never to be broken, infringed, or dishonored. Would that be a fair definition of inviolable? That is the literal meaning, Your Honor. And when we interpret whether it's the Constitution or statutory interpretation, civil code, isn't the literary meaning essentially the first way of interpreting that particular provision? In this case, marriage is an inviolable social institution. I can't see another way of interpreting that. Would there be another way of interpreting inviolable other than stating that it means never to be broken, infringed, or dishonored? Well, Your Honor, there can be other ways of interpreting that. Uh, which, because uh, this constitutional uh, declaration, as I've said, is not cast on stone. It is a prescription it is a norm. And uh, when we interpret words in the Constitution or provisions in the Constitution, we should be able to, uh, to assess the contemporaneous interpretation of those who made the Constitution and also in, to read it or interpret it or construct it together with other provisions of the Constitution. So, what was the contemporaneous construction of this provision? No less than the commissioners of the Constitutional Commission of 1986 declared that despite the statement in the Constitution that marriage is an inviolable social institution, Congress can still pass a law on divorce. And uh, if we read the Constitution itself, then there is no provision whatsoever in the Constitution which prohibits Congress from enacting a divorce law. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I respect the advocacy and the interpretation of the honorable gentleman from Albay, but having read, you know, this section 15 and, well, the article 15 and section 2, where essentially the focus of the framers of the Constitution was to recognize the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation. They essentially made a policy declaration and because inviolable is not a common daily word that's used, I am sure when they found that word, they meant not to be broken, not to be infringed. Um, and wouldn't that also be a fair interpretation for other members of the House to make? That it says what it says in common lingo, that marriage cannot be broken. And this bill 
essentially would violate that. W would that be a fair interpretation also of other people who are literally just reading the Constitution? Well, other people may just make that strict interpretation, but uh, I would submit that the divorce bill or subsequently the divorce law does not violate marriage. Because what is before the family court in a divorce proceeding is a destroyed, violated, and shattered marriage already. As I have already said, what is before the family court is a cadaver of a marriage. But it is not the divorce law which destroyed the marriage that was destroyed prior to the divorce proceedings because marriage is still a human institution. It is subject to human frailty and mortal misgivings. Well, uh, Madam Speaker, so I'll move on to my next point and uh, segue to what the Honorable Lagman just said, that many of these families already shattered, broken, um, and therefore we wouldn't be violating the Constitution if we pass this bill. But my understanding is there are already existing procedures. I, I'm not a, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not a family law practitioner. But in the family code, we have legal separation and annulment, uh, which is already existing remedies for families that are couples that are having problems. Is that correct? That's correct. But they are not sufficient to answer problems uh, plaguing okay. couples, and, particularly wives. Uh, if it's not sufficient, why not uh, just amend uh, the relevant articles of the family code and strengthen the legal separation and annulment provisions there? We are not uh, uh, in any way amending or even repealing these provisions on uh, legal separation, annulment of marriage, and uh, uh, dissolution of marriage. They are not incompatible with the divorce law. We are giving a fourth option to spouses, but we never intended to repeal these provisions under the family code. As a matter of fact, the grounds under the family code on dissolution of marriage, legal separation, and annulment of marriage are still grounds provided for in the divorce law. But they, were, they have been amended to include grounds subsequent to the solemnization of the marriage. Because these are causes which are more numerous as grounds for divorce. Because these are actually the causes uh, suffered by spouses, particularly wives, during the period of cohabitation, which are not covered by annulment of marriage and the dissolution of marriage, which incidentally, the dissolution of marriage is akin to a canonical divorce under the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, Madam Speaker, to clarify, if a couple, let's say, gets married in church, whether it's Catholic, Christian church, Protestant, or whatever religion, under current laws, to, to get a dissolution or a legal separation or annulment, could the sponsor explain what the, the, the different procedures are in terms of being able to avail of one of the three remedies that's existing now? Well, the procedure is uh, provided for under the family code and the rules of court. And the same procedure 
would apply to divorce proceedings. But we will have to underscore that in dissolution of marriage under Article 36 of the Family Code, the defect should be contemporaneous with the celebration of the marriage, although manifested later. With respect to the annulment of marriage, all of the causes should be at the time of the celebration of the marriage, not subsequent. And with respect to the legal separation, the separation is from bed and board, and the marriage ties are not severed, so much so that the, co the separate couples cannot remarry. And what happens now is the proliferation of concubinates and adultery, adulterous relationship, which are actually punishable by law, but condoned because the couples are not capacitated to remarry. These are the defects and deficiencies of the existing provisions in the Family Code, which uh, this uh, bill would rectify, more particularly with respect to the length and expense of the proceedings in all of these provisions in the Family Code because under the absolute divorce bill, it is mandated that it should be expeditious and affordable. As a matter of fact, the judge is required to uh, decide the petition for divorce within one year after the lapse of the cooling of period. And then also uh, there are court-assisted petitioners who qualify, and it is cost-free for them. Madam Speaker, in a dissolution under Article 36 or annulment under Article 45, um, under the rules of court, are there any documentary requirements from the church where they wedded to be able to complete the legal procedures in court for either of those two uh, relief that someone can get? Well, well, well of course, they will have to uh, produce evidence that they are married. Otherwise, there is no cost for dissolution of marriage or annulment of marriage. And the best evidence would be the certificate of marriage. Are there any other documentary requirements that's, uh, that, that's needed other than, let's say, that marriage certificate from the relevant church under the current rules of procedure? Well, I, I don't think uh, there would be uh, other principal documents in addition to the marriage certificate. But of course, if the ground is uh, for uh, uh, violent, violence or abuse, then most probably a police report can be ad admissible evidence. If the ground, for example, is fraud under annulment of marriage, Prior to, the consummate, prior to the marriage celebration, then most probably uh, fraud can be documented and it can be another document. With respect to psychological incapacity, usually uh, the statement of an expert is necessary but under a new ruling of the Supreme Court, it is not indispensable. But all of this uh, would uh, be a matter of evidence which the petitioner can produce in 
diffamé l'école. Et parce que l'intent de ce bill est d'établir un troisième mode de get relief from the courts, I'm assuming the rules of court will be similar. Uh, is that correct? Uh, uh, the rules of evidence will not be affected by this uh, bill when it becomes a law. Uh, what will be done is that the petition should follow the family code procedure and the rules of court. You, we did not have to amend the rules of procedure to accommodate the divorce bill. The, uh, the divorce proceeding would follow the procedures prescribed by the family code and the rules of court. So, Ma Madam Speaker, if this bill becomes law and the intent was to make it a faster solution for, for separated couples, if the rules of procedures and rules of evidence say the same, then wouldn't there be similar complaints that these proceedings take too long, it's too expensive? So, so how, how is that dealt with in this bill? Well, as of now, the proceedings for uh, nullification of marriage, legal separation, and annulment of marriage would take so much time so much so that there are even circumstances when the petitioner or the respondent uh, will already be dead and the case is still pending how is that resolved or rectified the the, the provision in the bill prob uh, says that the action or petition for divorce should be resolved or decided by the family court within one year after the expiration of the 60-day calling off period. That is really expeditious. Then with respect to expense and affordability, the declaration of uh, guidelines in the bill uh, provides that the proceedings should be expeditious and affordable. Expeditious because there is a time frame for which, under which the judge should make the decision. And uh, affordable because there are provisions which would qualify petitioners to be assisted by the court. They will not pay the filing fees, they're not going to pay the judicial costs, and they will be given an attorney, the, an, a the official lawyer, and they will be given expert services by the court, free of charge. Uh, so, Madam Speaker, if this bill is the, an optional fourth remedy, those provisions that the sponsor cited that they think will fast track resolution of this fourth mode, which is the petition for an absolute divorce, why not also include the other existing three modes, Article 36, 45, and 55, and, and also include that as an amendment if we really want to help um, shattered and broken families that's, that need relief from the courts. Why didn't the sponsor include reference to the other articles of the family code to help those families? Well, that will destroy the option. <laughs> the option is for the aggrieved party to make a decision on uh, what course of action he or she would take. So if she wants it to be expeditious and affordable, then file the, the, the divorce petition. It already includes the causes under dissolution of marriage, legal separation, 
and annulment of marriage as, ad as amended. But if the petitioner would like, if the aggrieved party would like to pursue uh, the process under legal separation or annulment of marriage or dissolution of marriage, then so be it. The option is there. Let the party decide. Uh, yes, I understand that, but to me, it's counterintuitive, and in fact, uh, probably may not be good policy if we're going to include language for a fourth option, but not for the other existing three. If, if our intention is to help, and as the sponsor said, mostly women who are abused, neglected, uh, Time, uh, relationships are already broken, why not include the same fast-track provisions for resolution for the existing three to equalize the options and to, and to allow uh, possible women who want to avail of relief and give them the, the choices for the dif four different modes with equal relief and equal speed under the law. It doesn't make sense to me just to favor one. It makes sense because we are giving an option. If you don't want to take the option, so be it. If you want to file an annulment proceeding which is uh, lengthy and expeditious, then do so. If you want to file legal separation and uh, because you are a devout Catholic and uh, you don't want to get the right to remarry, then do so. The options are there. The aggrieved party should make the decision. We are not going to make the decision for them. So, Madam Speaker, that would literally mean that if this bill passes, and because there are time periods, I think one year as mentioned earlier, for the court uh, after the 60-day cooling, cooling off period to resolve the petition, then the, it will encourage more petitioners in bias for the fourth option, which is the absolute divorce. So if you're a practicing Catholic and you'd rather, let's say, do legal separation because of your religious beliefs, you will tend to go for the fourth option because it'll be faster. And I think that's bad policy. Um, where we would be legislating and helping couples, people, uh, to use one particular relief in favor of the other remedies, uh, and it's embedded in the law. And I, I find that, there, I find something wrong with that. But having said that, um, let me just say that the grounds for legal separation, annulment of marriage, and dissolution of marriage are among the grounds for a petition for divorce. So, to my mind, that wide option should be an encouragement for those who are really aggrieved to take the option which is uh, expeditious and affordable. That is a good policy. But the option remains. Give the people, give the aggrieved parties that option. Take it or leave it. Well, Madam Speaker, um, I'm of the different view. Um, there should be equal timetables and equal deadlines set. Um, should this bill pass for, uh, for, to give people, couples, um, more options? But anyways, having said that, I'd like to ask the sponsor. They get the absolute divorce granted by the court. I know in the bill it's, it stipulates alimony and child support. So my question is, under this bill, does it address the situation where a couple gets divorced, 
the court orders child support and alimony, and I think the bill says up to a maximum of three years for the aggrieved party. If, let's say, in this case where the aggrieved party is the woman, and I, I admit that that is the case in, 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 uh, historically, if the man remarries, let's say, six months later, uh, and then has children with the second spouse, how will that affect the child support order for the first family? Is that addressed in this bill? Well, uh, the child support subsists whether the party or spouse obliged to give support remains or not. But we should always understand that support depends on the needs of the persons to be supported and the capacity of the person giving support. So if a man remarries and have children in the second marriage, then most probably his capacity may not be able to sustain his children in the first marriage and his children in the second marriage. Though now it is now for the court to appreciate whether that capacity would uh, subsist or that capacity has diminished so much so that the support can be decreased. But that will, be de that will depend on the appreciation of the evidence by the court. And Madam Speaker, I think that's one of the problems that's essentially pointed out by the other inter interpreters, that we would be directly encouraging uh, remarriages because if the absolute divorce is granted, and that affects the existing children of previous marriages. And I'm somewhat disappointed that there's no language or provision that deals with that situation because um, mothers and fathers uh, are important for us, family is important for us, but the utmost priority should be the children and there should be some provision that addresses uh, how to adjust child support uh, when um, someone remarries uh, uh, later on. Now, I, I, for now, sake uh, of time, uh, let me let, let, let me, me ask just say, Madam, my, Madam Speaker, that if the distinguished gentleman would have some proposed amendments to cover that situation, then uh, we will be willing to hear the amendments and consider the same. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, for that offer, but you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm essentially still not persuaded on the bill, and I'm just only highlighting what I think uh, uh, the gaps that, that that I've that I've seen, and I, I hope maybe the committee or other members will come up with that, and I, I would feel uh, uh, somewhat uh, uncomfortable. Uh, offering any amendments to, to address that, but I'd like to point it out to the sponsors. Uh, we searched, um, according to a, law, to a law firm in the U.S., uh, the name of the law firm, it's, it's, uh, it's public information, Wilkinson and Finbeiner, that in the, US, the, in the U.S., the statistics were according to this law firm that did the survey, uh, was quite shocking. Almost 50% of all marriages in the United States end up in divorce or separation. And as we know, I think in all the states, they, they have divorce uh, laws. 60% of second marriages end in divorce. And 73% of third marriages also end in divorce. Meaning, in the U.S., the pattern is uh, uh, people who divorce, it makes, it makes it easier for them to have divorce should they remarry again. And I think the whole point of that statistics is that may happen here where you have a situation where it'll be easier to divorce 
they'll remarry and then get divorced. And if the statistics in the U.S. will hold true for us, then we'll be seeing more and more divorces. Is it not in itself essentially bad policy? If we created laws that just encourages more separation and more divorces. Uh, Mr. Speaker, first, the U.S. is an outlayer because their data, their data are uh, really extreme. So much so that in the statistics being used on divorce worldwide, the United States is not included. Number two, the rise in divorce in the United States was due to the no contest divorce, which uh, President Reagan regretted having signed. But we are not following that in the Philippines. We, had, we do not use these quickie divorces as ground for divorce under the bill. Under a bill, no contest divorce, no quickie divorce, no Las Vegas divorce, no notarial divorce, no email divorce. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, we do not allow this in the bill because that would uh, really cause the floodgates to open. But with respect to other countries other than the United States, the floodgates for divorce and separation were not open because of legitimizing divorce. The data across the world, except the United States, would say that about only 1% of, out of 1,000 marriages would result in divorce worldwide, Madam Speaker. So we have not opened the floodgates for divorce. Even in countries where divorce is very lenient, like in Colombia, where notarial divorce is uh, uh, permitted, the divorce rate is among the lowest in Latin America. So we should not fear that divorce law in the Philippines, which is much, much more strict than the other countries, would result to more divorces. Because the evidence show that it is otherwise. Madam Speaker. Um, the sponsor said earlier that he's a good Catholic, uh, and essentially the bill will help shattered, broken families. Um, it will deal with the most aggrieved, which are the women. But from my recollection, I think the Catholic Church and other uh, Church-based groups, especially Christian groups, are not in favor of the bill. As a, a practicing member of whatever religious organization that's not in favor of the bill, like a Catholic, how can we really reconcile that? Because that's one that I'm having a hard time with. I think the intention is good. Uh, you know, I applaud the sponsor and the other authors on this. But I think uh, it's the wrong approach and not consistent with what uh, the ideals well, of my own church. So how do we reconcile that for the members like myself who are conflicted? 
no less than the Pope. said that the clergy should be mindful of the rights to the Eucharist of divorced couples. No less than the Pope moderated the cause and time consumed for what is known as canonical divorces based on psychological incapacity of either or one of the spouses. All Catholic countries, all Christian countries, except the Philippines and the tiny state of Vatican, have legalized divorce. This is an indubitable manifestation that divorce is, does not offend the Catholic faith, that divorce is not against the Catholic dogma. And let me also say that although we respect the doctrines of the church, we are a secular state, and marriage is still a secular institution. There are more civil marriages in the Philippines than Catholic marriages. And that is the statistics from uh, the Philippine Statistics Authority. Uh, fair enough, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, considering the time, I actually have a few more questions, but uh, I'd like to wind up and thank the sponsor for his gracious answers. Uh, and I'd like to manifest, uh, if there's a second round, uh, I would like to be listed for the second round. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the Honorable Lagman. Thank you, Honorable Daza, Majority Leader. Thank you, the Honorable Daza. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend consideration on House Bill number 9349. There is a motion. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we take up additional reference of business and request that the Secretary General read the title of the bills. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the bills. Additional reference of business. Messages from the Senate. Message dated March 13, 2024, informing the House of Representatives that on even date, the Senate approved the Conference Committee report on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill 1964 and House Bill 9682 on institutionalizing the grant of a teaching allowance for public school teachers. To the comedian rules. Message dated March 13, 2024, informing the House that the Senate on even date passed the following House bills without amendment. House Bill 1043, creating a district engineering office in the first legislative district of Negros Occidental. House Bill 7539, creating a district engineering office in the third di legislative district of Bataan. And House Bill 7645, creating a district engineering office in the fourth legislative district of Bukidnon. To the committee on rules. Message dated March 14, 2024, which was received by the House on March 19, 2024, informing the House that on March 13, 2024, the Senate adopted House Concurrent Resolution 20 entitled, Concurring with Proclamation Number 404 of the President of the Republic of the Philippines, dated November 22, 2023, entitled, Granting Amnesty to Former Members of the Communist Party of the Philippines, New People's Army, National Democratic Front, who have committed crimes punishable under the revised penal code and special penal laws in furtherance of their political beliefs. To the committee on rules. 
Message dated March 18, 2024, informing the House that the Senate on even date passed the following House bills without amendment. House Bill 8701, establishing a senior high school in Progressive Village 3, Barangay Bayanan, City of Bacoor, Province of Cavite, to be known as the Progressive Senior High School. And House Bill 8702, establishing an elementary school in Progressive 15, Barangay Molino 2, City of Bacoor, Province of Cavite, to be known as the Progressive Elementary School. To the Committee on Rules. Message dated March 18, 2024, informing the House that on even eight, the Senate approved the Conference Committee Report of the Conference Committee on the Disagreeing Provisions of Senate Bill No. 2449 and House Bill No. 8327 on the proposed PNP Organizational Reforms Act. To the Committee on Rules. Message dated March 18, 2024, informing the House of Representatives that on even date, the Senate passed Senate Bill 2572 on establishing the Bulacan Special Economic Zone and Freeport in the province of Bulacan, creating for the purpose the Bulacan Special Economic Zone and Freeport Authority, in which it requests the concurrence of the House of Representatives. To the Committee on Economic Affairs and the Committee on Trade and Industry. Committee Reports. Committee Report 1036 submitted by the Committees on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms and Appropriations on House Bill 10178. Committee Report Numbers 1037 and 1038 submitted by the Committees on Higher and Technical Education, Appropriations and Ways and Means on House Bill Numbers 10181 and 10185 respectively. Committee Report 1039 submitted by the Committee on Senior Citizens on House Bill 10188. The aforementioned committee reports are all referred to the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, we are in receipt of the Bicameral Conference Committee Report on the disagreeing provisions of House Bill No. 7819 and Senate Bill No. 2492 on declaring the maritime zones under the jurisdiction of the Republic of the Philippines. Madam Speaker, in accordance with our rules, I move to ratify the said bicameral conference committee report. There is a motion to ratify the said bicameral conference committee report. Those who are in favor say aye. Those who are against say nay. The ayes have it. The said bicameral conference committee report is hereby ratified. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, we are in receipt of the Bicameral Conference Committee Report on the disagreeing provisions of House Bill No. 8327 and Senate Bill No. 2449 on the re restructuring of the Philippine National Police. Madam Speaker, in accordance with the rules, I move to ratify the said Bicameral Conference Committee Report. There's a motion to ratify the said Bicameral Conference Committee Report. Those who are in favor say aye. Those who are against say nay. The ayes have it. The said bicameral conference committee report is hereby ratified. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, the House and the Senate have approved on third reading House Bill No. 5001 and Senate Bill No. 2441, respectively on mandating private higher education institutions to waive the college entrance examination fees. We have been informed that the Committee on Higher and Technical Education, sponsor of House Bill No. 5001, as well as the authors thereof, is in concurrence with the provisions of Senate Bill No. 2441. With this information, in accordance with the rules, I move to adopt Senate Bill No. 2441 as an amendment to House Bill No. 5001. There's a motion to adopt Senate Bill number 2441 as an amendment to House Bill number 5001. Those who are in favor say aye. Those who are against say nay. The ayes have it. Senate Bill number 2441 is adopted as an amendment to House Bill number 5001. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, on part of the majority, I move to nominate and elect Representative Jose C. Alvarez as Senior Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Natural Resources. There's a motion. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, may we acknowledge and welcome to the House of Representatives the guests of our Representative Edsa Lagman. Our guests are members of the Divorce Pilipinas Coalition. We have AJ Alfafara, Ms. Mila Malikdem, Ms. Evelyn Pulogon, Ms. Sarah Gion, Ms. Regina Deloso, Ms. Lida Bedia Muleta, Ms. Rinalyn Cortez, Mr. 
Bilamir Cortez, Ms. Cheryl Estoya, and Ms. Clarissa Avendaño. To the guests of the Honorable Dagman from the First District of Albay, the following members of the Divorced Filipinas Coalition, welcome to the House of Representatives. <laughs> Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session until tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, March 20, 2024. Session suspended until tomorrow at 3 p.m. Recording stopped. <laughs>